morning. Welcome to Sewing Quarter. We've got Deck the Halls today and we have got wreaths galore. We've got lots of lovely wreaths this morning to share with you. My name's Amy Burrows and I'm with you all morning. I'm here till 12 o'clock today and joined by the very lovely Lucy Brennan and Angie Atwood. So we've got a great show lined up. Actually, let's have a look at the menu. We can go through what's coming up on today's show. So at eight o'clock, I'm joined by Lucy and we're using the uh, Dresden plate ruler to create a, a wreath in this first hour. Then at nine o'clock, we've got Quilt As You Go. We're using the Hopscotch Quilt As You Go to create a bag with Angie. At 10 o'clock, Lucy's back. We've got a Creative Grids Masterclass. We're looking at log cabins. And then at 11, we're not actually looking at log cabins. We're not going to some sort of um, Icelandic country, but we are, we are looking at log cabin blocks. And at 11 o'clock, we are doing the festive heart wreath, which so you might spy both of those wreaths on the wall behind us this morning. And we're doing that at 11 with Angie. Wreaths everywhere. Why not? Lots of decorations, lots of lovely things for your house to make it nice and Christmassy. Now, actually, this morning we'll start. I'm just going to tell you about a special offer that we've got, and it's only until midnight tonight, so it's just for today. And what we've got is a special offer if you're buying anything online, so on the web shop, and not anything that's been on TV in the last 24 hours, but if you buy anything in the web shop for over £30, then you get the most recent Kay Facet book, so Kay Facet's Quilts in Ireland book, which he actually spoke about when he came in when he was in with Tash. So all the terms and conditions for that are on the website, but maybe if you want to buy something for your stash that you know you're going to need, whether it's wadding or something to just have in your, in your stocks ready to go, and then you've got the, a nice little book for yourself as a present for you, or you could be cheeky and wrap it up and give it to someone else as a present, why not? Double whammy, something for you, something for someone else. Also as well, remember to get in touch, so if you've got any questions for Lucy or Angie this morning, come and say hello, let us know um, what you think of the wreaths or if you've got any questions about those. So just under the live feed of today's show, you can see that message the studio box there in that bubble. So come and say hello. Producer Hannah upstairs is shouting hello at us this morning. Hello upstairs as well. And you can also get in touch uh, via email. But underneath that bubble, you can see all the products from today's show. So those are yesterday's, but that will be updated in a minute with everything from today. And you can check your basket out on there and look at all of the different products. So anything there won't be included in that CAFE offer, but if you go to the, um, the shop icon at the top of the Sewing Quarter website, there are loads and loads of different sections you can look through. Um, you could add whether it's Liberty fabric or you might look at some charm packs or wadding or, or anything that takes your fancy and then you can get that free CAFE book today. Now remember as well, you can also get in touch via email. So if you want to send us any photos, you can do that by attaching it to an email, studio at sewingquarter.com. I love seeing your pictures. I know we sometimes have a look at the ones on social media, but send us an email so we can share it on the show this morning. Maybe you've made a wreath. Send us a picture of it, it'd be great to see them. So as I said, wreaths galore in this hour. I feel like I should do a tally of how many times I'm gonna say that word this morning, because it's gonna be quite a few. So the wreath that we're making this morning, have we got a picture of that? Let's just show you. It's really gorgeous. So this is Lucy's design. She's using the uh, Dresden Plate Creative Grids Ruler and really lovely. And it's a really weighty wreath. Um, we'll show you that in a second. I can show you that really, it's, it's a comfy wreath. We were using, we were saying it makes a nice cushion. I'll show you that in a second. But we've got some different bundles this morning to do that. So we've got some traditional Christmas bundles. So we'll start with the ones that Lucy used. All of these are three meter bundles. So we'll start with that one you've just seen on your screens. This one is your greens and reds. So your traditional Christmas colors. You've obviously got your Santas. You've got spot on um, green, half a meter of all of these. Solid green. Then you've got your red Santas, red spot on, and a red solid at the bottom there. So three metres in total, half a metre of all of those. 27 99 that's the one that was in the wreath that's already made up. Then we've also got another three metre bundle, but using uh, more of your cool icy blues with the red. So again, you've got your Santas. We're not going to escape those now. We're fully on, fully on track for Christmas. So you've got your Santas on blue. Then you've got your spot on blue, your solid blue. And then again, you've got your classic Santas on red, your spotty red and your solid red as well there. Again, 27 99 So both of those are the same price, just different colorways. Then the other option we've got, uh, again, these are three meter bundles, but these are a meter of each fabric. So rather than six half meter cuts, these are three meter cuts. So uh, bigger, obviously bigger pieces of fabric. So this one here, really autumnal. I love these colors. Um, you've got really sort of rich coppery tones and then a khaki green as well there with your leaves and acorns. And then a more Christmassy one at the bottom there too. 
And then the last one, this is a more, um, I'm trying to think what word I would use, but you've got lovely metallics coming through for this in this. So you've got a, a golden black, which is very, um, I think this is a really, quite a grown up, it would make a really lovely grown up wreath. You've got a solid black. And then again at the bottom there, you've got more metallic. So you get that little bit of sparkle in your snowflakes. You can just see that there in the silver and gold. 19.99. So four different options, nearly said three. <laughs> There's four different options there. All of them are three meters, just different combinations of, of the amount of fabric that you have. But let's go over and see Lucy. Let's look at this design that she's made for us this morning. So Lucy, I've missed you. I feel like I haven't seen you for ages. <laughs> How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? We've got poppies. We've got poppies. Ready to go. Yeah. Not long to go now, is it? Saturday. Yeah. So this is one you did yourself. It is. I say that yeah. like I'm surprised. Like, <laughs> Lucy, you created something yourself. <laughs> Didn't that sound maybe a bit condescending? Didn't mean it like that. But this was one of your own designs. It was, yeah. <laughs> And it's this one here. Yes, it is, yeah. So traditionally, um, you can create uh, wreaths with the Dresden plate, obviously, and um, do mini quilts and quilts with it. But I thought it would be nice to actually make it into a, a wreath. Into a wreath, yeah. Because obviously, using the this is the ruler that you can use, and quite often it comes with the well, it comes with the circle, doesn't it? Yeah, so you it comes would use with the circle. it. You would actually use this for quilting to create a block yes, or to yes. incorporate into a quilt. Yeah, so you and so you can make two. all different sizes of um, Dresden plates. So from a, a one inch, I mean a half inch, I think is going a bit far, probably. <laughs> yes. from, you a could. Mini, mini school yes, one. Um, all the way up to um, an eight and a half or even a nine uh, with this one, sorry. So you've got all a whole range of sizes that you can make with it. And it's all, they're all made up of 20 segments. So you have oh, so 20. regardless of what size they are, yes. it will always be 20 that yeah. creates that whole complete circle exactly and then the difference here is just that rather than putting that because you, you then use that circle this that comes in that whole pack of rulers then you would use that circle to overlap in yes. the middle wouldn't you if yeah you so to. you just um you use a rule to cut the cut the circle out and then you um would applique that onto the center of the dresden plate so if you're going to do that for the whole complete thing. But for a wreath, yes. obviously, we need the hole in the middle. Yes. I'm laughing. We need because the hole in the middle. This morning, <laughs> we were using the hole in the middle. I won't take it off the wall, but we were saying this would make a, a really lovely, um, you know, the pillow that you use on the aeroplane when you get a, a sore neck. If you've, stuffed, <laughs> if you've stuffed the wreath well, then you could potentially use this as a, um, as a nice little cushion. But no, really lovely. And you've got, I love the bow as well. It's like a nice yes. weighty bow rather than yeah. it being a small dainty one. It's a really nice big. Absolutely. And I just used that with what was left, the leftover fabric um, to create the bow. So I'll show you how to do that, um, provided I have time at the end. Okay. Because um, that's very, very simple to do that. As but well, effective, so. really sort of statement, bold. Yes. Nice bold bow. Yeah. So the ruler itself, obviously you've got all of your markings on here. If you don't know about Creative Grids rulers, what, you're the, I feel like you're the queen of creating... Well, you're I not Rachel Ruler, but you are the yeah, queen pretty I much have a of lot, these. And I, and I do love them. It was the first ever... This one here is the um, first ever uh, ruler that I bought when I began quilting. Um, and uh, it's just... The, the brand is fabulous. It's the best quality that I've ever used um, in the rulers. And it has the built-in grip. So you feel really safe when you're, when you're cutting. Yeah. The, the ruler doesn't slide. You know, even I'm doing that. It's, it's stuck to the it's, mat. It, it really grips it really, really well. So they're lovely to work with and they're so well designed. You can just see them there. That, and they, you think, oh, is that really going to serve much purpose? They just yeah. look like little dots. But it's, I don't know what that formula is that Creative Grids have got, but it's that little, if you can just see there, those little dots, they really do stop it slipping and sliding on the fabric. Yeah, and they're not if stuck you pop, down. You can't, like if you put you it, can't pick you know, them off. They're not going to come away. I've had my ruler for years. And it's it still doesn't functioning. Sort of disappear. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It doesn't wear off or anything. It really lasts. So. And then obviously you have all of your markings on the rulers as, as well. So you've got this this particular one that comes with your circle and the uh, Dresden plate, but you've got that in well half inch increments all the way up, yes. haven't you? Yeah. So you can do all different you know different sizes as as you like. So I've got a strip that's eight inches. So that's the um, size that I've gone for with this one. So I've just cut my fabric strip at eight inches. And then um, I can start cutting the segments. I think we're just going to show pop, popping okay. that on there. If you were using that with a rotary cutter, we can use this fabric, but just that it doesn't slip and slide. No. You can just pop it on there and then. And obviously, as well, because of the acrylic, it's from a safety perspective, you've got something to butt up against with your rotary cutter. Yeah, and it's nice cutter. and thick as well. I have yeah. seen others that are just too thin to use with a rotary cutter. These are, it's a nice, thick 
quality acrylic that makes it really easy to use. So when you're cutting, you want to cut it to the strip size that you want. Okay. Do you see what I mean? So yeah. you're wasting so you're gonna less do... fabric because you don't want to put it on like that. And like I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just throw be, it on. You'll be cutting all around. You're wasting all of that. So it's been designed intentionally to use in that way. So you're cutting it from from a strip. And how difficult would it be to create this shape without the ruler? Really difficult. Would yeah. It? Yeah. I mean, you could. You know, you can use it. You can draw it out or something like that, but I don't like using a rotary cutter with cardboard or anything no, like that because it's think, not, oh. no, it's just not safe. Um, so I, would, I wouldn't do it without one. No. No. Just because you've got something there to push it up against. So yes. just, just to clarify, what comes with this ruler? You've got, we can see here in the packet, you get the actual Dresden plate um, sort of shaped ruler and then you also get that circle. So if you're using it for quilting, you can pop that in the middle um, and create the whole finished, would you call it a block? Yes, the Dresden the whole, plate the is, Dresden a, is, a block. is a block. Yeah, so you applique it onto a square of fabric usually. Yeah. Um, and you can make um, quarters, you can make fans, you can do half Dresdens. You don't have to do the whole Complete piece. Thing. So you can put them in the in the corner or, you know, there's lots of variations of, of Dresdens. Yeah, it's a really beautiful traditional block. I think with a lot of these rulers, once you have them, you realise that there are a lot. It's not just what you classically have got on the pack. I don't know if I've got a packet of it here actually, but obviously you get you get instructions in there with what yes. the basic setups yeah, are. Yeah, and that gives but you, you different and ideas match. and designs. And you can use the circle as well to create rounded um, segments for your dress and plate, so they don't have to have points. They can be curved at the edge as well. So you can so play that gives with a that. different look again to it. So will I cut some out? Of yeah, absolutely. Oh, so how did you come up with this one then? Um, I just. I thought, how am I going to make it into a wreath? And I, and I think when I was given the brief originally, I think they thought I was going to make like a little quilt or something. Yeah. I just thought, well, if I'm going to do a wreath, I might as well Go for actually the wreath. do yeah. a wreath. And then I thought, well, if I just do it double sided, you know, that it makes more sense. So you actually can turn this around and I'm have it be. off the wall. Yeah, go on. <laughs> You're like, go what, on. Yeah, go on. <laughs> so what I did was when I was, when I was um, playing about with the fabrics and everything, I actually did this design, which was more thought out, more planned, you know, with the reds and, and, and your greens. the greens. Yeah, and so I, so I did it that way. And then I did one just completely random, and I actually preferred the random one. So I thought, oh, well, I'll go for... But it's quite nice it doesn't I'll even have to be the same front, front and back. No, it doesn't have to be the same. Because I was thinking in my head it was going to go all the way through. It would have to be the same. Yeah. Obviously, it could be if you wanted it to, but the, you've got the difference there. Yeah, so it is a double sided. So even if you wanted to hang it up somewhere, yeah. you know, suspend so you it, can see it in you the... can see it from all different directions. It's not like it's horrible on the back no, or anything. Nothing to hide. Um, but we were talking yesterday about seasonal, you know, seasonal decorations for your home. Mm. And somebody was saying, because I was saying I don't um, change my cushions. I'd love to, but I don't change my cushions around on different seasons. No. So I don't have enough storage. And somebody messaged in, I'm sorry, I forget your name, but um, that you can just... Uh, put the cover over the top of the existing cushion. That's so good can, Yes, idea. and then just keep it underneath and, and put another one over the top. It's yeah, like changing the beds. Just, yeah, but you just put it over the top so yeah. you don't have to store it away. You just hide it in the cushion. So I thought that's a brilliant that's idea. That's a really so good idea. So you could do this double-sided. <laughs> and just flip it around. Yeah, and just flip it around for yeah. something else. You could do like an autumn and a... You know, or this one, I think, the with the gold look would be lovely for, like, New Year as well. So you yes. could have it all Christmas. Yeah, and then, and then, you then on the other side, the other you could side. have it, like, a New Year one. So you can just keep it up that bit longer. The green and red one is the one on the bottom of your screens at the moment. So the uh, Dresden wreath, that's the traditional bundle in the greens and reds. But I love the idea that you could have something sneaky on the back yeah. if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought you were going to say, if you were changing the cushions, that you could have one that you just sort of slip over the top. Oh, that's going a bit far. And we're gonna go that's a bit too technical. Let's what, keep it simple. Covers. We're going to go for wreath, wreath covers. covers. Yeah, we're going to start a new business. Shh, don't slate it yet. We've got, we've got things to make. You can design that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good luck with that. This is a really lovely sturdy. It's really, it's comfy. Yes. It looks like you want to yeah. get a squidge. It's yeah. really nice. It's so I well did, I'll, I'll say now, I did use about a, a bag and a half, a bag and a quarter of the stuffing. Okay. So um, if people want, uh, are buying the stuffing to make this, you probably want a bag and a, and a bit a more. Because it does look nice when it's really plump like fully, that. Fully stuffed. Yeah. Okay, then, so let's get cracking okay. with this one. So, um, so this is the wreath cover, yeah? Yes, so yeah. all I'm doing is making... <laughs> this is the wreath cover, yeah, we'll do it that way. Let's hang it back See up. if I can find a way to do it over the top. <laughs> um, you'd have to make it a bit bigger, wouldn't you? Can so I you're making top? two um, Dresdens. So you need 20 segments 
for each one. So you need 40 set when you're, you know, if you're doing all your cutting out to start yeah. off with, which I'd recommend doing, you're cutting 40 of the segments, but the cutting goes so quickly and I'll show you how. I've got um, both of the fabrics here that, I, that I've used um, and they, they were folded over. So I cut a long strip at eight inches long, uh, sorry, eight inches wide, the length of the fabric and they're folded over. So that one's folded and That's that one's folded. That's the mono bundle, the one on your screens at the moment there. Yeah, so I'll be cutting four segments at once. When I did this at home, I actually laid it up further, so I was doing eight at once. So you just but if you're it. new to it, yeah. I wouldn't do quite so many. So you're just lining that up along the edge and then... But even cut. getting four at once out of that... Yes, it's, that's it's fantastic. It's so gonna... you think, oh, I've got 40 to cut, but it really doesn't take very long to do at all. It's quite quick. To what extent are you literally just relying on the ruler? It doesn't even look I'm like you're checking. Just relying on the ruler. The, yeah, that you're, I'm not it doesn't looking, even look like you're no. having to check. Oh, no, is that the right measurement? To. So long or... as you know you've cut your strip to the size that you, so the you want for your for your dress and whatever it might be. Yeah, because you could make this a bit bit you know a, a bit bigger. I wouldn't go any smaller for the wreath because the the central hole we'll won't. Yeah, it yeah. just won't look. You won't look like in a donut proportion, anymore, really. Yeah, <laughs> um, you can go a bit smaller, but. Um, a tiny one might just be a bit fiddly. Um, so that's that's really it. So long as you've cut that to the width that you want, it's just, and you're just rotating the Again the as well, it's that, cutting. you're not gonna waste, you don't waste fabric, it no. really does maximize. Uh, it's only when you do the very first cut, there's a tiny, there's a tiny little bit that, yeah. that you're wasted, but that's it. Yeah, so you just keep doing that so that you've got 40. Yep. And then um, you need to sew them together. Now, at this point, it's just slightly different. So um, I've pre-cut some already to finish off the one that I've started. So to make it into the Dresden, what you do is you fold um, the segment over so you, it's right sides together. Okay. And then we're going to sew along this um, point here. So using your quarter inch seam, you're just going to sew along here and you want to back stitch at the beginning. Even though it's a fold, you still want to back stitch at the beginning because that's going to be the point when you turn it through. OK, and so you're back stitch it as there. Well, yeah, you? exactly. Yeah. So, you, well, we're not stuffing the points, but to get it nice and pointy. Yeah. So you back stitch there and back stitch there and you can chain piece them all. So it goes really quickly. So I'll do that with these four. So you see what I mean? So actually the first two like processes for this are quite methodical, just Yes. Quick, you can quite quickly do your cutting all in one go, layer it up. Yeah. Once you've got, with, with the ruler, obviously it's really easy. You just simp, you're just turning that, turning that cutting and then just chain piecing all of that through. Yeah. So you're... It's, it is a really quick project, actually. I think the stuffing is the, the thing that takes the longest time. I find that quite therapeutic. When Joe's here, I'm like, I don't mind doing the stuffing. I'll just do, just stand here with your pokey stick and just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got a photo someone sent in. Who's that one from? From Rachel. Let's have a look. Oh... Oh, that's beautiful. Her this is Rachel's first ever dressing room. Oh, she wow. uses a creative grids ruler. And you would never know that, would you? That's like a no. really beautiful sort of flower. That is beautiful. I really like Lovely that. Lovely colours. First co as well. Yeah, and that you really that shows how creating yeah. those different sizes, you, again, you, you can, can create a match. really different look. Yeah, beautiful. That's the thing as well, because you might look at that and go, oh, is that, is that a lot of money for one shape? But it's not because you've got... You can do so the many things with it. And yeah. the different things you can mix and match with. And also, you would never have thought before about really using it even for a wreath. You only think about using it for that block. Um, yeah. And even having the circle as well. Obviously, then you've got a, a yeah. template for circles and um, something for curves as well. So you can no get more a lot of use a cup out of that. Or a mug. So I've just sewn along. So I would just do that with all of my... Um, pieces and I just chain piece them because it's so quick and, and easy to do okay. and then what you want to do is um, just snip those threads in between and get rid of those tails and then and this is quite an important part you just want to trim off this corner so where the fold is quite close to the stitching where the fold is just clip that off because that'll just help you get the nice points. Okay. That's a bit tricky on the black because I've done it with black thread. I hope I didn't just cut my stitches. You, you know, go close to your stitches, but be yeah. mindful of them. You don't want to. I like the to idea of the New Year. 
I think that's good because it's almost like yes. firework. This is almost a bit sort of yeah. Isn't it? It's nice. I think. And people I mean, do it has like the snowflakes on, so it's nice and wintry. So you could have this for the whole season. Yeah. Really. And then you're just going to turn this through. So I've clipped that that corner where my point's going to be, and you just flip that through. And that creates your point. Point. So then on the back, I mean, I did have, I had a little crochet needle I used to get that point out. And if then you've got you, those tilde kits, you know, the ones where you get almost like a noodle stick. Yes. <laughs> where you yeah. just push it in. Just something small to poke out that um, point. And then you want to fold it over and you want to try and get it, you know, even. You don't want it looking like that. No. You don't want it at a funny sort of an angle. You want to get that edge there nice and straight so the points are lined up. Yeah. And then you can just give that a finger press like that. And so you do that with all of them. So we're creating these. You can just see here on the one on the table where you get that nice crisp point at the top. This is what? Yeah. And that one there's the mono bundle. So you get three fabrics in there. This is just using two. And so you still have a meter of fabric left over in a different colorway. Um, or you could mix and match three fabrics in if you wanted to, or like that one yep. was six fabrics, wasn't it? So it's really, yeah. This one's most popular actually this morning. Um, so the gra graphic for that one on, on your screen, ZTGC33, and that's 19.99. That's good value, isn't it? Three meters. It of... is. So with this one, I've paired them up. So I'm just gonna do that. So when it comes to sewing them, you want to line up those, um, put, you know, yeah, yeah, that, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Where your points are, so line that up. But we're going to be sewing along this edge here, okay? Okay. So you want to get these as close as possible. If they're not quite meeting, don't worry, because it's just how you fold. You know, you fold it. But it's not worth taking the time to get this completely perfect. Okay. You know, it doesn't have to be matching at the bottom. So if there's I'm a saying. tiny little bit. If there's a tiny bottom. little bit like that, then it's okay where it's overlapping. Um, if it's way off, you might want You've to done rethink wrong. it. Yeah. yeah. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew from, from that edge there with a quarter inch, but I'm going to stop at least a quarter inch away from the bottom. Yeah. And that's because what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this underneath. Oh, okay? so by so it just, not being stitched, it keeps yeah, it Yeah, I just want it to bendy. have a, a bit of give, exactly. So just sewing up to, you know, about half quarter, it's up to you really, how mm -hmm. big you want your hole, but at least a quarter inch away from that bottom edge and sew these together. And you just keep doing that with all of them all the way around. You know, you say all sort of a half or a quarter at the bottom. Does it matter? Yeah. That, do they not all need to be the same? Do you not need to be yeah, aware of so long as it's all, all yeah. roughly so you get the that same. Nice but as you're middle. easing it round, there's a bit of give to it. So it doesn't really matter. If it's if you leave too much at the bottom, you're not going to get as much of a, of a curve because you're yeah. folding it and tucking it. It will, it will go straighter. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, so if, if you leave too much, too much it will end up, it won't be sort of as curved. You can just see that there. If you were folding that back, just trying to create a nice circle in the middle, really. So I'm sewing in black thread because when it comes to it later on, you, you are going to see some of the stitches. And I thought I'd rather it be black than, than white, but it, you know, it would be up to you. But you want to use um, a coordinating thread. Yeah, rather than... Yeah. What I love about these sorts of projects is I think a lot of people are scared of circles or curves generally, aren't they? Yeah. Just with maybe stitching with curves. But actually, this is straight lines. It's not... And yes, It no. creates a circle for you. Yeah, You're we not... are going to be doing... When we create that in a little bit. bit, yeah, for the inner bit. But oh, it's, not diff it's not different. But it's not... It's not tricky. It's not all curves no. to create a circle. No. And this doing Dresden plates is really quite straightforward. And like you said, if you wanted to, we're doing points on here, but you could use yes. the circle ruler that comes in this bundle as well and have this curvy, so it would be more of a... Um, this, this one's more of a... Like a firework, isn't it? With that, those yeah, it looks edges. more flowery. It looks more like a flower. So like the Dresden that we've just seen, if you wanted a wreath for the summertime, mm. also, I don't think they should just be for Christmas. No. I think wreaths all year. Um, you could make one, you know, with, with brighter colours. And, and if a you cover. did the curved... Yeah, a cover. <laughs> <laughs> if you did them curved, it would look more flowery, wouldn't it? Yes, yeah, so it'd be like a, a spring, prints. sort of a yeah. nice spring. I might come back and do that on another yeah. show. <laughs> 
here's the ruler. You can just see a still of that on your screens there. So as you can see, it comes with the Dresden plate and also the uh, circle as well. So you can use both of those. Nearly, oh, a, quarter, nearly a quarter of the stock of, the, of that's been checked out already this morning. So twenty ninety nine. if you do like that one, you can give the call centre a ring or do that online. Yeah, my... Um, I go to see a lady for acupuncture sometimes, mm -hmm. and she, I always admire when I go into her house, whatever the season is, she decorates for the season. So yeah, in autumn, she has all lovely um, sort of burnt oranges and conkers and things all laid out. And, yeah. and I think, oh, I really love that. It's I'd really, really nice. Yeah. And you just, it, it's really lovely. That's what I was saying yesterday. I want to be one of those people. I'm just it's not. It's just not. <laughs> But now I've had that, that, now somebody said the idea of, of the putting cushions. the cushions over the top. It's really nice. So you, can just, so you can see they're not quite meeting, but I've got that gap there at the end. Okay. Let's just show you. I'll just show you yeah. before we move away. Just there. So they're not quite meeting sort of here. But it's okay because we'll be folding be it back right. anyway. Yeah. Okay. And then, and if you were doing it, at the, uh, you know, traditionally as a quilt, you're covering that. Anyway. anyway, so I don't really, you know, I don't worry about it. Oh, and I've just sewn those together the wrong way, haven't I? Never oh, that's mind. annoying. I even made a mental note more? to myself, no, don't do it's that, still but be it doesn't matter. Two the same. Yeah, I'm okay with it. This bit can go on the back, this side <laughs> can go on the back. It'll be this fine. is the side that after we said, we're going to have it suspended from the ceiling, though, aren't we, Lucy? <laughs> so we can yeah, see it you can see it. There and you'll just go, go, oh, yeah. well, she made <laughs> oh, a mistake there. Didn't get that quite right. Never mind. When I'm sewing these as well, I just do a little back stitch over the top. Why is that? So just... it just helps secure it. So um, as we're stuffing it, we are putting quite a, you know, a bit of pressure on it and you don't mm. want these, these um, to pop open. Yeah. So I just do a back stitch and I go over the top so it's, it's just nice and secure. It's got like a stitch going over the edge of the fabric. Just to keep it. Yeah. Okay. So just while you're finishing those, I'm just yeah. going to recap the bundles that we've got, the different fabrics for these, and we'll come back and carry on with this in a second. So the um, one that Lucy's working with at the moment is the most popular, so that's the mono bundle. So here we go. So this is the, um, you get your black in there, which I said, this one's almost like a, um, a New Year fireworks. Um, that was what that reminded us of. And it's also teamed with another metallic in your snowflakes. And then you've got a solid black there as well. So if you wanted to intersperse those and use all three for the wreath, you could. Or you could maybe use the, have the black in your stash and use it for something else. ZTGC33. If you have got this one in your baskets, I'm being told, please do check it out because that's the most popular one this morning. 19.99. Then we've also got another bundle with um, three metres, but these are three one-metre cuts. So first of all, you've got the leaves on khaki. I love these sorts of colours. These are my sort of colours. Again, that's what we were saying, sort of an autumnal one if you wanted to. And then you've also got your lovely coppery colours there and some burnt orange as well. And then we've got some Christmassy fabric there too. So actually, you could, if you wanted to, you could use this fabric for something, a Christmassy project, and then you could mix and match these two for the wreath if you wanted to. So you've got an all year round wreath, like we were just saying, and then you could use the Christmassy fabric for another project. So then also the other two Christmas bundles that we've got, um, again, these are six half metre cuts. So you've got six different fabrics in these bundles, two solids, two spot ons and two Santas. So let's see the wreath that Lucy made. You'll see it in this bundle. Have we got a picture of that one? There it is. So that's the green and red bundle, the traditional colourway. I love that big bow, that big statement bow. So you've got your green centres, your green spot on and your green solid. And then you've also got your reds there as well. This is all in the same bundle. And again, what I love about these is you don't have to use all of these fabrics if you didn't want to. You know, you could keep the spot-ons in your stash or you could use just the Santas or you really can play around and use them in whatever combinations you like. And then finally, we've got another um, six half-metre cuts. So this is in blues and reds. So first of all, you've got your spot-on blue, your solid sort of teal and your Santas on blue. And then again, this is your vintage bundle. This is teamed with your reds. 27.99. So four different bundles. Let's go back over to Lucy. Where she, oh, we're doing some pressing. So we're doing the uh, we're using the mono bundle, which is the black and white one. But also you've got that autumnal sort of feel with the holly if you wanted to combine it with a different different fabric there as well. So 
This is the Dresden ruler that we're working with this morning. You can see that's the Dresden plate ruler and then also the circles that you use this to create the wreath or you can use it for, um, for a quilt block if you wanted to. So now nearly a third of the stock of that one checked out. We had loads of those this morning. So it's just a really, it's a very creative way of using the creative grids rather than just using it for a quilt, <laughs> isn't it? It's not it it's creative with creative grids. Yes. Going outside the, outside the grid, outside the box. <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about this morning. It's fun. Here we um, go. So th this is one that I made at home. So I'd sewn this with um, a white thread. I don't want people to get confused. Um, it doesn't particularly matter for the piecing what thread um, you use, but I don't like changing the thread on my machine very much. So when I was saying I'm using the darker thread, that was because you are going to see the stitching. So I would stick to whatever you're going to use the way to, for the top stitching. Yeah, just keep it simple. So what I've done is I've pressed um, all the seams of the plate. So they're just spinning around. So I've just pressed them all to the side. In the all same, going the in same direction. direction. Yeah, as it goes around. And just giving these um, points a press. So that's all folded over neatly. And then this is the bit that's just a little bit fiddly. I would use steam, we, we're not allowed to use steam, but I would no. use steam on your iron um, at home for this bit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold over these edges of the inner circle, okay? So because we've left um, these seams slightly open, that's just gonna fold over nicely to create a curve. So we just need to press that How do down. you know quite how far to just sort of- Just eyeball it. You just if you felt unsure, you could put your two pieces together and mark, mm. you know, just put a dot at the bottom so you know you're going to sew up to that. Up to this point. Up to that point. But quite honestly, there were probably moments where I was a bit distracted, maybe went a bit too far, or there might be moments where I've stopped a bit too soon, but it sort of comes out Eventually, in the turning you end up of it. it. Yeah. yeah, so don't be so too it's quite concerned. Forgiving. It's not yeah, too... It's quite forgiving. Yeah. Just leave a little gap at the bottom and you'll be fine. You can't okay. really go wrong. You just want to make sure as you're folding it back, that you're folding up to where you've stitched. You don't want to fold it and be able to see that it's unsewn, if, if you see what yeah. I mean. So if you leave too much, you don't want to have it. It's not gonna be, well, it's yeah. not gonna also create that But nice then we're going circle. to top stitch it anyway. So honestly, just don't worry about it. <laughs> just the do it. The story is just get on with it. <laughs> just get on with it, just make it, you'll oh, be fine. We had a question in from Lorraine. Morning, Lorraine. Um, hi, Lucy, what size have you used? Sorry, I nipped out. Oh. You nipped out? <laughs> Hey, Lorraine, what do you mean you're not <laughs> here at eight o'clock ready to ready for the CS this morning? Hi, Lorraine. I don't know if we can answer your question. <laughs> Watch it on repeat. No, I'm only joking. No, what size um, it using? was it was eight inches. So the strips that I cut, that I cut the segments out of, was yes. an eight-inch strip. Okay. So just the width of the fabric, eight <laughs> inch, use your normal ruler, and then I just cut all the plates from from that. So that's the size that mine is. To create you, this is the wreath, this size yeah. here. And I think that's a quite, I think that's, that's a quite nice a standard size. sort of it's size. A standard yeah. sort of size, yeah. I mean, if you did want to make smaller ones, you know, you can. It just will be a little bit fiddlier. Mm. Maybe that if word, you practice, it with, a, <laughs> practice <laughs> it with a bigger one, then you could yes. maybe try it with a smaller yeah. one if you wanted to. I do. might try. Oh, we had another message in from Rachel. Oh, this was Rachel who sent us the picture. Uh, morning, ladies. The Creative Grid Ruler is amazing. Easy to create Dresden plates. Lucy, the wreath is beautiful. Thank, Thank you for showing you. my first, and I've lost the end of the message. It'll be her first Dresden plate. Right? My first Dresden yeah. plate. Yeah. You're welcome. Well, it, and it was fabulous, Rachel. Well done. It was the first one as well. Yeah. It does just prove that it isn't, it's not fluke and it's not the, necessarily the skill of the person using the ruler. The ruler does Although do that a lot. was very skilled. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about if a beginner wanted to use yes. this, it's not, no. it isn't something that you need no, to No, you be. get really professional <laughs> results. I say that all the time. A lot of, like that, you know, a lot of the things that I've made are down to these rulers. rulers because to get this precision and have everything look so nice, it's the skill of, you know, these the designs and the, and the way they're made. And this one was designed by um, Lynn Edwards, who quilters might know is, is a wonderful quilter. So. Oh, it's not Rachel Ruler, is it, this one? It's I not. I noticed this this no. morning. It's a different, yeah. different designer. They have so many rulers. There are so many different things you I can know, do as well. I know, there are. And the great thing with these as well, there's a... Um, they have these... Well, I don't know if you can see on here. Is it QR or Q... No, QR, QR isn't it? Code. Uh, QR code. QR yeah. code um, that you can scan, and then they have videos of different links how to use the rulers so you can see that on the rectangular on the rectangular ruler there just give that a little scan and, and this you was your first one wasn't it yeah it was and if you have no idea what that is you can just google, google. on you or uh, youtube 
Just search on YouTube. Creative grids. For the name of the ruler, whatever the ruler is. And so it will dressed in plate, creative grids, yes, and then it will come it up will with just a... come up. So I've just pressed that from the front as well. Okay. Um, so that that's nice and flat. This one, for some I think the iron wasn't quite as hot. I didn't get it Somewhere. as flat, but I might just give that one another okay. press, actually. I'll just show you, so you tricky. can just see there, sort of ease that circle back. And you can see there where you have got the different size at the bottom and it does does still go back all the way around yeah. to create a nice circle. Yeah. In there. So, and don't worry as well, if it's not a perfect circle, we're going to pin and stitch this so you can sort of still manipulate it a little bit mm. as you're going around. So, you know, just don't, don't fret at this point if it doesn't really look too much. Do you like know what this circle. shape reminds me of? The, you know the Christmas biscuit that you get in the tin that you have at Christmas with the thick chocolate on it? Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And the, you only, I only really associate those I know with Christmas. What you mean, yeah. the really, like the nice thick, the one that everyone wants when the yeah. tin's open and everyone's <laughs> like, oh no, you go first. But really they're thinking, don't eat the, that chocolate one. That's so it's true. It's that sort of shape. So I'm just going to uh, just talk through what I'm going to do so everybody's okay. got a clear idea and then, and then I'll show you um, all the little tips and tricks as we're doing it but so the basic principle of it is we've got two dressing plates we've folded that under that center um, circle part underneath and we're going to top stitch around there okay, okay? so that's going to keep those folds and we're going to go quite close and top stitch around there and then what we're going to do is um, a, again a, a sort of a top stitch all around the at, not all around we're going to leave a gap but around the outer edge going from the inner point to the inner point yeah. all the way around so just around there yeah from there to there so it was so it's a very very gentle curve okay the inner part isn't no that's quite a tight curve but the outer part is is um a very gentle curve so we're sewing all the way around there and leaving a gap could you draw on the back if you wanted to? It's quite odd. Could you put some sort of marker just to follow that? You could draw it if you, you do it on the front. You do it on the because you're stitching it on the front. So you can you could mark it on the front. So with chalk or with a um, air erasable or water erasable pen. Just if you're not, you could do as that confident. if you felt uncertain. And and you could even do that um, on the in on the inner part. Okay. I mean, you can use the the edge of your foot as a guide as well and move your needle over if you're worried about that. But because of the nature of um, dress and plates and sewing things into a circle um, you know things can shift about so before we pin that inner part I'm going to pin each of the plates together that was my because, next question how do we match it up so it perfectly yeah, creates because that they, they do you know and we've pressed it and it might not be all completely you know even yeah. and maybe one seems bigger than the other so just as close as we can and you just you know can move it around and match up the points so that it's nice and neat and do that all the way around and there is some giving it so it will it will sort of yeah it will shift do as it's told yeah. um but just leaving that for now and just going around and pinning each of the bits so it's a bit you know sort of fiddly and time consuming but I'd, but worth doing if you want yes, that absolutely. really precise yeah worth doing so and this is the point as well where if you were pattern matching so if you wanted as in if you wanted the same front and back you would yes. want to check that you're laying your fabric. Yeah, actually, that's a good point because I don't want to. So I'm going <laughs> to shift it around. It around. Yeah, because I think it's quite nice that you, you sort of see the other fabric peeking through. Not ever so much. On the back. But if we can, I don't know if this is going to show up. But because I've put the black behind it, you can, you can almost see that seam. Yes, you can yeah. just see it. So where we're going to be sewing there, so you can see that there, which you won't see when it's stuffed, no. by the way. So don't worry about that. But when we're sewing it, we're sewing just above that. So that's going to catch that seam inside. So we leave these loose, but all the seams are hidden because that's folded over. Let me so, show should we yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I grab this one. On that one. So nothing's, nothing's going to come out. Nothing's, you know, Here, but it's, it's quite completely tile. Yeah. yeah, it's a lovely, fun, um, thing because that's hidden, that's sewn through, so nothing's coming out. You've just got those edges, and I intentionally with this one tried to get the different colours so it would just peek through from the, the other side. You can see yeah, just there, like from that. The back. Yeah, because you could almost think that those have been attached afterwards. You yes. don't even think that that's part of the shape, and yeah. that would be quite a lot of work to go all the way around and oh, add, yeah. the, you know, and to add yeah. those. But no, it's but no. easy. <laughs> it's just there for you. <laughs> this is the traditional bundle, so your greens and reds, you get six different fabrics in that bundle. You can see them sort of all there. 
You've got your reds either. Oh, these are the greens, and then you've got your reds either to the other either side. So it is worth taking your time over this bit because if you're if they're not matching, mm -hmm. it, it well will, then those it will look a bit rustic, those, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's more that those triangles at the top there aren't going to to sit sort of quite as nicely together. Yeah, and also that you're you know that you're able to hide those hide that seam down there. You are right, it is very tactile, like you sort of want to, it is very tactile. Yeah. I mean, even like a smaller version might be nice as like a baby toy. Yeah, you, you can know, it, like just you a little, a, yeah. a little ring thing on a buggy. Yes, yeah, no, definitely, or even on that I haven't made pot. a smaller one, so if it, it, if if it does fiddly. end up being really fiddly, I'm sorry. <laughs> You don't take it if anyone wants that. to if, test it. If it's really, it. if it's really good, <laughs> then Lucy's that was my idea. <laughs> I said it first. Yes, that was me, that was me. <laughs> so the pins that Lucy's using, those are just going to pop up on your screens. There they are, 549. And these are the glass-headed pins. Which I love. I love glass-headed pins. They're my, sorry, glass. Why are they your own? <laughs> glass. Um, I just like it because, you you know, I mean, not that you're going to iron over it, but, you know, if you've got to iron up to something, you don't have to worry about that... Um, melting. Melting or anything. Um, I just tend to find they're better... They're nice quality. I won't say better because there might be some beautiful plastic headed pins, but um, they're just always seem the, the, the ones I've always had have seemed to be a nice quality. And these are a good length of pin as well. Especially yeah, because then they look slightly like longer this. than the. Um, yeah. So the these are really, ones. I think, are they quilting pins? So you could use these for basting as well if you um, had projects that you needed to baste. So sorry, I'm going as quick as I can, but I don't no, want to no, take your time. jab it's myself. Fine. And it, it is it's worth taking It's tools the job as well, isn't it? If you, want, yeah, if you are going to be ironing it and it might come into contact with heat, then don't risk it with plastic and end up with something sort of marked on your fabric. Or... Yeah, I just like the feeling of them as well, having the glass heads. Makes me think of Italy. That's I don't really know that they're, random. I don't know that they made it. Oh, they make a lot of glass in Italy. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't have associated glass-headed oh, pins I, I went to glass factories when I was Oh, little. really? Yeah, we went on, like, tour with my nan of glass I factory. think we did that in the Isle of Wight. Wasn't it quite, <laughs> as, wasn't quite <laughs> as exotic? <laughs> I'm pretty sure we did that with my nan and granddad in the Isle of Wight, yeah. <laughs> I don't think they were making pins either, though. <laughs> Just pop this wreath back up. So what do they do? Show you the process of how they... Yeah, how they make it. And they do the... Um, is it Murano glass? I'm not... I was... Oh, the wrong sure. name where it has like the different colors in it and yeah. things like that really really beautiful a lot of uh, light fixtures i remember things like that really it is lovely. amazing all the different art forms that isn't oh, that people yeah. it's so interesting in. to yeah. see how things and, um, are made i love that and, and you you're familiar with yours and what you might do and yeah. you might and you could have no sort of understanding of how someone else creates something or no i'll probably just say, admire well, the work when as a child i probably walk around going no. oh, oh, this oh when are we getting this. an ice cream <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. and now look at me now oh i remember yeah. going to this. <laughs> yeah i was just thinking i'm pretty sure when we were in the isle of wight we were just like and there's a sweet shop as well here isn't there we just yeah wait. that's always the like the best shop bit is the best bit or like yeah your parents would be like oh you can have an ice cream after yeah. or whatever that's yeah. the that's what they used to get you around but that's I do the same thing with my kids because I think the stuff like that's good for you know it's good for them and to be able to see creative processes and and sometimes as well even if you moan about it at the time if you're yeah. at school and that topic comes up or you actually feel exactly. quite like oh I yeah. know I know a bit about that yeah. I can put my hand up and I don't do know um do yeah. know a bit and we had another message in from Geraldine morning um hi Lucy and Amy this would make lovely cushions for Christmas I do you know I thought that yeah, you could sit those on there um everything you make is beautiful I want to make it all oh Love Geraldine. thank you she's so sweet send us a picture if you do make any what, what have you made yes no that would make a nice cushion and you could that's not the biggest is eight it, no it can go up to nine inches can't can it? go up to nine so you could inches so you could do it bigger yeah if you if you are using it for cushions yeah I was, I did it at this size, I'll be honest. Yeah, go for because it. Because it was just a total test. Oh, <laughs> so I didn't know it was going to work. Or not. And there were even moments where I was making it. I was like, I'm not sure this is going to work, but it turned out great. So here we but are. Do you have projects where you've spent the time doing all of that and then you go, do you know, this just doesn't work? Oh, yes. And yes. how good are you at going, I'm going to walk away from that or I'm going to make this, try and make oh, this no, work? Oh, no, I will walk away. Walk I've got away. other things to do. <laughs> yeah. I walk away, but I sent. I normally not before emailing it to a friend, going, "Ha ha, look, look how this. awful this is." It's like a splurge, <laughs> sort of. Yeah. So um, once you've pinned those um, outer sections, then pin your um, middle. Middle, and this way as well, because you know those are lined up. You can sort of line up um, 
you know, where your plates are, yeah. uh, where the segments are, sorry, on the, on the inner circle as well. But again, doesn't matter. You, you're not going to see, so don't worry about these all perfectly lining matching. up and your seams matching because it really doesn't matter. What you want to try and do is to get it looking like a circle. That's the important thing. So make sure all your edges are tucked in and just work your way around trying to get it circular. What will happen when you stuff it is it will sort of move. And even now you can kind of, because it's stuffed, you can sort of squish it yeah. And it might end up, you know, you've been playing with it, so it looks more oval Slightly now. Off, and I yeah. want to go and do that to make <laughs> it more of a circle. So with all of this, it, it, it isn't completely precise. You don't need to it's worry stay about a bit it. Sort of malleable, yeah. really. So long as it's not like a diamond or a square or something <laughs> odd, you'll, you'll be yeah. fine. So if it's a bit more of an oval, just don't worry about it. Where and you can always gonna... make your bow a bit big <laughs> to cover <laughs> it. Maybe the, a big, the, yeah, make the idea. tails longer <laughs> to hide it. That's fine. I was going to say, where, will we stuff this, not from the middle, you'd stuff it from, from the, the edge. Outside. So we, yeah. when we come to sew this section, we're leaving a gap. Yeah, okay. So I might even, when I start to sew this, turn some of these pins round so, so I don't know which ones forget to leave, to leave a gap. But you can always unpick, really. So. Uh, we had another message from Jackie. Hi, both. Um, I think I wouldn't match the points. Then you would have a ruffle all the way around. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. So th then you've got way so at like the moment we've got it. gaps. It would be... Yeah, yeah that's, that's a really good yeah, idea. Yeah, you can. See, look at you. Yeah. so creative. I it's love that. lovely. Who was that? That was from Jackie. Let's, yeah, yes. Jackie. Jackie, go on, make one. And then we can see what it looks like. <laughs> With the ruffle. With I've the got ruffle. a stock update. Is that on the ruler? Oh, the mono bundle, so that one on your screens at the moment, less than 10 of that left in stock, so single oh figures. If you do like that one, ZTGC33, just check out your baskets if you don't want to miss out. And then the um, over half of the Dresden Plate ruler stock has also gone, so that's on the bottom of your screen. And that's over half been stocked, uh, checked out, so you've got your circle and the Dresden Plate there. Both of those for 19.99, and for that price, there's so many different things you can do. It's not just one or two projects, yeah. so you can obviously use it for the wreath, but you can use it for quilting. Or we've had pictures sent in as well. Oh, we've had a cushion sent in. Who was this one from? Lorraine. Let's see. Oh, I like oh, that. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, that's with, with the, the curvy hearts. edge, isn't and it? As well. as well. Yes, that's with the curved edge. So rather than so rather than using those points, like we were just saying, and Jackie was saying about with the ruffle, if you use the circle ruler, really, you can create that. Really lovely sort of um, curve all the way around. Yeah. I like that. Oh, I want really to make nice. another one now with a curve and a ruffle. A curve and a ruffle. Yeah. You can have three. Hang yeah. them up on the banisters. Oh, I'm just going to put them everywhere. Do you decorate and then a lot? My husband Christmas. will take it down. Really? Yes, I made a beautiful. <laughs> no, what did I make? Some beautiful bunting. And I just keep hiding it. I keep finding it and putting just it back up. Away. <laughs> yeah. But no one says anything. It's he just like sort of everything minimal. And I like it all homely and, yeah. you know. That's what you do. Yeah, but it's just a bit of fun. It makes me laugh. So Wait until he sees the cushion covers. I'm not sure what he's going to think about the four-layer cushion cover. Oh, it'll just make it comfy, won't yeah, it? Yeah, it'll be fine. Just squidgier. Yeah, just be a bit squidgier. He throws them all off anyway. Does <laughs> he? Not having any of that. We're a perfect match. Yes, we sound it. Match made in heaven. <laughs> so I've just pinned that so you can see it looks, you know, not very circular, but it but will be fine. But you know it's going to be a Yeah, middle. just because I've pinned it like that. So, um... We're going to sew round round here, and um, you want to, to to get quite close um, to the edge, not too close, obviously. But I don't know if you can show yeah, on that it's one. Nice and so it's tight, just a top it? stitch, but you you want to make sure you're catching all that fabric underneath. So as I've been pinning, I'm making sure that it's level. I'm not worrying about the seams, just that it is level, so that it's going to be the same on both sides. Because it sounds, I don't know if it sounds like a silly word to describe it, but it feels quite solid. It is, it's, yeah. You know, because you've got quite a lot there, of layers in there quite as a lot well. Of, you can so just lift that up. It is quite substantial. Lucy's desperate to. What shape did you want to squish that back yeah, to? Yeah, and a, a circle to be mm. nice and circular. Mm -hmm. And um, wouldn't it be great as a donut, and you could embroider sprinkles on it. Oh, that's yeah. fun. <laughs> and then you could put like a pen pot in the middle or something like that. You'd have a smaller one, couldn't you? You could put Always with the stationery. Always with the stationery. <laughs> oh, I was thinking, what else could you put in there? You could have it on the table. I like the cushion idea, though. Yeah. I think they would be, they'd be nice cushions. They would. And if you had a slightly bigger one, and then you could have a slightly smaller than the eight inch one and sort of put, put it in front of it. It'd be nice. Yeah. So I um, reduce my stitch length. I can't now remember whether I use my walking foot or not. I possibly did, and I'm, okay. not, I'm not Because here, of the layers. So we'll see how that works out for me. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm not too sure. We'll soon find out. I'm going to go this way because my pins are facing that way. I would normally go the other way, but it doesn't really matter. So you just want to find, you know, maybe sort of an eighth of an inch. But I mean, you can just eyeball it. If you if you use, I mean, that's I've used red and it does show up on the green, but it doesn't look. No, you know, offensive. you don't know because it's it. green it doesn't and really red anyway. The whole thing's no. I mean, you would normally think, oh no, I wouldn't. You know, if you wanted to hide a thread, but it's it's not. But it's screaming and shouting it. No, at not you. at all. No. So I'm using black for this one. So because there's not any colour that would completely disappear there, is there? Because you've got a mix. You've got green no, and exactly. red, so you're not going yeah. to. Yeah, and the same with the black and white. Either the white's going to stand out on the black, or the black on the white, the, vice versa. So I'm doing a stitch length of. Um, 2.2 I would definitely keep it at that or smaller okay because um, if you don't want big stitches when you're going around a curve you want to keep it um nice and neat so you can do a locking stitch or just a little backwards and forwards do you hang a wreath on your front door um yes I do but not a handmade one no because, because of the I live in Manchester <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah it would get damaged <laughs> so that's a polite, that your polite polite yeah that's my of. polite version um so no i don't i don't but i do hang one up but but just um i just saw the other day in the um there's a florist near where i live and they're doing wreath making classes with obviously with flowers oh, yes, lovely. i thought that would be a really lovely thing to do yeah really nice so just so i'm just yeah just going quite slowly removing the pins as i go and just going fairly close now i you know, I'm moving it as I sew. I sew curves quite frequently, so I'm I'm sort of used to it. But you um, you don't want to be pulling it to make your stitches too large. So if you prefer, you just stop, lift your foot, and pivot it round. Yeah. You know, do a few stitches. When it gets to a point where you're getting too far away from the edge, you just stop, lift your foot, turn it round, and and keep going. Okay. How are we doing on time? I think we've got uh, about three minutes or so. Oh, what? I know. I just want super quick. Okay. I'll just, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going slowly anymore. I'm going to try and go quickly. So just make sure those edges stay. That one's gone a bit off. But I thought okay. with you the other day we had a really lovely new um, bee fabric. Oh, yes. I, love I thought, oh, fabrics. Lucy will like that. Oh, we've had a message in from Julie. Morning, Julie. Um, hi, Lucy and Amy. Love the demo. You could make this in yellow and orange with mismatched points as the sun for the summer. Oh, oh, see, oh, lovely. Go on, Julie. We've got to Look do the that. cover, haven't yeah. we? We've see, got to do a cover. The covers. We're going to have to do a whole show on wreath covers. <laughs> Beautiful idea. Yeah, I sunshine. Love I, that. that's, and with the, if you do the ruffles as well. Yes. Just, oh, yes. Stunning. OK, what I'm going to do so I don't completely mess this up is... So you can see how even now... I can sort of adjust that yeah. and make it... A circle. A circle. Yeah. So I'm going to just shift a couple of these pins this way and hope that I remind myself that this has to be a gap. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Not to sew round. So you want to, leave, you want to leave a fairly good-sized gap because once we've sewn around this edge, you've got to get the stuffing over here. And yeah. if you've left a tiny little gap, you want to be able to get, get your hand through. in mm -hmm. to push it. Because it's not like a cushion where you could push all the yes. way across. And this is not something dainty where a stick is in any way going to help no. you. You need to use your hands. So, And you do want to be quite forceful when you're stuffing it. Let's sew Because this that's the only so. way you're going to get that big bouncy yes. ring. It has to be quite yeah. well stuffed. So, yeah, we've got about two and a half minutes. OK, so here I'm going to go really quite close to where these points... Um, Meat? Come, come in, yeah. you know, the inner part the, of yeah. the point. Um, so I'm just going to start on a seam. I'm just going to do a back stitch because time. And then as I'm going across, what you want to try not to do is go straight from the corner to the... Can I show on here? Yeah, because it makes more sense. So you don't want to sew straight across there if possible. You want to try and create just ever... I mean, not, you know, but just ever so slight curve just minimal but yeah just, yeah just minimal just so so don't go from from here to here just ever so slightly um go towards the points yeah and, and if combat. anything it's slightly less pressure you don't have to go straight you can just sort of start yes. easing it round yes and as you're sewing it will just go round 
Do you see what I mean? So I'm not really pushing it. Just guiding you're it. Just guiding it to create that um, sort of a circle. So if you have just if you have just turned on the TV this morning, as who was it that just missed the very Lorraine. beginning? Lorraine. Lorraine. Morning, Lorraine. Um, if you have just turned us on this morning, we're using. We've, oh, we've only got how much stock left of this one? Less than ten. So if you check, if, if people, everyone checks out their basket. So for this Dresden plate ruler that comes with the circle as well, and that's what we've used or Lucy's used to create the wreath this morning. VLCQ32, 2099. You get both of those rulers in there. Um, up to and you can use that up to a nine inch. Um, Dresden plate. So those are those two there. We've only got a minute to go. Just to talk okay. about why you're doing that then. Yes. Stuffing wise. Okay, so sorts? stuffing wise, I've just used the toy stuffing and I used a bag and a bit a bag to and get a bit. it nice and um, stuffed. <laughs> um, and when you're Something stuffing like it, you know, obviously you want to be cautious because you don't want seams popping or anything like that. So you don't want to be you know really forceful with it but yeah at the same time you've got to get it stuffed so um oh it's just stuck on the seam there oops and um so your walking foot for this bit might be a good idea okay um but so we've just, only got 20 seconds okay so we'll use just... your hand go in 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 <laughs> push 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 through um stuff it or get the furthest away from your gap first and then you can sew that either by hand or on your machine. You just push the okay. stuffing out the way. We're done. <laughs> Angie's here in a second. We'll see you in three minutes. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. Don't miss our pack shows on Friday the 10th of November with much-loved designer Joe Carter and new guest Susie Argent from Ashmead Designs. Jo will launch our exclusive sewing quarter Christmas bear in fun festive prints from Macawa. This patchwork cuddly is sure to become a much loved collectible. Jo returns at 10 a.m. making beautiful Tilda kits and projects from the Handmade and Happy Book. You'll have Christmas all sewn up. And with our first shows featuring Devon's Ashme designs, we have two hours packed with Christmas English paper piecing kits and quilting kits. Don't miss these exciting shows this Friday from 8am to 12pm only on Sewing Quarter, Preview Channel 78. Follow us on Pinterest. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. Join us on Saturday the 11th of November when guest designer Jo Carter will make two of her amazing designs. At 8am tune in to see Jo's sausage dog mini quilt as seen in Love Patchwork and Quilting magazine. We've created a kit for you to sew your own. Then at 10am Jo will create her incredibly popular polar bear available in a limited edition cream fabric pack as well as the original white. He'll make the perfect gift for someone special. And Anna from Alice Caroline will also be in the studio with a gorgeous selection of Liberty kits. So join us on Saturday the 11th of November from 8am to 12pm, only on Sewing Quarter Freeview Channel 78. Hi, I'm Victoria Pete, and here are my top three tools. My first top tool is a and a quarter ruler. It's really nifty. It's got this nice little lip here that you use in foundation paper piecing. You butt it up against your paper and it helps you cut a really accurate quarter of an inch seam allowance every time. My next top tool is a thimble pad. I don't know about you, but I find thimbles really difficult to use. These thimble pads are great. They're made of leather, so they're nice and tough and they're adhesive on one side. Just stick them to your finger and your finger's protected. I use them when I'm doing English paper piecing. Last top tool is this mini iron. It's absolutely absolutely brilliant for sewing when you don't want to get out a big heavy iron. It's great for foundation paper piecing and it's great for when you're going to quilt club. It's got steam function and it gets super hot, it's perfect. back in our speedy getaway from that last hour. I didn't even get to tell you what we're doing. We're making this in this hour with Angie. So we've got quilt as you go and we're using the hopscotch quilt as you go to create this really lovely bag. I don't know if you can see that there. I'll just do a little close up so you can see 
the block. So we're using two of those there on both sides of that. And what you actually get using the Quilt As You Go Hopscotch uh, kit, in that, in that bundle you can make two bags. So you've got two, uh, enough blocks there to create two bags. You just need to add the fabric for the additional one. Now Quilt As You Go, if you don't know what it is, if you've never heard of it before, you don't, if you've never seen it before, it's like painting by numbers, but with fabric. So basically you get your wadding and it's pre-printed. So it's already got those, um, all of the markings already on there. And all you have to do is apply your fabric. So it's got the design, it's got everything there for you. You've just got to um, add the fabric to create that shape or that different uh, block. So this is the first time we've ever, ever used it to make a bag. So rather than using the blocks for a quilt, we're incorporating it into something maybe that you might use um, more often. So first of all, I'll show you the kit to make this particular bag. Now you get two meters of fabric, half a meter of all of those four different fabrics. Then you've also got your thread. And this is the Quilt As You Go pre-printed batting. So as I was saying, if you can just see here, you've got your uh, wadding there. This has a fusible back as well, but I don't know if you can just see all of those markings on there. That's just indicating exactly where you're going to lay your fabric. And we'll talk about that more in a sec with Andy. She can show you exactly how it works. So that's with the Tim Holtz fabric that you can see made up in this bag. Then we've also got two different colourways, two other ones. So again, two metres of fabric. This is the one Angie's going to be using in this hour. So more teals and you've got a nice bright lime, sort of a punchy lime green in this one too. This is the Hopscotch, Hopscotch foliage bag. So again, in that kit, you get the quilt as you go wadding, two metres of fabric and your thread. 27.99. And then our last one, so all of those, this one again coming with your pre-printed wadding um, and different fabric combinations here. This is a really lovely, uh, quite a playful bundle really. I think this would be nice. Um, you could maybe make this for a child if you wanted to as a school bag. So you've got a spot on in blue and in aqua. Then you've got a nice bright pink and then you've got your confetti. HHGC62, 29.99. So, let's take this bag, we'll head back over to Angie. Morning, Angie. Morning. First time we've done a bag with this one this it morning, is, isn't it? Yeah. So, well, this is a bit different rather than using it for a quilt. And we yeah. have used quilts as you go for um, table runners and things, yes. haven't we, before? Or placemats. Yeah. But was and this it, your idea? Yeah. <laughs> Go on, Angie. Yeah, don't ask me how these, these things just, just come, come to you when you're laying in bed at night. Like. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, one of the team said to me after my last show, oh, what do you fancy doing next time? And I said, do you know what? I've been thinking <laughs> about this, <laughs> about Quilt As You Go. Um, because it's, it's kind of, um, as you know, the Quilt As You Go, it's kind of a mixture between Quilt As You Go and foundation piecing. So it's quite yeah. a strange way. Well, not a strange way. It's quite a unique way of uh, making the blocks, but it's almost sort of, instead of stitch quilting in the ditch, it's almost like invisible quilting. So, already there. Yeah, already you? there. So I really like it and it's, um, and I actually think the blocks are quite striking on their own. Yes. Um, so you, so. They, you don't need to see them six all laid out together. No. Just that one on its own yeah. still has quite, you can see there those sort of quilting lines, but actually these are where you place the fabric onto your quilting as that's you it. go. And that's I know that it. sounds really obvious, uh, yeah. but that is what you're doing as you're putting the fabric into place where yeah. you're meant to, you know, it's, it's the same on both sides, but yeah. where you're, where you're we'll placing that fabric that. onto the um, pre-printed wadding, you quilt it as you attach as you it. Go. Yeah, so the quilting's kind of hidden. It's, you know, but although it gives the impression it's uh, perfectly in the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yes, I was thinking actually from a pack, I've got a pack here to yeah. show um, viewers how it comes. So, um, and they're really, there's, there's different designs obviously to choose from, but this is a really nice one. Um, also, uh, is it June Taylor? Yes. yes. She's, uh, she's actually got great um, YouTube tutorial as well. So you can either watch back, if you want to do it as a quilt, you can either watch back one of our shows or um, have a little look, yeah, on look there. at June Taylor's quilt. The same go. actually with the, um, you can see here, you've got the sort of the YouTube details with the videos. Yeah. And it's great they do that because we were just saying Creative Grid Rulers as well. They have the, yes. um, the code that you can scan That's and right. then you've got that little tutorial if you're not sure. That's but right. so you can use it if you want to. You get six blocks out of this uh, yeah. wadding. So if you wanted to make a quilt there, you can see how they all come together. Yeah. Or two table runners or one big long table runner. And different patterns as well um, if you lay the blocks just out. 
here. differently. Um, there's sort of different patterns, but um, we can get that out actually and show how. Let's it have a look. We'll just show you that yeah. pattern if you can see there. But just mix and match it if you yeah. want to. And in different fabrics, they do always look so different. Absolutely. They're very good instructions, um, how much fabric you need for each colourway, um, all the cutting instructions, so they're, they're very good. There. Yeah. And yeah. also, this, um, this wadding does have the fusible backing as well. Yeah. Well, that's it. When I was thinking about the idea, um, it's such an affordable way anyway to buy wadding. Mm. It's not like you it's can more pay that for wadding with without anything on there. Without the design yeah. printed on, so it's a really affordable way. It's nice and um, it's quite quick and easy. A lot of people enjoy piecing but don't enjoy quilting so much. So this is great because it's more like a piecing project, project yeah. than a quilting project. Um, although if you do love quilting, you can add more quilting um, to the project as you go. So there you've got your... Tab. Yeah, got to you. but this is how it comes. And of course, if you wanted to make a good, bigger quilt, you just buy two packs. Yes, you can just double <laughs> it up. Double it up. So there's the full set of in there. Lots of instructions with illustrations too. Um, you know, quite a lot of instructions. So, that's good. so you get six blocks, as I said. So this is kind of a, well, a little bit bigger, but a rough idea of the size yeah. of the quilt. Um, it. And well, it is actually because this this is showing. Although you cut this down, this is showing like what, what it would be with the sashing if you were going to put them all together. So yeah. this is the size of the finished quilt. Yeah. And um, but we just for the bag, you only use three. Yeah. So you use two whole blocks and then you're going to use the remaining one and cut it to make the side panels. That's right. So out of a pack, you could make two bags. I um, thought they'd make really nice gifts as well. Yeah, you know, for people. Um, Perfect. So out of, a, out of one pack, yes, you can make two bags. So you've got your front and your back and then you use the third block to make up your gusset and your sides. Okay. Um, which we'll come on to. But um, yeah. So in those bundles, there's enough fabric to make one bag, but you would have enough uh, wadding to make another bag if you wanted to. So yes. if you've got some fabric in your stash or maybe you wanted to do some table mats or a, a small a shorter table runner or you could incorporate those or a cushion yeah into the front Use of a cushion so front of cushions too or just yeah. as general wadding yeah. if you wanted no, to absolutely. there's lots of ways of um, <laughs> you can, uh, playing with it you can ignore it and you say the adhesive is on this side so you've got the printed design on one side yeah. and the adhesive is on the other side you fuse that to your backing i'll just show you one that i've cut down here so you cut them up into individual squares whether you're making a quilt or the bag um, and, and just with a little bit of heat, because it is polyester wadding, you basically hold, hold the iron. Oh dear. Oh, we're attached <laughs> to pins. You hold the iron over the top, just hover over the top of the wadding, uh, the fabric, and, and just press the steam through it. So you can press, the, it's the steam that activates. That's going to help it to adhere. Yeah, because you don't want to obviously press the iron, really force it down onto the wadding because you'll no. just make it flat, flatten out. Yes, I remember. <laughs> I think it was um, Joy was doing a wadding masterclass and she showed me one way if you put the iron oh. straight and the wadding was just like, like solid. Like a biscuit. Carb. Yeah, a biscuit. <laughs> like a Let's rye beater. <laughs> I'll grab those. That's all right. Okay, we're good. done. Yeah. Okay, so um, how, where would you like to start with the bag? Okay. So um, let's just pop those out of the way over there. Maybe we might refer to them. So for if you were doing um, a quilt, it, the instructions tell you to cut each pick square down with about half an inch to three quarters of an inch around the printed out outline. Okay. Um, but be that is because you're incorporating a sashing. So we don't want that much uh, wadding left over. So I thought um, you don't really want skinny seams when you're putting a bag together, like quarter of an inch is too small because yeah. you need it to be robust. So I was thinking of a one centimetre seam. Obviously your quarter of an inch is, when you're working with this, is on the inside of that line. So that's about two eighths. So I've just added one more eighth to that. Just, so to, give it a bit just more. to give it a bit more. So we'll be we won't be losing any of our points because we'll still be stitching on that quarter of an inch line and I've just cut the wadding one eighth larger so I can use a one centimetre seam. Okay. Um, so I've just left one eighth all the way around and chopped that down. So you want to do that to three squares, as I've said, and we'll do quilt as you go for two of them. Um, so you can put the backing on. I was just going to say, so you put the backing on first of all? Put the backing on first of the front and the back. Yeah. Um, uh, don't do it on the third one, which will be the sides and the bottom yet, These because we're up. going to chop that down. Yet we'll come okay. on to that. So, so if you can see here, this is using the third block. So obviously you've got your two blocks on either side, yeah. but the side panel here 
in effect, we have and just treated base. that just like wadding. We've ignored you've the just, Yeah, you've ignored yeah. the fact that it's printed and you've just used that to create the whole to to complete the bag. Size. Yeah, to create the right size. That's right. Okay. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do initially, in case um, I know we've we've shown quilt as you go before, but I'm just going to show a little bit how of the works. process, how yeah. it works. As I said, the instructions are very, very good. They tell you um, we've got four colours here, but you could use just two colours if you wanted and just alternate them rather than build four, it up you know you can do alternate good for pre-cuts as well where you've got the smaller blocks if you wanted yes, to use yeah. maybe if you've got fat quarters and you want to mix and match different absolutely it's great for that yeah so um the instructions tell you all the sizes to cut these little pieces um this is for three of the colors not the outer outer ones which we'll which i'll come on to okay so we start with a square in the center so the bundle that i using just before um we just get started just so you can see those four different fabrics yeah. so you've got that bright lime green the teal the cream and then you've also got the foliage so people already checking out their baskets on the hopscotch foliage bag um nfgc00 so you've got all of your wadding in there as well and your thread and two metres of fabric. And then the one that already is, has been made up that you can see the bag on our desk here, that's the Tim Holtz bag, and that's on the bottom of your screens. Okay, let's that's carry good. on. <laughs> yeah, I think there's, it's great um, selection because you've got half a metre. Yeah, over, so you've got a little, you can play around that's a bit. If you can play around to. with, you don't have to do the design how I'm going to do it today. You can swap the colours around to suit your, um, your taste. Um, so each block has got little um, numbers on them. So we've got number one in the center there. So this just goes on here. This really is it like is. painted by numbers, yeah, isn't it? it? Is. It's just... And um, what's different to foundation piecing is that um, with foundation piecing, you actually stitch on the guideline of a pattern. Yeah. With the quilt as you go, it's a placement line. So you can see I'm placing the square exactly within the lines and we're going to stitch a quarter of an inch in from, from that. that. So we've got number one in place. So I'm just going to pop a pin just to stop this moving but you don't really have to pin that much with this I tend to not pin at all actually when I'm doing <laughs> it at home oh I should mention the other thing that um I haven't talked about is um when I first did this quilt as you go June Taylor recommends pre-starching the fabrics yes and that's because normally when we're piecing we'd um we would sew a so uh, two pieces together and then press them accurately but obviously because you're doing it with the wadding in you don't you don't want, want to, to put the iron no. anywhere near it you don't want to arrive eat it so um other biscuit brands are right. no. <laughs> so no, i mean no one wants to eat those really do they that's the last resort if you've got if you're eating them that's so, the diet food it is um so actually, I, I'd i never used starched fabric before, but actually I do it all the time now. Do a, you? because it smells divine. The freight, I love the one, the best, the linen. <laughs> that's what one we've got here. It yes, does. we've got, this is my favourite one, the linen fresh. It absolutely makes all of your sewing room and your ironing just, board and everything. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, with scented bags. Oh, we're going to go to Angie's just to sniff, <laughs> sniff all of our cushions. But it actually gives the fabric a lot of body. Um, and I do it now on other projects. I've started to, um, with a lot of my free motion, quilting because it gives the fabric body for you to be able to move it yeah um so i'm actually using, using starch it. quite a lot these days um although it seems such an old-fashioned thing doesn't it i think as well because people associate it with being old-fashioned you think oh it's going to leave all residue yes. and it's it doesn't it, you don't really feel that it it actually hinders more than adds anything but and you just this, think of starch collars being uncomfortable yeah, being and all really stiff crispy. but you can see it it's, doesn't it doesn't make the fabric stiff it just gives it more body mm. um so uh now we've got um areas two and three which are these two side panels and they can go on just as you would any kind of piecing right sides of fabric together i know it's not very obvious with plain fabric yeah uh, but again i'm placing it along um, the placement line and I'm just going to now stitch a quarter of an inch inside there so I do like to although this is all fused and nothing's going to move much some would say it's unnecessary to have the walking foot on yeah but I think still with that the bulk there and the wadding is a bit tricky uh, with those uh, layers fabric, it's just nice a layer to... I still prefer it I've tried it both ways and I still hands down prefer it with the walking foot on if you've got one why not yeah, it's absolutely. another excuse to get it out isn't it and use it and i've got uh, an, i've never used this walking foot before actually i just uh, screwed it on before coming on air and it's an open toed one um so what's the difference with that what does that mean then so it's got a lot of the um the metal cut away at the front oh, i don't yeah, know if the camera yeah. can see that yeah so if you're doing something that you need more visibility or decorative stitches, especially if you're putting them, you know, so you can actually, so you can actually you've got that you've visibility. Got more visibility, yes. So, um, and I've actually just got my um, machine set to quarter of an inch 
from the edge of the foot. So um, that's the walking foot. This one comes with the 680. So if you have that machine, then you get this uh, that walking foot yeah, with it. So I'm just lifting. It does mean up. you can see more. Yes. Um, what's underneath? Yeah. Um, but because it's more open, sometimes you don't want. You know, it, it's you choose for the different projects. But what it will do, it, it will it will be less stable because there's less foot gripping. Yeah, of course. Um, so you haven't got something pulling it all the way yes. through. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you know, different feet for different projects. Horses for so horses. We're down. And so I'm just going to sew, as I said, a quarter of an inch. Oh, that's not liking that at all, is it? I'm just wondering whether it doesn't like the open toed. <laughs> oh, do you think that <laughs> might with be the, why? It might be because the, um, as I said, it doesn't have as much purchase. I was quite surprised when I was handed it, so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if we can get that one working. We'll see if we can try again. Let's see if it just... Uh... I think as well, what's great about um, Quilt As You Go is if you're not the sort of... Per if you maybe struggle to envisage or to come up with a... Or you, to, yeah. to think about designs from that perspective, it takes that work out of it for you. All you've got to do is look at it and go, well, what fabric do I need to, to yeah. put that to there and cut it? You don't have to actually think in your head about how's that going to come together or get a ruler out and measure things. And it's the shape, you know, you're going to get that exact replica of what you see there or what you see on the packet. You Absolutely. can see here. Just doing the work for you, really. It is um, really good. It's also great as a first quilting project if, you, if you've not really done that. No, they are. They're really lovely. I, I was uh, a bit sceptical at first, but I quite I quite like them, actually. Yeah, I think if you do do a lot of traditional quilting, you probably think, oh, why would I? Yeah, what's the benefit of that? You? If you want to whip up a quilt quite quickly or, you that's, know, you want to give one as a gift or... That's it. Let's try again. Let's give it another go. Yeah. It might be that there's just not enough with the... Um... Let's try a longer stitch. No, it's not, not. it's not enjoying that at all, is it? Let's Should we try. change it? Oh, we're aware. Are we aware? It's not happy. <laughs> I can no. recap those fabric bundles and we'll change okay, it. Okay, yes, Let's I think I'll change over. the foot. Take, don't, don't stress. Like, this, we can no, just... no, it's fine. That's all right. That's I'll fine. change the I'll change the foot and maybe the needle. It might be the needle, not the foot. Okay. So we'll um, come back in a second. Okay. Take a breather. <laughs> Okay, so let's have a look at those different fabric bundles this morning. Um, so the foliage one is the most popular, so I'll start with that one. So you can see here you've got two metres of fabric, which is enough to make one bag. Half a metre of all of these. Really lovely colours. That teal is lovely with the lime green. This is the most popular bundle by far, way out in the lead. Um, comes with your thread as well. So teamed perfectly with that solid fabric. Two solids. And then that cream is actually the uh, linear look fabric. If I just lift that up there, you can see it's got some detail on it. It's not just a completely plain solid. And then the foliage on the top. And again, that comes with the Quilt As You Go Hopscotch wadding. Do check out your baskets on that one. NFGC00, that one's going really fast. Everyone loving the foliage bag. Now, the one that Angie's also used to make the bag, so the one that I had on my shoulder at the beginning of the show, that's using the Tim Holt. So we've got a picture of that there. So again, the thing about this as well is the way you see that bag at the moment and how that's been made up, you can mix and match that if you want to. So if you want the main body of the bag to be perhaps in that lovely port colour, or if you wanted it in the navy, then you could, and you could just have a little injection of the Tim Holt in the middle. You could have the lining in a different colour. You, you, you can really play around with those. You don't have to do it exactly as you see there, you know, the choice is yours. But in that bundle, you've got um, two of the linear look fabrics. So again, you've got that cream. Then you've got the uh, navy, which has got the cross hatch detail. Then you've got the port solid. And your Tim Holtz at the top here, which is a really lovely tailoring fabric. It's got lovely uh, sort of different quotes and things on there. When we launched that Tim Holtz range recently by the half metre, that was one of the most popular fabrics. Really liking that tailoring fabric. And Tim Holtz fabrics as well, you get that real influence from, he does a lot of paper and print work and things like that, so you really do see that in those fabrics. And then finally, you've got the, this is the more, what I would call more sort of cute, playful bundle, because um, it's a bit brighter. So you've got a solid uh, candy floss pink at the bottom. Maybe you need a bit of this at this time of year, cheer you up. And you've got some aqua spot on. You've got the blue spot on. And then you've got that lovely confetti fabric. Slate grey on the bottom there. And then again, picking out those colours that you see through the whole bundle, actually. All of those coming with the pre-printed wadding. So that's this one here. 
Now, also, if you're watching this morning and you're thinking, I, I, I want to make the bag, I love the bag, but you want to, you've got some fabric that you've already got in mind to use it um, with, then you can just get the hopscotch wadding on its own. So you get the six blocks in there, enough to make two bags. Um, you could use that or, or, or for a quilt if you wanted to. But you can just get this by itself, eight ninety nine. So for the actual wadding, even if you were just using it as generic wadding, you know, it's, it's good value, but it's got that fusible backing. It's got the pre-printed shapes on there to create the hopscotch pattern. And you can make a six block quilt, which you can see just there. Or you can buy two people, quite often multi-buy these, and you could create that. Um, you could attach those together and create a 12 block bigger quilt if you wanted to. BDEQ52, 8 99 and that's just for the hopscotch wadding if you want that on its own. I think we're sorted without walking foot. Let's have a look. Are we all good? You know, I think it wasn't actually that the, the, the foot was oh, it wasn't the toe. No. It was probably a walking foot for a different machine. Uh -huh. uh, because we've got so many okay. machines and we've got seven mil and nine millimeter width machines, so it's, it's probably the wrong, foot, one, for wrong foot for that machine. So um, yeah, it's not the fact that it's so the open toe did work. I think I'm sure, yeah, the yeah. open toe because it's a walking foot. They they design it to still progress through over fabric. It's just it was the wrong one for the machine. So we've got the normal looking one at the moment. Right. Yeah. So I've just stitched. Um, as I was trying to earlier, down that quarter of an inch <laughs> seam, but we've got that working now. Um, one thing with Quilt As You Go is, um, because you are quilting as you go, is just a little tip to pull your ends through to the inside. Um, otherwise, you're going to have ends on this side. Yeah. If you pull them through at this point, they're all going to be trapped within the next seam. So you're hiding them. So you, you haven't got through. all those ends to tie in. They're going to be tied in on, on, on the inside, like you say. So then, because we've uh, best pressed it as well, it'll have some body that then you can just finger press when you turn it over. You can just finger press it into place and it just sits perfectly. Um, within the next square that's marked. Now, when you're cutting your fabric, obviously all of the instructions are within the hopscotch bundle anyway. Yeah. Do you cut it exactly to the size of where it's going? Has it got that seam allowance built, built into it? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so the instructions, I think this is a three and a half inch square and these are two inch by three and a half inch. So it tells you to cut. They will exactly. match exactly these. Yeah, so it's all, it's all worked out for you. you okay. Like you say, you don't have to really think about it. Or it's, it's just, you think about what fabric. What fabric? Yeah, so you can think about the layout, place, or you can think about colour, or yeah. So I'll just do the second one on the other side. So you're laying the two edges of the fabric. If you've never seen it before, yeah. just the two edges, and because it's the the lines printed on the wadding are the placement lines. They're not the quilting lines. That's right. It's not, they're not stitch lines. The stitch lines. Yeah. yeah. And you can see I'm not even um, pinning. Um, so. So just a quarter of an inch from the edge of those of an inch two from the edge pieces of, the, of fabric. The, yeah, that's it. And like you say, I'm, leave, I'm not cutting using the thread cutter on the machine because I do want some ends. We don't want to chop short ends. Um, but instead of leaving them on this back side, we can pull them through. Pull them through to the inside. You don't have to leave them that long. <laughs> <laughs> so you can nip those down a little. But this is where but you start to see secure. that you are quilting as you go. I don't know if yeah. you can see on the back here. So straight away you are creating that quilted effect because you're attaching the fabric straight onto the wadding. Okay. So we can turn that one over. And that sits. Don't panic if they don't sit exactly within the print, you know, because mm. um, as long as, as it's going to be within your next quarter of an inch seam, you'll be fine. You're um, well hidden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like you say, they don't, or, you know, it doesn't, it's not always exactly on like you can see this little bit of greens peeking out of there but it's fine so then our next two pieces are two inch again but they're longer because they're going to go along these next Building two it, sides framing yeah. it up so shall i pop these on as well what would you rather do or do you want to look at the how many on time i was just going to say that because we lost a little bit a li lost a little bit of time but you can see here if i put that one on there that will fill that space and also you've done quite a lot, we, you can go back on yes. YouTube and watch all of our shows, yeah. so we've got a lot of Quilt As You Go shows on the uh, YouTube channel, so you can go back on there and watch, keep, you've done quite you, a few of those. Yeah, I you? have, and you just keep repeating the process. You're just um, building it up, building it up. Exactly the same, then when you come with your triangles, you'll put them on this way. The only thing to do here is to just centre it, which you can easily do over the square, because you've got that point. Yeah. So visually you can just look at that centred, align it up on, on there, and then when you stitch that, and pop that down, it'll crease back into the correct place. So you start to build up your design very simply. So and you do uh, that times two, so you end up with two yep. whole blocks so like I've this got, one. I've got some that I've done already prepared. 
So already you've really got yeah. the main body of the bag. You've That's got those right. two, the two main. Oh, I like it in this fabric. <laughs> I so really here I've like got, that. Um, one thing I should point out: um, I did actually say about cutting the wadding to just an eighth yes, over the size. Around. I didn't talk about the background. Sorry about that. Um, so <laughs> again, <laughs> the backing fabric again different to slightly different if you're doing it for the quilt um i added um about an inch and a quarter so you've got an inch all the way around okay it, once you've seamed it so you can see this is 15 inch square um onto the back and you can see there i've just built up the same process as we were just stitching i now. love it with this it's lovely foliage fresh, isn't bundle it? yeah it's really sort of zingy yeah. and just i do love green anyway it's one of my favorite colors actually but uh, and there you can see all the quilting like you say is done for you and it's all secure very so um, the way this bag's put together, um, you could do it like any project really, you can choose different ways to put things together, but this would be so the inside of the bag is all quilted, yeah. so you're seeing that quilted. quilted. Can we see here? Yeah. I'll just open that up. There you go. So you the see. inside of the bag is actually all the quilted, and I used a nice funky variegated yeah, it's thread. Nice to use thread. <laughs> um, you can use a contrast or you can just make it blend in. See that okay. in there. But if okay. you if you didn't want um, to actually see the quilted, or it's actually this is there's quite a lot of hand finishing with this design. If you didn't want that, you could easily just use a calico or a, a, a lining fabric and put quilt another. it or and then put a loose lining inside. Especially if you wanted to add lots of pockets or different things, just to have a little bit yeah. more weight in there so, as well. Uh, uh, I quite like seeing the quilting though. Yeah, it's quite nice. Think, yeah, isn't it? like the yeah. workmanship so is quite nice, nice to see. Nice I finish. really like it as well on the side panels. I don't know if you can just see in here. I quite like it. Obviously, it's, yeah, it's each their it. own. Depends what you want the bag for. And, yeah, um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true yeah, actually. Yeah. So we've got the, uh, two front, uh, two panels there, a front and a back. Okay. And then with the third panel, um, I sh this is this. Then your such a good idea. Two sides and your um, bottom are made. You can see this makes a square. Yep. So again, I just took one of those, chopped so it down. So this is this. But we've just ignored. I'm just going to lay those on there. Yeah. You just ignored the lines. You've just literally used it yep. as wadding. I've just used. To cut it down to the same side as the as the fronts, um, and then just divided it into three. So it's about four and a quarter inch um, panels strips. Okay. So we've just chopped those chopped those up. Completely ignored the design on there, and um, I've just done some simple quilting. I would really have, have loved um, get your westerlies out. <laughs> I, I really I wanted to Did you? actually, but it was so t it was quite time consuming yeah. anyway to do it. But I would have quilted the life out of this just bag. Just gone all crazy. <laughs> I would have with... had more time. I was definitely planning to put some well, westerlies. Because, as well, because it's a floral on. as well yeah. with that foliage, you could really go to town yeah. with those. And with bags as well, the more you quilt, the more and um, the stiffer it gets. Yeah. So that's really nice for a bag. You don't always want to do heavy quilting on a quilt. So if you do love quilting, you've got or an you excuse want, or you want to have a play with your westerly rulers and uh, not on a big project then this would be great because you could just quilt, you know, really intensely over all the... You do the quilt as you go, yeah. but then quilt further. Because all that's doing, those extra stitches actually just give it a bit more durability and yeah. body, don't they? That's so if you've got lots of things in there, it's yeah. just going to help to... Yeah. And I've just done straight up. lines here, but like you say, you could do all sorts of patterns on, on, the, on the bottom and the gussets um, and the sides. So I've chopped these into three strips. Yeah. And, and then we've added, you can see, I've added the, the backing. Um, this is the centre one, this makes the bottom, and I've just added an inch either side onto the backing there. Just a quick question, yeah. obviously with the other um, quilted geo blocks you built up the fabric as you're, you're putting it into place. Yeah. With that did you just literally lay the strip on top and I stitch? Fused, yeah, I fused, fused one side, back, just like then... you would, and then I just laid the top on and just uh, quilted. If you've got some spray so adhesive, you, it, yeah, I was you can, say, yeah, you you can just do a little bit of spray adhesive or hand baste it just until it's quilted, but um, yeah, with this simple simple strips it actually goes because you've got the all the trees going in one way the leaves it actually just Growing works with a, yeah. with a simple straight line so this is going to form our bottom and as i said i've got a little bit extra over each side and then these are our two sides and you can see i've just done um i've just done this extra at the top at the one end and that's because this actually covers our raw edges over the top of the bag. Ah, oh, so over the blocks. Yeah. yeah. So with all the blocks, the edges are actually to, um, they will actually hide. Almost all like a binding. Yeah, 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 they're self-binding. Um, and that's where the extra, the, the work comes in. 
So now I'm going to add the base. Um, no, I'm not. I'm going to join <laughs> these two first. I, I did, obviously, everyone's got their own way of working. I, I'm going to join the, the bottom and the sides into so one. To make it one big yeah. long strip. So I'm going to obviously right sides together on there. And I'm going to now change my um, seam allowance to um, a one centimetre just to join that there. Okay. Okay. Why is that just to give you a little bit more security just, with that? Yeah, I yeah. think it's a bit like dressmaking, isn't it? You don't want your seams popping and no, and uh, bags come under quite a bit of pressure. So I'm going to just my put bags that do. back. <laughs> I was so much in my bag. <laughs> so yeah, I thought a um, quarter of an inch is a bit, a bit scant really for bag making. So we're just going to do it at a centimetre. The thing is as well, what I think is lovely is if you do do a lot of quilting and maybe you do just quilt, and I don't say that, I mean that's the thing that you do a lot of, so you don't maybe yeah. do dressmaking or you don't make things that you use more around the house, it's quite nice to use that skill but actually to have something that you can take out with you or Absolutely. that you can give as a gift that you might, rather than a big quilt. That's it. So I'm going to do exactly the same at the other end. So the end without um, any extra line it up on the edge of there and I'm going to do the same that side. Because you want to end up with the extra backing fabric at the two tops, don't yes. you, at the top of the side? At the side, yeah, is going to be used to finish the top off nicely. And so this is just kind of an idea of one way to do it. I'm sure everyone's uh, heads will be all the cogs yeah, will be going around. We had some great suggestions this yeah. morning. You know the wreath that um, Lucy did, like someone messaged in and said you could make it more of a ruffle and you could, rather than lining those up, you could have the points going all the way around. Oh, and then we were saying, yeah. someone else messaged in and said you could do a sunshine, you could have it all yellow and orange yes. and do. There's loads of ideas. Oh, that's great. great. So inspiring people, that's what's nice, isn't it? So we've joined those. This is the outside of the bag, obviously. So that's all joined perfectly. And what we've got now got is these two, um, your one inch flaps here. They will beautifully oh, cover. Perfect. I don't know if I can just turn that around. Yeah. So this is to really neaten the inside. So we've got enough fabric to fold this over and then fold it over again. We've got tons of fabric there. Now I um, slip stitched this all by hand. Okay. Um, so that's what I'm saying to time consuming really way of making the bag. If you want all your seams to be like that would be completely hidden and then you'd just be left with your quilting. But I'm just going to, I can also put, pop it under the machine. So I'm going to try that just for speed yeah, now. <laughs> so you can actually stitch that down. So that will cover our nice raw edge. So I'm going to give that a go. You can either do it with a straight stitch or you could use a zigzag. Um, so you can really have Whatever fun with it. Fancy. Yeah. I really like this colourway. I think this is going to look lovely. It's gorgeous, isn't it? And I'm going to try it with no pins <laughs> and no one's going to go I'm just going to go for it, yeah. So now what I'm going to do is just move my needle across again. So it's within um, my centimetre allowance. Just really to get um, an idea of what it would be like when it's all secured down. As I say, you can hand stitch. I was just thinking that I'd like to see this with the Wesley rulers. I was thinking yeah. what you could, that's where my, my imagination was going then. I was thinking of oh, what you could do. So, yeah, I was really... Um, we had that wreath one, didn't we, as well, recently? Yes. The re well, it would look lovely with a yeah. centre design and then worked out. Go out. Yeah, definitely. So we're just folding that over again. So it neatens all those lovely edges. What I was saying earlier, if you, if you didn't want to do this method, if you ignore all the extras mm. on the backing, so you just cut your fabric flush. To size, yeah. Yep, to size joined it, you would end up with this kind of raw edge. But if you're going to put a, a loose inner lining to cover all that up... Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So you only need this extra backing on if you're going to do this method of... Um, keeping of the quilting self, exposed, self really. Self-binding. Yeah. Um, and keeping the quilting exposed, absolutely. And it was afterwards I thought... I bet I could have machine stitched that and saved myself a hell Some of a time. lot of time. <laughs> and you just realised that you can. <laughs> Obviously. Still, there we go. I do like hand stitching actually. It's um quite therapeutic. Yeah, I do like I do like the, to do it in the evenings. And um, my husband likes it because he gets to see me. <laughs> something <laughs> I can be shut away in the <laughs> Yeah, so it's something I can bring and do in front do of the Do you have a sewing room or do you do do you Yeah. 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 <laughs> have to it's too like, much stuff it's like a bomb city yeah <laughs> so you can see that's quite neat and tidy once that's all all, all encapsulated done. inside yeah. 
So now we've got that all sorted there. We can now join this to what I'm going to do now is join the, the front and the back. So we're going to sort of join it like that into an L sort of Coming shape. Coming together, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'll pop one of these on here. And again, I'm going to do line that up. I will put a few pins this time in place. Really popular, this bundle, the hopscotch one, NFGC00, so two metres, um, the foliage one, the hopscotch foliage. It's nearly half the stock of that one checked out, 27 99 Is that this one? This That's this one, way. yeah. Lovely, That's my favourite one, actually, of the three. It is easy to be quite bombarded with the whole Christmas thing, isn't it? And it's actually quite nice to have something <laughs> so a bit fresher and spring. Just, yeah, <laughs> but thinking, thinking ahead. Thinking of spring already. But as I say, they'd, I think this would make a nice gift um, for someone. So, so I've positioned that. If you're thinking about the edge of the wadding in this centrepiece, and I've positioned it over the, centrally over the top, because obviously we've got that seam, but we're going to yeah. have another seam on the side. So I'm just going to stitch basically from, obviously not from right at the very edge, because I, d I want enough freedom to be able to turn that next corner, but I'm going to go from this seam here, from the, from the one centimetre seam here, I'm going to stitch along here to okay. just inside that So seam you're keeping there. this to a centimetre so, yeah, with this one? So then we've just got, you know, our little bit on the outside will still be free yeah. for when we turn it. So again, yes, all, all one centimetre now. We just use the quarter of an inch because it's part of the quilt as you go. Built into design. the actual main block for the um, Yeah, so squares. that you get all your points. Um, but people do use exposed. these. If you, the quilt as you go, just the actual wadding, if you buy it by its on its own. People, they do look nice as placemats as well. You can use these individually just as squares or a cushion front, or you can use three or four and have a table runner. So you could have three cushions and then a bag yeah. out of this, or Absolutely. you could do... Yeah. They are versatile more so than just yeah. a lot. I think a lot of people think, oh, you know, it's just for quilts. Just, yeah. That's right, and that's, I think it's really nice to have a smaller project. And like you say, something, if you want something to have a go at, even just um, if you're practicing normal free motion. Yeah. Um, because then it's not so intimidating as um, And it's quite nice. I always project. think it's nice to just have a few projects where you can tick them off quite quickly rather yeah. than feeling Ooh. like you're always slaving away at something that's long term, that's like a right. three year quilt. Or... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I've had four quilts on the go for some time four. now. <laughs> Do you know, what, what makes you start another one when you've not finished the one before? Just that you have oh, this other idea or fabric? Is it fabric? That... They're all very different and, um, yeah, different purposes. Yeah. Do you have different intentions projects. for all of them, where yes. they're going to go? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're attached there now. Okay. That's uh, looking really good. Sorry. So you see, it's really, um, really coming together quite easily. Just see that one there. So you've got that main strip, which is going to be the sides and the base, and then you've got the, uh, the two side panels here. Okay. Oh, you know what I didn't do is check um, if you've got a directional fabric, of course. Oh, yeah. I've been very fortunate because all my leaves are going up, but um, so I will think oh, about yeah. it. Like if you it see been... this, it's sideways on, so I really want it um, that one you pointing had, what, up you that You had a way. quarter chance of that I working did, out actually, that way in your that was... favour. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that's about that. That's because that's a payback from the walking foot. Yeah. There it is, there it is, that's karma. <laughs> yeah, so if you've got a directional fabric, obviously think about that. Also, when you're cutting your triangles, you know, when you're placing them. I didn't worry too much about the Tim Holtz because it's no, all it's, kind it's of... No, because it's not going to necessarily, you're yeah. not going to get that. Whereas here, it's quite nice where they fit. So yes, you want you want your leaves pointing up, upwards. Uh, on the Tim, can I yeah, can of reach that, actually? Yeah. The only thing I did with fussy cutting this is actually on the bottom. Um, there oh, we go. Yeah. <laughs> so I just came across that on the fabric and thought, oh, that's quite a nice. I like it's things very centered like that. and yeah. just. And, and the thing uh, is, as well, even if it's only you that knows about it, it's yeah. quite sort of. It it's is just that little. It's a bit like the inside of a collar or a cuff, isn't it? Having yeah. a little flash a little of something. something. Or I think the lining yeah. of a pocket when it's a different fabric, that's and you it. think no one's going to see that except so, me. But so it's if nice. You, if your bag falls over. <laughs> so that's the, yeah. This is the Tim Holtz bundle. So you can see that there. You've got the tailor fabric. You've got the port solid, and then you've got the navy and cream linear texture fabric there. Then again, you've got the quilt as you go hopscotch and your thread, thirty ninety nine. And again, I'm just centering this over the top of my front square and then I'll pop some flip this over looks about right pop some pins in 
So would you say the most time consuming element of this is the actual quilt as you go, doing the two main blocks? Um, yeah, um, obviously because we starch everything to begin with, there's a little bit of extra prep work there. But yeah. it does, as I say, it is worthwhile doing. Um, I tend to, especially with the triangles as well, because as, as, as people will know, when you cut things on the bias then, uh, you know, the fabric can get quite unstable. Naughty, you might misbehave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I tend to cut, uh, it does tell you to cut squares and then you chop those in half. So you can cut the squares and then um, starch them at that stage. Yes, before so right you've at the cut top them. of the whole process, yeah. really. Um, and sometimes I double starch, you know, so... Um, also, you let it dry and then you and then go again. again. Yeah, so you can, there's obviously a little bit of prep work in that. Um, no yeah. wonder you're getting through bottles and bottles of starch. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's triple starching everything she wears. She's got, <laughs> doing it in the car, just make the car seats nice and crisp. And, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that one. But no, um, so there's a little bit of cutting. Obviously, you're cutting like any quilt, really. You're cutting out is, is time, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then afterwards, once, you've, once you're all ready to go, um, I think the blocks take me about half an hour per block. Oh, not to too bad. Stitch. No. Um, so they're but not it's too bad. But once you've got everything um, there. I say with, with this then, it's putting put the a bit of qu the extra quilting and then putting it together and there was a lot of um, hand finishing with this project. The assembly. Um, yeah. So again, I'm just uh, taking my time when I get to my pins. Okay. I've just realised I haven't moved my needle, so we've got a quarter inch seam on this, but hey. Oh, you're going to go for, you're going to go for a centimetre <laughs> if you're doing this one at home. Yeah. So we're just going along there, just stopping uh, there, lift the needle. Obviously, I'm not tying in all my ends properly, as you would, just to save us some time. I don't know. I don't know. You know, we're all different, but I quite like this um, where everything's oh, this. encapsulated. Yeah. You know, and uh, I like the finish. Although it's time consuming, I really like the finish. It so. just gives it that nice sort of slick. I, I, it's lovely yeah. how it's all come together there. That's it. Really nice. Yeah. And you can see here actually. Um, I don't know if you could. Uh, you saw that, but I actually joined a piece of fabric for the for the base of this. Um, so again, if you don't want to be wasteful, it's patchwork, you yeah, know, as we go. Whole point. Um, and I'd got two bits that were the right width, but not quite the right, you know, long enough for that. So I just, rather than waste more fabric and cut another bit, you know, you can still join um, pieces. And also it's worth saying as well, isn't it, that with some of these fabrics, so for example, um, this teal or the cream, you've not used as much no. of those. So you will have some left over. That's right. You've got half a metre of four fabrics. So obviously um, I decided to, uh, if you if you want a single colour for the lining, yeah, that's the one you're going to use the most of. And that's why I chose to only do, like, I've combined that as the centre square. Because, and that's just about manageable. If you, you know, think about your cutting, don't be... Or just cut this bit, it, yeah. out, you know, you've got to think about how you're cutting there. So you can just about get the lining and, and your square out of the half metre. And then, like you say, the blue, really, um, I've hardly used any of the half metre on that. And so I've chosen to do the handles in that colour. Got so you can bit. think you can about it through. Yeah. But the other fabrics, you will have, you know, a fair, fair bit left over. Yeah. Put it in your stash. So now you can see, which is a bit like constructing a box. Um, you will have. Um, so you're going to do the same technique again, where yeah. you were you were you machine, <laughs> machine stitch this um, <laughs> this time again, or did you slip stitch it? I, I slip stitched all of mine um, by hand, but you can see you've got these lovely um, inch, um, a good amount of fabric. You're not skimping. So you fold that in half and then over. And then over again. And obviously, I've only done a quarter of an inch seam, so I forgot to move my needle here. So this yeah. would be a bit um, chunkier. a bit chunkier to cover. And, and you can trim this down if this is too much fabric. But it's better to have more than it than, to be really than squished. really you know trying desperately trying to cover over. So then you can um, hand stitch or machine stitch those down. Uh, and then you will start to construct the signs. And these then go together really quickly. Um, it's like putting together a box, isn't it? Exactly what you said, you know, yeah, like a gift box. That's or it. A... In fact, you can probably um, do all of this 
and then do all of the finishing, turn it inside out and do all the finishing at this stage. I did these ones separately because they're kind of in independent. But at this stage, actually, I would start to construct because all then... All of your sides. Um, yeah, once you've got both sides in, you can do all of that in one piece as you go around. I'm with you. Yep. If you were doing a lining separately, you know, you're yep. saying if you did a calico or something, would you just make the exact same, obviously yes. use the measurements, and then at what point would you attach that lining? Um, you would uh, literally put, put it together into a box form, mm. so you wouldn't have these extra bits of fabric. You'd just stitch all these bits together, raw edged, and you wouldn't have these flaps. So you'd have it as a box form, and then you would have made your separate lining separately that you can just pop in, in. and then you can just put a binding on the top. A separate binding. The, yeah. to, to, that's your only raw edge then that you'd be able to see on the top and then you could do that with a separate binding. So there's different ways. Just, it just depends yeah. if you wanted to go for a lining or not really. That's but. it. And with, a, with an extra lining, as I said, you've got the choice then. You can add pockets. Yes, I, yeah. I do like the pockets. <laughs> so. But, so we just had a question from um, Denise. Uh, Denise said, uh, what wadding do you use? As I have a lot of trouble with mine, can you please advise on that? So this is the Quilt As You Go wadding that's already pre-printed. So it's got that hopscotch design printed on the, um, on the wadding. You can see it just here. So we've used it in a slightly different way today. Rather than using this wadding to make a quilt, we're using it for a bag. So there's no need to add any extra wadding. Um, if you were yeah. making a bag where you were just using regular wadding and you were making a, a padded or a quilted bag, sorry. Um, what wadding would you use? Um, anything that you enjoy quilting with really, because um, I think it's almost like you can add stiffness to the fabrics, not just the wadding. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. So you can interface so the it fabrics. Depends so what? it depends what kind of feel you want to your bag, yeah. Normally with bags, it's more about interfacings than um, the wadding. Because that's going to depend, that's going to be what dictates the stiffness, the stiffness really of the bag, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And sometimes you'll have it not quilted, so you'll actually have the fabric um, interfaced, and then you could have a loose piece of wadding in there, so it's not stitched through. So it's, it's just, just got a little bit of something. Yeah, it'll give it body. Um, so it totally depends on the project, really, but you can use all sorts. I've used natural waddings and polyester. But this one's bags. good because you actually get the, you've got everything you need yeah. in that bundle to make the bag. So you've got the wadding in there. You don't have to think about whether you're going to get polyester or natural wadding or what, what no. one you're going to go for. Um, this wadding it's is already nice. there and it's it's got the fusible backing. So you're just using uh, your iron to attach that backing fabric to it. And then obviously it's got all of the markings on it as well. Um, and all of your instructions, you can see just here to create that block, uh, the hopscotch block that we've used in the front and back uh, panels of the bag. And we've had a message from Laurie in Suffolk. Oh, I really love that name. Morning, Laurie. And um, morning, Amy and Angie. Loving the show as usual. Amy, I love your top this morning. Very cheerful. Kiss, kiss. Thank you, Laurie. Oh, that's very not kind of you. And I borrowed it's our lovely. lovely Wendy, and I um, left my poppy on my other coat this morning. I was like, oh. where's my poppy? And it's on my other coat. That's so, so easy with coats, isn't it? Because <laughs> I put it on my, <laughs> on my coat. So lovely Wendy's let me her really lovely blingy poppy one. pin. It's a really blingy poppy pin. I can't take the credit for that. <laughs> but thank you, Laurie. Just to say here, what uh, when you come to join it in box form, it's important line the top up because that's you want the top to be all the same level. And oh, then, so you get this. Okay, yeah. You don't want it to skew with at the <laughs> yeah. top. Yeah. So line that end up and then pin back to the bottom, back to the base, um, and that should all work out. So again, I'll just take that out. And you can see where coming together. So I've lined it up perfectly here. So the base and the side. Yeah. So it's this part, isn't it? That's it. There. So that then you've got the top of the wadding all sitting at the same level and just work backwards to your corner. So again, I'm going to do that this side now. What you'll find is because there's not a lot of piecing, um, it, this looks bulky, but it's actually really easy to squidge underneath the machine, even when you get back to these areas. And the wadding's not too sort of bulky. No, it's, it's... so it's, I found it really um, easy to manipulate actually. Because um, it looks like it would be quite, it can be quite tricky, can't it? I was just wondering whether to turn this bag inside out so you can yes, see you where can you've turn done it fully. the. Um, <laughs> let's push it through so you can just see where Angie's done all that on the on the base. You'll be able to see all the um, how neat and how neat that is as well. You could, I was thinking actually, you could actually do it reversible. Reversible. Because I actually turned it through. You read my yeah. line. No, I was thinking because you can actually. I do actually like to have the seam. You know, people have seams on the outside, don't they? Too. So, yeah, you could have a reversible. Um, back. 
because you, you might I not. like all the, the sort of quilting lines and the seams there it's fine I don't think it's you might not have a plain fabric on the inside it could be a really here yeah, one you want to show off yeah so then you can still different outfits different yeah. fabrics it does work doesn't yeah, it, it does with work. the handles it does work that way <laughs> yeah. yeah because we were saying earlier as well that if you wanted to you can obviously you've attached the handles on the outside but I, you could yeah. put them on the inside and Absolutely. then it's oh, look at that snazzy lining we've only got four minutes we need some uh, oh have we it's, yeah it's oh, okay. super speedy but look just depending which way around you want to put it. I'm going to sew down this seam and then just talk a little bit about the handles. I'm going to turn that back around. Okay. So this foliage colourway, really popular, NFGC00. Please do check out your baskets on that. I don't want you to miss out. Or you can ring the call centre 0800 112 4433. Let's give that a little wiggle. I just think as well, quilted bag's really comfy. It is, isn't it? It's got it's a just nice... Sort of, yeah, it's... I like things quilted. So you can see... Um, I'm going to rush, rush, rush now, because I really want to get Sorry, these last speedy. things in. No, I'm loving okay. the pink mat this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it before. <laughs> it's like a new addition. So now you can see uh, when those are added, uh, and you've got your other side in, you can actually... Uh, fold that over and go you'll go all the way around which is what we just saw in there yeah so, so really you sort of all in one go though you know stitching yeah um and and you can see you can turn that out while i get um, okay some handles to show how i did this i love this colorway <laughs> thank you <laughs> that's oh that's and perfect. i love that you've used the green inside and then that main yeah pattern fabric for the outside so it's got yeah it's coming oh, together really nice. so well and then you can see the top then you do exactly the same. You've got that to bind the top edge. Producer hands going, I want that. With you. I lovely want finish. That. <laughs> <laughs> so the handles, um, lovely uh, again in, in blue. Yeah. Um, I made these. These are a bit like when you buy off the shelf leather handles. Yes, they remind um, me of the yeah. ones that we've had like that. The <laughs> so leather look ones. when you chop your squares down from your wadding, you're going to be left with strips like this. Don't throw them out. No, nope. resourceful. Keep them resourceful. Keep them and use them in your handles. Uh, when you make bags. So what I've done here is this is a five inch um, strip okay. to whatever length you'd like your handles and uh, folded it in half, um, folded it completely in half initially like that. So like bias binding. So you've got, yeah, so you've got a centre point and then half again and then I've just took, uh, cut one of these down to an inch width and you can pop it in there. It doesn't have to be the full length because it's really over the shoulder where you want a bit extra that padding. Yeah. Mm. So just find the centre point. Again, fuse that in place. And then stitch all the way down that to secure that. Yeah. And then I've just marked about five inches from each end, each edge and double stitch that over. So you get that lovely, that's a nice flat base to stitch in the bag or to the outside of the bag. Which you can um, see on there. We've only got a minute or so, it's gone so quick. Yeah, but then it gives you the nice shaping. The nice it's shaping It's just a little bit more interesting, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's it. So again, like you said, with the um, leather look handles, it's that professional finish, really. That's it. You can see just attached there. And then you attach it to the outside, but you could go yeah. inside if you wanted go inside, to. inside, yeah. Totally up to you. If you're doing the double lining, you can uh, pop it inside. You can add a zip. You could add a zip uh, flap across there or uh, magnetic Clasp. clasps. Yep. So lots Whatever of different options like. if you want to add additional things. Yeah. And we have got the magnetic clasps as well. I don't know where they are. These ones here in silver and gold. So if you want to pop those. I'm going to um, have to finish this off air now, aren't I? Because you're going to do, I know because yeah. you like it. Because I like it. <laughs> <laughs> There's two little magnetic clasps in there. If you want to pop one in the middle, then you can do. We'll get those up on your screen. So you've got the antique brass, first of all, which is more of this um, sort of bronzy one, really. That's this one. And then Ooh, you've also sorry. got it in your gold. So just depending which colour you, um, which colourway you're going for, you might want to add a clasp. But pocket zips, you could go, yeah, you could add all sorts, it. couldn't you? And like say, have fun with your quilting because uh, you can with bags. It's not going to make experiment. it too, it can't be too stiff, can it? <laughs> <laughs> and you're back at 11, aren't you? And we're doing I am. the um, wreath. Another wreath. Oh, oh no. look, this is gorgeous. <laughs> I can't talk about, I mean, don't talk about this now, but we're doing that at 11. So we'll see you back at 11 and yeah. we'll see the finished bag as well. Maybe we'll sneak that in. <laughs> Thank you, Angie. I'll see you, you shortly. See you later. So we've got stuff all over the floor. I don't it's know what's happened there. It's like a big tiptoe <laughs> over to the other side. Okay. Oh, that's probably me making a mess on the floor from the trolley. So those three different bundles this morning for this bag. I'll start with the foliage. So this one is flying out, really, really popular. This is the one we've just seen come together um, with that bright lime green and the teals. So you've got enough fabric there. 
well over half the stock of that one um, been checked out. But you've got um, enough fabric there to make one bag, but you've got enough wadding to make two. So you'd have three blocks left over. So you could make an additional bag and add your own fabric to that. Or you could do cushions or you could do um, placemats, whatever you wanted to with those additional three blocks. Then we've also got the other bag that was made up this morning. So that's the Tim Holtz one. So Angie made this one too. You could see that in the tailoring fabric in that navy. Then teamed with the linear look fabric in navy. You've got your port. And you've also got your cream linear look fabric there as well. And that's what the bag looks like when it's finished. Everything else again, you've got in the bundle, you've got your um, quilt as you go, wadding and your thread again. Oh, and also please do check out on that one. That's also been very popular. So both of these bundles are really, really popular this morning. I'm just gonna quickly show you that fabric, the Tim Holtz fabric. Really lovely. And then we've got one more bundle there. So this is the confetti. So again, you get your wadding and your thread, but your fabric's here. You've got half a meter of the confetti, half a meter of the spot on blue half a metre of the spot on aqua, and then you've got that lovely bright candy floss pink at the bottom there. HHGC62, 29.99. And finally, people asking as well if they can get the quilt as you go um, wadding by itself. You can get that on its own this morning, 8.99. So if you want that pre-printed wadding and you just want to use it for your own projects, whatever they may be, um, People also multi-buying those. So if you wanted a um, bigger quilt, if you wanted to have six blocks, you can attach those. Obviously you've got your sashing between the squares anyway, and you could make a bigger quilt if you wanted to. With that fusible backing, and then you've got all of the pre-printed lines on there as well. So on its own, BDEQ52, 899 for that quilt as you go wadding. So three different options. We've had the Tim Holtz, we've got the two, the foliage and the confetti. And now we've also got more creative grids coming up in the next hour with Lucy. So we're looking at log cabins. We've got a really lovely block that Lucy's made. So she sneaked and showed me that this morning. You're not gonna want to miss those new bundles in that hour. So don't go anywhere, grab a cup of tea. We're gonna be back in three minutes looking at those creative grids log cabin rulers. We'll see you in three. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. Don't miss our pack shows on Friday the 10th of November with much-loved designer Joe Carter and new guest Susie Argent from Ashmead Designs. Joe will launch our exclusive Sewing Quarter Christmas Bear in fun, festive prints from Macau. This patchwork cuddly is sure to become a much loved collectible. Joe returns at 10 a.m. making beautiful Tilda kits and projects from The Handmaid and Happy Book. You'll have Christmas all sewn up. And with our first shows featuring Devon's Ashme designs, we have two hours packed with Christmas English paper piecing kits and quilting kits. Don't miss these exciting shows this Friday from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. only on Sewing Quarter, Preview Channel 78. Follow us on Pinterest, search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. Join us on Saturday the 11th of November when guest designer Jo Carter will make two of her amazing designs. At 8am tune in to see Jo's sausage dog mini quilt as seen in Love Patchwork and Quilting magazine. We've created a kit for you to sew your own. Then at 10 a.m., Jo will create her incredibly popular polar bear, available in a limited edition cream fabric pack, as well as the original white. He'll make the perfect gift for someone special. And Anna from Alice Caroline will also be in the studio with a gorgeous selection of Liberty kits. So join us on Saturday the 11th of November from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., only on Sewing Quarter Freeview Channel 78. Hi, I'm Victoria Pete, and here are my top three tools. 
My first top tool is a and a quarter ruler. It's really nifty. It's got this nice little lip here that you use in foundation paper PC. You butt it up against your paper and it helps you cut a really accurate quarter of an inch seam allowance every time. My next top tool is a thimble pad. I don't know about you, but I find thimbles really difficult to use. These thimble pads are great. They're made of leather, so they're nice and tough and they're adhesive on one side. Just stick them to your finger and your finger's protected. I use them when I'm doing English paper PC. Last top tool is this mini iron. It's absolutely Absolutely brilliant for sewing when you don't want to get out a big heavy iron. It's great for foundation paper piecing and it's great for when you're going to quilt club. It's got steam function and it gets super hot. It's perfect. Good morning, welcome back. We promised you more creative grids rulers and that's what we've got in this hour. We're looking at log cabins. So we're going to be looking at that block with Lucy. We've got the creative grids rulers to do that with and in different sizes as well. So we can have a little play with those and have a look at how you create that really traditional block. So if you don't know what a log cabin is, you can just see here an example of that block and how it can be incorporated into different projects. You could go for a really big one into a bag like Angie just did. I can't wait to see that one finish. I've got a feeling that Angie's going to go outside and finish that in this hour while she's um, meant to be having a, having a chill, but I think she might be finishing the bag. That's that log cabin there. So we're going to be looking at that this morning. Beautiful. So first of all, I'm going to start, we've got four different uh, fabric bundles. So these bundles are all three metre bundles. So you've got six different fabrics in there and you can mix and match those however you wanted to. Um, so we'll, I'm going to pop that cushion on the floor and then we can grab these. So let's go, oh, let's go for this lovely bright bundle to start with. So this one is your reds and oranges. Really lovely, bold, vivid colours there in your orange. And you've also got um, a little yellow here, if you can see at the bottom, just peeping through in that sort of sunshine yellow. Then you've got burnt orange. You've got your solid orange, two different solid oranges there, more of a pumpkin orange, dare I say. I know Halloween's been and gone, but that's sort of a pumpkin orange there. And then you've got a darker orange as well. Then again, you've got the linear look fabric in your red too. True red on the top there. So that's your very autumnal bundle. Forest floor, so that's just going to be all your leaves, isn't it? As you go on a little stroll through the woods, you can imagine those in all those different colours. And um, ALGC44. Now we've also got, which one should we go for next? Let's go for blues. So this one here, you've got really lovely teal built into this. And also you've got some um, sort of cornflower blues and aquas. So on that top fabric there, you've got a darker teal. All of these are the linear look fabrics. Just giving you a little bit more interest than a completely plain solid, so it's a little bit more detail. Riviera blue. You've got peacock. Cameo, duck egg, and then you've got your vanilla at the bottom there. So again, three metres of fabric. So these are all for stash building, really. If you wanted to use these for quilting, you can. Or if you wanted to have some different colours to mix and match for bindings or for linings for things or backing, then you've got these different options here. Then this one, we've got lovely dusty rose, uh, rose pinks and then teamed with some spearmints and greys. So first of all, you've got the linear look fabric in grey. Oh, this one's called Frosty Moor. We're getting very creative with our bundle names, aren't we? And then you've got your solid. Then you've got your spearmint uh, linear look fabric. Then you've got that tea rose pink. All of these are 100% cotton. Then you've got the tea rose in the crosshatch linear look fabric. And then you've got the cream on the bottom there. This one's vintage pink and then your cream on the bottom. DDGC45, Frosty Moor. And finally, I think, is this producer Hannah's favorite? Yes, get excited about this one upstairs. Anything with purples and greens. So here we go. This one is all solid. So we had the other one that was all linear look fabrics. This one here, all completely plain solid. So you've got that saturation of colour all the way across. Uh, great for bindings and linings and things. So this is the Heathland fabric bundle. You've got your greens there, lovely deep forest greens, and then some more acre tones at the top. That one, 
is 19.49. So that's the most affordable bundle in just your solids. But then you've got your burnt oranges and reds. You've got your dusty uh, tea rose colours. And then you've also got your blues as well. So four different options. Depending, you could mix and match those, use them however you want. Also, if you do multi-buy um, fabric bundles, just as a note to know that these are already pre-cut. So if you bought uh, two of the orange, for example, you would get two half metre cuts of the red, two half metres of the orange. You wouldn't get that as one big metre length of fabric because those have already been pre-cut. Ready to send out to you. So let's get over to Lucy. We're doing log cabins. I'm going to take this cushion with me so we can have a look at that too. And we're using our rulers again. We are. Lucy, Lucy ruler girl. That's going to be, that, 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 that doesn't really have much of a ring to it, did it? <laughs> Lucy, Lucy the ruler girl. Okay. Talk to me, Lucy. What are we doing with our log cabin rulers? I have to change rulers? my name to begin with our... Yeah. Um, Rachel ruler. See, that's just got, the one. I know it works. So we've got an array of um, rulers today and I've got um, two, well, three different um, log cabin rulers. Yeah. So um, the cushion was made with the curvy um, log cabin trim tool and this is the eight inch one and we've also got a six inch one. So this comes in two sizes. So yes. if we just go through each of the rulers and sort of have a look at them. Yes. So this first of all is the curvy log cabin. Yeah, so that's the curvy log cabin. So it comes with the instructions. And it's the eight inch, um, let's have a look. Eight inch one. Okay, thank you. And you can do, um, uh, get lots of different effects with this. You can create um, sort of circles. If you have a look on the back of the, that um, yeah, on the back of the instruction. So it's got um, some examples there in the corner as well. Here we go, I might be able to see it on here. How you can build that up and, and yeah. put it together. So it creates like this sort of, um, circle I like effect this one. What's yeah that? it's really What's that nice called? that's not a log that's not it's traditionally a, is that called no it's cabin? sort of like an off center log cabin and you create it using narrower strips and wider strips okay to get to get that effect so it's still a log it is still a log cabin block you're just using different widths of fabric so with this as well you can create different looks so it looks um sort of braided like it's woven which is really nice that's cool so if someone hasn't heard of a log cabin what is a log cabin um, well, we know what a log cabin is. <laughs> Hopefully, you might know what a log cabin is, as in the, the wooden shed-like place. Yeah. But it's a traditional a um, quilt block. So it's made up of a, of a central piece, and then you build sections going around it. Um, so uh, traditionally, there are lots of different names of the quilts, of the, of the patterns that you can create using um, log cabins. Yeah. And they would have the centre colour would be... Traditionally, it would be red or yellow, I believe, and I think red was like for the for the hearth, for the centre um, of the home. Yeah, which is really like nice. The so there's a lot the... of meaning, and then I think the yellow is is light, something to do with light. I've forgotten. <laughs> um, but it's re it's really really beautiful. It's very very old block, and all of these different um, variations, variations and patterns. But the the curvy one's really nice because it's just a li a little bit different, and you can get really creative. Um, with it and, and and create these different sort of illusions. So first of all, we had the um, that's the first curvy log cabin yes. tool. So that's the six and that's the that's eight the eight inch, inch one. So then this is going to be the same patterned but smaller scale on the in the, with the six inch if yes. you wanted to. And they yeah. come with instructions, don't so they? Just so just slightly smaller. And um, I've got that on there so we can see the designs. Yeah, and there's different uh, variations <laughs> on the back there as well. If you have a look on the there, there we go. so. That kind of shows you some of the different um, effects you can get. And it's very um, much about the placement of the colours and, yeah. and the fabrics that you use. And, and depending on the fabric you use, it will look entirely different again when you, when you make another one. So that it's a lot of fun to Because play you can see, with. like you said, with, with light and shade, you can exactly. really play with that, with that sort of central focal point and then yeah. build it out. And very there. often that's how it's built up. So half of it will be, you know, light and half of it will be, will be dark. But you you don't have to do it like that. You can completely mix it up and get a different okay, look again. Go crazy if you want to. Yeah, or you can okay. really I might busy do that pattern. today. Yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> so we have one other log cabin. We're just going to quickly whiz through the different rulers and then we'll look at in detail how to actually use them. Yeah, so the um, final log cabin is your traditional log cabin this um, is this. block. And this is a four-inch log cabin, which is um, it's a very difficult block to get very um, accurate and straight without using a tool. Okay. So what this tool allows you to do is get those small pieces um, and, and create a, a really accurate quilt block. So this one's been designed by um, Jean-Anne Wright 
and it is quite small pieces. So I've made up, this is four of the this looks lovely. Of the blocks. It's so, so that's four though. four inch blocks put together. So this is a regular log cabin as opposed to a curvy. Yes. Yes, it's yeah. a regular log cabin. And I used four different colours, just for, well, five, uh, including the centre. Um, and uh, I kept them all the same. So the different colours as I was piecing it, I was doing the same way, but I've just turned them around to, so you to get put these it together. These points that sort of match. Yes, so it just creates these this secondary sort of pattern in the centre. And then you, because this is... Um, a four inch when you put it together you've got an eight inch block so you could combine that with the curvy log cabin with the larger one yes and, and you can you put, put those to put those together if you wanted to and maybe have that as a border around a, a bigger design do you have an example of the curvy log cabin that's the cushion this was one done with the, the curvy. curvy log cabin so what's the difference if you were looking at those so if you weren't sure on the difference between the curvy and the regular log cabin okay how would you best describe that um, it really is just that this central point is off center and that you've got variation in the width of the block so here you can see these sections are narrower and these sections are wider yeah and that's what creates the different effect so you can possibly see it better on this one actually so you can see there so that's one block so I did this was a demo I did so I did these two differently and, and these yes yeah, so you've I'm got just thicker. saying it together so you've got the, the thicker ones on this side, the narrow ones on that side. And you can imagine if I continued that around, mm. it creates this kind of circular shape. Whereas this is much more structured, you know, and, and you get a square, you know, you've got your square in the middle and then you're building that out. Yeah. So, this, so is, this is still a square in the centre. Yes, but it's, but it's, got, it's not framed in the same way. Yeah, and it, it, you, you are more drawn to the, to the bolder colour, perhaps, or it looks... Or where they meet the, two, the, the, yeah. the bolder colours. But that there. might change depending on where you put the fabric. Yes, so, so you can play. Yeah. So this pink one here was made using the curvy log cabin. Yes. This is your more tra what you would call more traditional yes. or maybe the original, if you like, log yeah. cabin block, um, which is with the smaller one. So you can just see that here if we just look at just the blue one. So let's grab the... That was using the, uh, the four-inch... Where's that one gone? This one. Yeah. Log cabin trim tool there. And so it's, they're really, really simple to use. They're um, quite intuitive. And, you know, once you get used to them, it just makes sense. But they, they all come with the instructions, so which are very, very clear and make it simple. But the, the way that the, the um, tools are designed is that all of these markings mean something. So as you're um, making it... You've got. A, it, it makes sense. Someone you don't, there along the way. Yeah. Really. Once you've done it a couple of times, you don't need to refer to the instructions necessarily. You know, you'll be able to work it out as you're as you're piecing it. And when you get it as well, you do get all of your you get instructions with it, so you can see here it does talk you through what those different reference points are. So you know, you don't just get this and think, well, what does round three and round yeah. two? You know, what what does that mean? Yeah. It does. And they're talk step you by through. step. They're really well written instructions. Very very clear. So. Okay. It's just fun and, and they're relatively quick to do as so, well using the, using the tool versus trying to piece it traditionally. So should we have a look at how to use this? We will look at those other rulers in a minute, but let's have a yep. look at the log cabin. That's sort of the okay. focus of this. Yep. Sure. Um, so let's look at those ones. Should we go for the traditional one first of all? Is that the one? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. So um, like I said, everything is on the ruler. I'll put it on there. So um, you're starting with a central square. So it tells you on the rule you need to cut your um, centre square at one and a half inches. Yeah. So I have cut some squares, but I think these were for the bigger ones. So I'll just trim this down. And this is, you need to be um, really precise when you're cutting out your square. It needs to be exactly one yes, and a half. Says. Because that's your starting point, everything that you're then building upon. You know, you won't it, end up with a four inch square either. If you yes, so you want to, to, you want to get that. this one... Um, really nice and accurate so that's just trim that back to create a one and a half inch square now if you weren't using this ruler what would be the difficulty with creating a log cabin block what's the the stumbling point for people yeah, who are doing it the freehand? difficulty is i mean there are um, patterns which will tell you the precise measurements for each um round mm. um so by round it just means your next the next uh, frame, part that, really, you're, yeah. that you're piecing on so that's your round one that's your round two and then the final one is your round three the outer point so you can count them one two three um and but it, it's really about it um shifting and even if you're trimming it back and um, using the ruler 
it can get just a little bit complicated to to do it and to keep everything nice and neat and, and centered and precise exactly so it's the construction is easier because of this and then the final result um is much more accurate so you get that sharpness you get those yes. really lovely definite yeah. lines as a result of using the ruler absolutely yeah. send us any pictures by the way if any of you have, you, have got log cabin yes, um, pro seeing. projects that you've used where, you, where you've incorporated that block send some in so the email just just coming up studio at sewingquarter.com we'll show some on the show today yeah it'd be lovely to see so different see, variations yeah, so you can of the see how you can well. start to build those different blocks up if you want to yeah so we, i mean we can do one that's um quite traditional and, and go with the light and dark so all i've done is cut strips and it and it tells you um well it says it on the on the tool itself you need to cut strips at least um one and a quarter inch wide yeah so when it says at least i always go a little bit over so i cut mine at one and a half do you do that with cooking when it says like a teaspoon yeah. of this and you go <laughs> oh, well, just i'll just a bigger do one. Yeah. <laughs> When my sister's baking, that is why nothing turns out right. Because she's like, oh, yeah, a cup of that. Oh, yeah, just more. like... Also, it's normally that I'm running out of things. Yes. So I have to put a bit less, so I have to find some sort of a substitute. Yes. That's why it doesn't work. So, oh, it's not really thick enough, so I'll just add some no. flour. <laughs> yes. to, yeah, no. Um, so, so just over an uh, inch and a quarter. Yes, just yep. over an inch and a quarter. So, uh, so I've, did it, I've done it at one and a half. So you will see as I'm trimming it back, I've got a bit extra. Yep. That's intentional. If you were to cut your strips at one and a quarter, you will have even, you'll have less waste. Yeah, okay. So it's so really it up to you what you feel more comfortable doing. So um, all we're going to do um, now is just start adding um, the rounds. So if I'm wanting to do um, light and dark, I'll do two strips that are light and two that are dark. So we sew the first round and then we trim. Okay. I feel like it'll this will become apparent as I'm when doing. we see it. Yeah. yeah. Now, what you can do is you can um, cut this before you begin to the same size. It's going to be the same size um, square, actually, the first one. But as I was sewing, just to make things a bit quicker, I just did it on the strip. So I've just sewn down and then I trim it and off. And then cut it off, okay. Yeah. So you you can you can get away with doing that with this because you've got the the tool. If you're doing it this way at home, um it it can sometimes go a bit wrong depending on how you trim it. But now so this ruler has a quarter of an inch seam allowance built into it in terms of your finished block. Yeah. We'll have that built in. Yeah. Yeah. And I've just made my first mistake <laughs> because what I should have Talk said, to me. what have we done? What I should have said was you need to sew with a scant quarter of an inch. That's just my default doing a quarter of an inch. So it needs to be scant. And that's because the measurements on the ruler are um, exact. And it says in the instructions, it should be a scant quarter of an inch. And what that means is it's just slightly less than a quarter of an inch. So I would, I sometimes will use my quarter inch foot. Yeah but I move my fabric over to the left ever so slightly. So it just means there's a tiny little gap in between the guide that's a quarter, you know, a full quarter, quarter of yeah. an inch. It's just a little way away from that and that will become a scan. So you end up just under what? Yeah, yeah, so just, it's not even like an eighth or anything. It's really minimal. Okay, Diddy. Um, just a tiny just a, little Just a squeeze. tiny bit, yeah, just a tiny bit less. And what that means is that really, when you open it out, it is a quarter of an inch because you've got that, um, the, the, the thread. The allowance of the stitch yes, really exactly. is, is taking yeah. up that tiny little extra bit where you've... Exactly. So we're trimming this back as we go along. I'll get my bigger scissors. So we, we do the whole round first, but so I'm just going to trim it with the scissors because it's, it's quick and it doesn't have to be precise because we're going to... Build it up. We're, we're building up. So exactly. the first one is the square exactly the same, yes. and then you're going to start to have to do longer. And then we do longer ones. So the next one, I'm going to keep it the same colour, so it's different from the from the example. And then I'm just I'm going to do it on that side, so the seam's going the same way. And I'm just going to sew and then trim. Okay. So again, scant. I'm going to keep reminding myself. So just not scan. lining up rather than the edge of the foot yeah. being right on the edge of the fabric. Exactly. Just giving yourself a little bit of breathing space yes. there. Yeah. Almost like a stitch away. If it's you amazing think of it like that, that. The accuracy, the precision to which yes. you know, we're literally talking about the width of a stitch, but that's the difference yeah. between it being a precise yeah. block or not. And if you're, you know, 
if you're unsure, you can check looking at, um, well, you'd have to, it'll have to be once you've sewn, but that's a bit fiddly. If you put it on one of the squares, you know, you can see that's where I'm sewing. So the aim is to get the square in the middle. The square in the middle, yeah. So then I'll go, I'll trim this one and then my other two sides, I'm gonna use a darker uh, fabric. So I'll just take So that strip. central square is going to be that bit in the middle and then you work out from there. It's, it's, well, we're doing round one, so it's oh, going to so be... Oh, so it's round... When oh, we come so to you trim it, this you're one. using that one. And then you yeah. moved... OK. Yeah. It'll make sense once I've sewn it. Once so you just... It. So I've sewn those two squares together. Yeah. Sewn a line there, and then I'm going to um, keep working my way round. And you want to... that you, You're going round in a circle around the square. To build it That's through. the idea, yeah. Scant. <laughs> just gonna hear just me saying, saying it, it every day. Yeah. Next time I see you, I'll just be shut down the street. Scant. Scant. But it's what's nice with the creative grids is they always tell you. You know, if yeah. it says use it's a not do this and then figure it out no. by error. It's if it actually... says use a quarter inch seam, then you use your quarter inch foot. If it says scant, you can still use your quarter inch foot, but you just need to budget along a bit. Yeah. Exactly. Now as someone that hadn't ever done that before, how do you know which edge to attach which um, fabric to? You're always... The piece that you're sewing, you have two seams on. So I don't want to sew it to... Well, <laughs> that's <laughs> fairly obvious. <laughs> I don't want to sew it to there because I've got one seam. I'm not sewing it there because I've got one seam. I'm not sewing it there because I've got none. Yeah. So I've got two there, so I know it's going So you're going always there. attaching so where you've got the two seams. So you're just thinking about going round. And you can, you can go clockwise or anti-clockwise it doesn't yeah it that might have a meaning as well i'm not sure probably does um, yeah you know, it could do but it doesn't you know that bit it doesn't really matter you just want to check that you're that you're adding it to the right side and then when we start on the next round scant at scant <laughs> good job you're here um when when i come to start the next round i'm going to start in the same on the same edge that i began originally and then, and then you build that layer. Yeah, I'm building that layer on. So I've just been finger pressing um, as I'm going along. And you don't even have to, you know, it doesn't have to be straight. I quite like the cutting as, as you go along as well, using the strip yeah, rather just, than... Yeah, it just keeps it easy. So I'm just going to give that a press. You want okay. to be very careful at this stage. Um, you don't want to use steam and you're just very carefully going to press because you can um, distort, you know, you can distort the, the square if, you, if you're using steam or if you're ironing. Is there you know, a specific ironing, way of, so. of pressing that or the seams going a certain way or it's just... Um, they naturally go out. Yeah. So um, away, from the, away from the square, if you like. So then... Um, we're just putting this on the round one and you can see how I've got quite a lot of extra. And I, I did cut them that width because that's, I'm going to use the same ones for doing oh, the curvy one. I've just gone the strip so, crazy. So yeah, no, I've the... not just gone crazy, but so you can see now how that fits um, okay, really so this nicely is where the ruler comes over, in. The, over the square, exactly. So you line up round one because you've just done round one of, of the adding on. Yes. So you don't count the square. The square doesn't no. count. It's just the, the rounds that are going to count. So then I'm going to trim this back. So if I was, if I'd done it an inch and a quarter, you know, I'd only be trimming sort of that much. Yeah. But you want something to trim because this is how you get the accuracy. So you're lining up. Can you see that um, dashed line? lines up against that seam. That dash line lines up against the seam. If you need to just adjust it at all, you know, you can just yeah. give it very gently, just give it a little pull. That one's lining up there. So every time when I'm trimming, I'm checking the accuracy using these guides that are on the, that are on the tool. And if you had gone for really, um, so it was an inch and a quarter, but if yeah. you hadn't gone for that little bit of extra, you might not have much to trim. No, you wouldn't have, you, so, so you'd have a quarter inch less yeah. than that. Um, to trim, I'm just... So every time you're just prepping. popping that square in the middle and then using yeah. the edge of the ruler as your guide. And just checking that those seams are lined up. With the dashed markings yeah, on the ruler. Yeah, with the dashed markings. Oops. 
So something like this, you'd be working with, you know, it is very small. Yeah. So that block there, I mean, that's just, so, it's so Tight, pretty. Yeah. So that one's measuring two and a half. Okay. So, you know, to piece that with narrow strips like that, it can quite easily, you know, get really fiddly. Yes. And yeah. then you said for the next round, you start where you originally started with the first edition. Yeah. So this one under here. Yeah. <laughs> so then <I'm> listening <laughs> i can build that up so we're creating this light you know it's always yeah. going to be the light one on this side and the darker one on this and then side. you I end up i use the four co colors on on this one but yeah it'll when it's two it's more up. oh no, it's not going to be any of these is it it's the no these are all curvy so then if i'm doing it this way and i'm making more than one i'll sew one and then put my next one on the oh, so strip almost chain piece really yeah so that's what I did with those for when I was making those four. Scant, I remembered. Still <laughs> <laughs> start to stick. And you'll know if you've gone wrong. And I have done it before because I'm because naturally I'm I use my quarter inch foot. Just and built that's in, what I'm, so. Yeah, that's what I'm used to. But you, um, as you you're trimming it, you will see from those guides if it's if it's um, gone wrong. And you know what, although we said this is quite small and fiddly, it's actually quite, I can imagine it being a fairly therapeutic process because oh, once you've lovely. done it, you're just, you can just use the ruler, pop that on, pop the tool on there, you're checking it and just, you're just repeating. Yeah, you're just repeating. And so it is, it's quite meditative and it's not, um, because I'm not measuring all of the pieces each time, I just know that it's gonna come out right yeah. because of the tool and how I'm trimming it, it makes it, um, yeah, just much quicker, much So if you lack a bit easier. of patience of having to keep getting things, you know, getting things double-checking, double-checking. Which I sort of do, if yeah. I'm honest. Oh, I'm, you know. I'm definitely that person. So, <laughs> but then I like the precision, and I like precision. Yeah, you don't want it. it to not end up no, right. You exactly. still want it to look yeah. the part. So it's, not, it's, just, it's a really nice method of doing it and knowing that it's going to look, that it's gonna look um, beautiful. And I'm, I, I don't love uh, doing small piecing that's not necessarily my favorite thing but this is so lovely you know yeah it's such it's a beautiful, beautiful effect I, w I want to do it i just don't always have the patience for it so this is perfect equally though i can imagine where if you've seen these creative grids rulers and you might think if i just looked at that without any explanation you might think well i, I haven't got a clue how you would you, you know yeah. it's all very well saying it creates a look home but i don't know how you just sort of almost need to have been talked through that process i'm just going to hold that on a fabric yes. so you can see oh, we've got that fabric there um but when you start to actually see how you use it, and again, you've got your instructions in there. And I imagine once you've used one or two of these creative grids rulers, so we had the Dresden plate, didn't we, earlier, but you start to know how intuitively they do work yes. and how they... Yeah, and you... and you, it, I mean, they are all different because they're designed... You know, a lot of them are designed by different people, so... Um, they do all work slightly differently. So if I get a, a new to me ruler, I, the first thing I do is read through the instructions. Yeah. Because I, you know, I want to make sure I would never just take one and go well, for it. Well, you can't maximise. Yeah. No, no. You, you couldn't maximise what this is capable no. of if you just go, oh, well, there's a straight line there. I'll just throw that on and have a cut and away. You know, it's not. And also, I think they're very, um, they're very good at providing inspiration. So just even on there, you can yeah. see those. The three different um, fabric back. designs, three different designs and ideas for what you can do, and you can do the um, is it a court the These quarter ones. ones where yeah so you you'd end up with like a larger one that was more intricate so if you make four of those it's going to end up as an eight big inch square in the middle with a well it's. It's, it's tiny, it's the same size, so it'll be a little square and all oh, these yeah, rounds, yeah. can you see? So it looks like you've put loads of effort in. <laughs> I'm not saying you've put none, no. but you but know, it's, it's, it's so, e you know, relatively it's so easy compared to traditional piecing. And you, um, so it, it looks like, oh, you, you're... But you've had someone help yeah, you on really the way, really. really accurate, yeah. and, you know, when actually it's just this... Creative grids. Yeah. The dress and plate, by the way, has sold out the one from this morning, but we have still got the log cabin, which is what we're looking at in this hour. So then just going to round two. Yep. So again, we can 
check, might need to just manipulate that. So just to recap, you were adding the fabric. First of all, you built up on the first place where you did it the first time around, and then everywhere where there's two seams, you add the strip, add the strip. Yes, you just, and so I'm just checking there that that's going along my seams there. Get that right. And then again, it's got the grip. So it's got the grip along the seam allowance and little dots of yeah, the Yeah, if you didn't see earlier, you've got these creative grids have this magic. You can just see those little dots there, but they really stop it from slipping and sliding on the fabric. Okay. So I'll, I think I'll trim this round and then I'll just make a start on the um, we'll look curvy, at the curvy one. one. Yeah. Because yeah. I can always come back and add to this one later if I've got time. But the curvy one is a little bit different, so I want to be able to show that one as well. But already you can see how just using the two colours, obviously you've got the cream in the middle, so yes. three, but compared to the five, yes. it creates a very different effect. Yes. And what I love is the idea of having them all and laying them out and you could really mix and match, you know, whether you have all those dark points coming into one or you could mm. reverse them or yes. you could just really There's play so with it. So many different effects. And what I like about this one as well is, yes, this is a four round four inch log cabin but I can stop at any point I don't have to do the three rounds so I could have stopped at one yes and got a completely different look with that I could stop now and get a completely you know it's still a log cabin it still looks like a log cabin but, but just, it's just a different a size and a different variation yeah, slightly smaller block. we've had some pictures sent in of log cabins let's have a look oh, yeah, yeah. oh I love this oh my goodness <gasps> wow who's this from Marion wow that's beautiful so that's the let's see that's a traditional That's the log, log cabin, cabin so you've it? got the three sort of she just used the scant quarter of an inch seam so it's that what we've been looking at there beautiful in the middle as well that's really beautiful like oh there's panel. some ribbons yeah. oh and then in a cushion Gorgeous. this one's from heather that's lovely that's beautiful oh heather's been poorly in bed so this is cheering her up this morning oh a log cabin get better soon Wow, that was her first ever patchwork and quilting project wow. in about 18 months. So the first one that's really lovely. And but you can see that different, really different effect. I love how that's come together like a cross in the middle, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and beautifully quilted as well, Heather. Oh, I this love that. This one from that. Diane. So you can see you get those diagonal stripes depending on where you put the fabric. So she's used bright colours in one half and the neutrals on the other. She's yeah. building up the log cabins and it's created this diagonal All stripe. All the way across, sort of Fantastic. corner to corner. Yeah. They're really cool. I love and seeing so the different, different ones. But so you would different. Not, if you didn't know quilting, yes. you wouldn't. You would not go. Oh, that's the same technique because no. they look so different with different fabrics. And they that's do. the beauty of it, really. That using one little tool or one technique, you can do. Absolutely. It opens the door really yeah. towards all sorts of things. I love it. <laughs> let's so look at, get rid of those. Let's have a look at curvy. And we'll do curvy. So, um, with your curvy one. one, you've got the different rounds in different widths yes i was just going to show a finished curvy one so we can see what it looks like yes so that was this that one, one wasn't is it? as well yeah and, that one one. Is as well. and this one yeah i love that fabric yeah i do but you can just see so this is using utilizing the different widths of um strips really isn't it so you've got yes you can see they're building out with slightly narrow ones and then also thicker strips yeah. so the first round that we're doing is the wider one so is this so what do... diana done with that diagonals is that no, that, that, no was, that, that was, was the traditional log cabin. Yeah, log that, cabin. Was traditional that, log cabin. that was just doing it like I just was doing with the four inch. Yeah. So she just done the brights oh, on and one and the on the other. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. So you don't your central your central um, square doesn't have to be a different colour. You could have you know that could have been the dark or could yes, have been the light. So then, so then it, it will like blend it goes in all more. the way through. Yeah. Exactly. So this I mean so like this one. But this is a curvy one. So this is an example of one that you can make. But then you can really, and then if you, you could build those four up, yeah. can't you? You've got those on yeah. the back to create that curve. This is why it's called the curve. Then, so isn't this it? is so this is exactly like that quilt. That's exactly the same as the quilt we've just seen, but because but it's curves. made with the curves, it's not a straight diagonal. It's like a wavy diagonal. Totally different finished shape, and also you've got that circle there. Yeah. And this is why obviously that one's called your curvy because you yes. get you get the rather than it being a straight all the way yeah. through, which I love. So it's sort of a bit of a you know just give different optical it's not an illusion because it's there but, but it's, <laughs> so, you yeah, know no, it just does yeah, have a different effect, feel a different effect so um 
for this one, I don't know what colours I'm going to use. I'm just going to... So we've got two different sizes in your go. curvy log cabin. So you've got your um, eight inch and then where's the other one? It's your um, six, six inch. inch, isn't it? Yeah. This so, I mean, it's really, the, it's really up to you. I often prefer using bigger blocks. I like that the eight inch works with the four inch. That's nice that you can combine those to have... Um, uh, different uh, looks and, and borders and then the six inch curvy log cabin is great because you can make that up into 12 inch which is a standard sort of quilt block size yeah so if you if you just wanted like the circle effect that could be a block in and of itself a 12 inch block and then you can incorporate and then that you with other can, things yeah put put that together with other blocks that you might have so that's the six inch one there. they're both useful sizes yeah but you were saying with the um with the eight inch one, you could then combine that with the normal log cabin, yes. couldn't you? Yeah. If you wanted to. Yeah, so you mix can and put match. those. So, uh, you know, I might do a quilt where I had lots of circles and then this might be a border. Yeah, so you've got that running theme through of the log cabin, but just in different places, different yes. placement. Yeah. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. And sometimes, I will say, sometimes I make the blocks and then I put them together and I just turn them round. You know, I just spend a bit of time turning them round to see and what seeing, different effects. So stepping back. And what's my favourite. So even I might have started with one plan and I end up with something else just from moving them about. I don't always stick rigidly to what was in my mind. No. So You can't always visualise it until it's in front of you, I don't think. And no, then you see. but there's not, very many, there's not very many blocks really that you can do that with. And that's one of, one of the very many reasons that I love log cabins is, is the different effects that you can get. And so. you turn it on its head. And turning it on its head, that's always fun. <laughs> so with this lighter one, I have to check which is the right side. Um, so with the um, curvy log cabin, you're starting out with one and three quarter inch squares. Yeah. So it's still, you know, quite a small um, square to, to begin with. And um, I'm gonna do it with, with it in a different color just to show you what, what, what like. that looks like. Okay. Um, but again, you can you can play around with um, colours and, and placements. And I'm going to do two at the same time so you can see what oh, I'm talking how you're about saying with that the method. Chain as well. Yeah, and then, um, and you're going to start with a wider strip for this one. So the first so round... this one's got it on here, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah. So your narrow strips are at least one and a half and your wider strips are at least two and a quarter. So I, th I think these might be two and a half and those are one and a half, so. Just, but it doesn't just, really yeah, matter. So long as it's at bit. least that measurement, you'll be fine. So I'm going to start with the, the first round is, is the wider strips. And again, this is sewing with a scant quarter of an inch. The ruler does explain all of these things. You do get your instructions. I'll show you here. So this is things. This is what comes, for example, with the eight inch log cabin ruler. So, the, so it does tell you, it does give you your block options. It does show you how to build, how to build it up. And then on the back there, that's just the final quilt ideas that you could get. Let's turn that up. That's the curve that we're talking about with building the circle or the wave all the way across. Or, or not. Di or, or different, just, something completely yeah. different. Yeah. So I just wanted to show you. So I've just sewn that first square onto my strip and I'm just going to sew the second one. So just leaving a bit of a gap. And put, I mean, I could lift my foot and get it a bit closer if I wanted, but you need to leave enough room so you can trim it back. Would you, could you, how many of these could you do at a time if you wanted to? Could you do quite a few more than that? You could just keep going if you, you wanted just to. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. So as many as you like. So it's just a quicker method of of stopping and cutting, you know, because then I just cut each one, so it's even quicker. So actually, those four, even though it's a lot of rounds, because I made all the four of those at the same time. It's it's speedier. quicker, yeah. So I'm just doing the same thing. I'm just going to trim this back. The only thing you want to be careful of, you're better going, you know, slightly wider than you don't want to cut in at an angle and lose your width out here. You mean when you come in cutting? Yeah, if you're cutting. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are nervous about that, I would go, you know, you can rotary cut them just so you're making sure that it's lined up with that edge. Yeah, so you still want to keep that original yes. square the same it's size. Yes, to you how you want to do it. But if you're, um, you know, confident cutting with scissors, then you're fine. And what I mean is if you can cut in a straight line with a pair of scissors, right. do it. If you can't, <laughs> use your rotary cutter. That's what I really mean. And again, I'm just going to finger press uh, that, but away from the square. I was just about to do it the wrong way. 
So always going away from Pushing the Pushing it out. So, yeah. so you... And that helps as well visually. If you look at that, you can see it's coming out. Yeah. It, lo it looks like going it, it's in. layered and built up rather than it being... Yeah. It's the precision I love. I just think it's it's so clever. That's This is your traditional four-inch block. But looking at that curvy log cabin... And the effects with different fabric as well, just really varied. So again, I'm going to do two. Dare I ask the question, do you have a favourite block? Quilt block of all time? Yeah. It depends what day it is. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it changes all the I time? I can't, yeah, I just can't. So like asking you to pick a favourite child? Yeah, no, I can't. <laughs> can't and won't. Um, I don't know. It, do you know... Sometimes it's what I'm making. At that time, so yeah. whatever it is that you've got in... Yeah. Yeah, but I... Personally, I like a lot of the traditional blocks. So I love log cabins, um, Dresdens, all that sort... You know, all the um, courthouse steps, variations of yeah, log like cabins, um, all those kinds of things. I have to think about what my other favourites are. I like a lot of the stars as well, a lot of the traditional stars, Ohio stars. You know, just quite simple, but... Effective. Yeah. And it's sort of the ones that kind of have a bit of a meaning behind them as well. I just really like that. It's like the names of my children, all very traditional. What are your children's names, remind me? Fred, Joan and Lois. Well, Joan. Joan! I love yeah. that. That's, that's my so, name. Yeah, that's yeah. lovely. Because yeah. those names sort of almost... Well, they go in phases, don't they? They all yes. come and they come round again. But you yeah. don't, I don't know any Jones. I love no. that. Well, every time we meet one, we go, oh, there's another there's Joan. Joan. <laughs> So I'm going to give that a little press okay. um, because with this one, it is slightly different. You're not doing the whole round. You're sort of doing half because you're doing... Because uh, they're different the, widths. The, exactly, yeah. the narrow and the, and the wider ones. So which route has been most popular this morning? Is it the traditional log cabin? Oh, geez, I had disappeared. We'll come back in a second and tell you about that. <laughs> So I'm just going to line that up. Can you see there? So I'm lining it up with the seam yep. there, and then I can trim that back. The curvy is the most popular. Curvy look. It's cabin. so fun. It really is so much fun. There's so many different things that you can create. And I like that circle. I mean, that's quite modern, you know. It's... Yeah, that's the, um, this one on the back here, you can see. Is that the Japanese? Is it Japanese, that flag? With the circle in, yeah. yes. There it is. <laughs> Lucy's You're laughing so at me cute. for questioning the flag <laughs> no, knowledge. I'm not, no, I'm not. <laughs> Maybe a bit. <laughs> Maybe a bit. No, I'm terrible. My geography's awful. It's really, it's really, it's really bad. I've realised how the lack of knowledge about like labelling maps and things. Oh, I did A-level geography. I got an A. Well, that, I put a big... Did you? Yeah. I did. I'm just good at, I'm just good at remembering, <laughs> remembering things. things. That's all it is. I put... Um, maps and, and things on my son's wall yeah. because I'm like, somebody's got to learn. Yeah, someone's <laughs> got to know. There's so many, though. <laughs> um, so now we're going for the narrow. So I've just taken from my bunch of um, narrow strips and then um, remembering to keep that um, same clockwise, in this case, yeah. uh, movement. So I'm not adding, to, you know, not adding on to here, I'm adding on to, to this side here. Yeah, I was saying when I was off, I was attempting to learn how to label Europe because I thought it was shocking that I didn't know where some countries in Europe were. Mm. And um, someone messaged in and said, oh, they have a map on their wall in the hall. And then whenever a country's spoken about in the news, they go and just look and remind themselves where that country oh, is. I yeah, think that's quite a good that way. Because then you have an actual... You're applying it, aren't you, to a real-life yes. situation. Somehow it sticks a bit more. And I'm still very um, paper. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. analogue. We've talked this. about this, yeah. yeah. Diaries every day yeah. over a phone. Yeah, absolutely. I can't look at a screen. It's not the same, is it? And even looking at a map on a screen... No, it doesn't have the it's same It's not the same. Feeling. It doesn't go into my brain in the same it's way It's like if someone... If I had to read a script and someone tried to get me to read a script on an iPad and it's not... The same, you, you don't... I have to have... I like to have paper. I, I like to hold it. And you don't read it the same I way. I can't read... I've got, like, a... You know, these things and I've got, like, a free book thing. Yeah. Of, you know, and... I, 
And so I was reading it on my mobile. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I can do this technology. I'm a whiz. You know, flip the page. And, and I've read about two pages. Oh, I can't do it. No. <laughs> I'm going to go and get a book. A, a little boy in my sister's class, he's a teacher, and he tried to zoom in on a page of a book, a real book. He couldn't understand that you couldn't zoom in <laughs> on the paper pages. Honestly. Somebody in the office said that on a magazine. Oh, really? She's getting like just trying to go, you just so naturally tried to zoom in. And my sister was like, no, no, you've got to turn the page. Like, oh. Just didn't understand that that was... But that's how techy so we are now. It's, it is so different. I'm not. Not well. I. I mean, it's funny because I am. Things. I can yeah, use you are. computers Instagram and, and social media and, and all those things. You are. Yeah, but. I can do all of that. But and I can fix things. I'm a good sort of a fixer. Are you a fixer? Yeah, I'm a fixer and I can do a bit of coding and I do get it. Coding. But I did. Yeah, but I, only a bit basic. <laughs> yeah. But I don't. But I. But I still <laughs> write everything, everything down. down and you know yeah prefer books. So you can already see how that's different. With the narrower strip there. With the narrower strip. So rather than it being a whole equal frame all the way round as we have with this one, you're just building up the different widths there. Yeah. Okay. So just keep going. And again, scant quarter inch seam. I've only got about three minutes. Oh, you're kidding. Well, we've oh got dear. ten minutes. I need to about, sew a bit no, faster. about ten okay. minutes, but then we're going to have three minutes over I'll there. sew faster. I'm oh, we've got chatty. some more pictures. Oh, yay. We're too busy talking about books and maps and things like that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Who's this one sent in from? Wow. Oh, that's stunning. This is a mini quilt from Reva. Oh, that's beautiful. Is it Liberty? Oh, it's hanging on the back of the front door. Looks using like English Liberty paper painting. Very beautiful. That's Little lovely. Florals and I love oh, that. Gorgeous. Oh, look. <gasps> Christmas, like a Christmassy one. Oh, and I like that pattern as well. Very dramatic, isn't it? Lovely. Apparently this one's a work in progress. Who was this one from, Hannah? This one's from Doris. Oh, it's beautiful. Lovely. Oh, I love seeing these. Oh, I hope you get it quilted <gasps> by Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. This one's from Annie. That's wow, that's so huge. Isn't it so dramatic? Yes, yeah, so clever. So she's got a panel again in the middle and then the bottom is like the the trees and the mountains and then the, and the, the sky. Sort of that's above. so clever. The panels are really effective Beautiful. as well, aren't they, in the middle? Oh, oh look, that's the what we're colours. talking about. Look at the stripes going yeah. through the diagonal. Gorgeous. And then this, uh, the piano key border was a lovely choice as well with this that. This is Sandra's first ever quilt. Oh, fabulous. Wow. I'm very impressed. We've got so many pictures we could share this morning. Thank you so much for sending all of those in. If we don't get a chance to show them all, we'll always have a look at them when we come off air. But it's so lovely to see you can use I that log it. cabin. In all, I mean, look at that one with the birds and all of your, or that yeah, compared amazing. to you know, a Christmassy one or yes. a more colourful one. And yeah. there's so much you can play and with. That, and that you can get these rulers and you can create so many different looks. You know, Just with, with where's the amazing. little tiny ruler? Like using that? Yes. Amazing. I love it. So I had to stop then to look at the pictures, so I'm... <laughs> just lost two minutes. <laughs> really? Bad. We've got seven minutes. <laughs> okay. So again, I'm going to give this a press because I'm at okay. that stage where I'm going to trim. So yeah. every time before I trim, um, I give it a press because I want... Once I've trimmed, I don't want it to move. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So if you've pressed it first, then you know that that's going to, going to stay. And finger pressing as you're adding is fine. Um, I mean, you could press with, with an iron if you wanted to, but I think you, you definitely do need to give it a proper press before you trim. Okay. So then all you have to do then is turn it over. So we're still on round one. To go on the narrow. So if I, if I had got confused, yeah. I wasn't sure what I was doing. And I'd, <laughs> was that the case? <laughs> yeah. If I'd got confused... I don't know what I'm yeah. doing. <laughs> then I'd put it on... Um, Oh, you've got nothing to cut. If they screenshotted me doing this, I will. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I'd put it on the wide, yes. So you can see it's intuitive in that yeah. that's not going to work. So you just turn turn the tool round. Because you're using the narrow strip. Yes. Well, the narrow strip is what you want to cut. And yeah. it says narrow on the ruler. I'm just going to make sure that's lined up. So it's lined up with my seam there. It's lined up with my so seam So every time there. it's those dashed lines on yes. the seams. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so long as you've got that first, that the seams were accurate, that's exactly how it should, then it's gonna how it right, should yeah. work. So if you need to adjust your, your scant seam, you know, that's okay. This is a good way of learning where and how, where to, and yeah. how to do it. Yeah. So I'll just trim that. And that's the round one. So it, you literally are just going to be repeating that. So um, I'm going in again 
with the wide. There you go. Yeah. Got it. See? <laughs> <laughs> you do start to, you can start to see how. Yes. Yeah. And so I it, wish we did more logical things. Like, because you could see how this could have a mathematical, it, you know, you do have to think in a, a, a bit of a mathsy way. There's a lot way. of maths in Yeah, there really is. Yeah, there is. And I wish that they applied more things like that, I think, in school where you learn, you know, yes. you might learn Pythagoras' theorem, but let's see how that works in an actual making of I something. Know, I or spent a, my whole maths career maths going, career. what's the point yeah. of this? No, and just, now I know what the point is. I get it. Is. It's like penny drop. Yeah. So I can make a little cabin yeah, block. Or, it's fun. They should do that. And so you can start to see how, you know, if you're... Um, turning it round, the different kinds yeah. of looks and effects that you can get. And again, this is similar. You don't have to build up all your rounds. You can stop at any I point. You could do, do one round or two rounds. Yeah, yeah. And have them do. I mean, that would just look beautiful, mm. wouldn't it? There's something a bit presenty about that. As yeah, well. like, like that would be the bow. On the top. You could put a little bow yes. there, couldn't you? Yeah. That would so be... you can see we've just come up with just literally another, at that there. another idea just from those two small pieces. So um, then again, as I'm adding the next round, I could stick with um, that colour and I could have it be two, three uh, colourways. But or with I different ones, to, you can see. Yeah, you could start to add in different colours. You can just have a play can about. See there. I don't know if you can see that one there, just using the different colours. Or again, this one here, all with one colour, it's all going each way. And then I've just thought of something else. Oh, what's this one? I could, you could make the next wide strip connect, you know, by doing it in the same colour, it's going to look like it A square connects, all the way, yes. Like a rectangle, it would make, make it like a rectangle around, so you'd get a completely different look again. Almost like a lap depending on the, what. Yeah. yeah, depending on what colour you, you add on to it. Can we talk about the Should yeah, we talk about the skirts? Yeah, we've really yeah. run out of time. I'm just thinking they're all sat there feeling sad. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, sad rulers. Come and say hello. And they were so beautifully arranged as well this morning. Okay. So, squares. Squares. So, this is, uh, you know, quite a big uh, collection of yes, different of sizes. Um, and I'm not in any way saying that everybody needs every size of ruler. I don't want anybody to, to think to the same that. that, no. Um, I do think as you um, do more quilting, as you do more sewing, you will find what works for you, what sizes you're working with the most. Yeah. So that might give you an indication of what sort of sizes are going to be the most useful so for you're you, led depending by what on you what do, you're really. doing. It's yeah. going to be different for you everybody. You might really enjoy tiny piecing, you might enjoy making bigger blocks, whatever it might be, and, and you'll determine, you know, if you like following a lot of patterns, maybe you're doing things that are wider or narrower and so that can kind of dictate to you um, and what, what you're going to want. you want but you might find a, you know a smaller one and a larger one very useful okay so, so start um, with the smallest I'll start off with the smallest one so this is um three and a half three and a half um inches with all of the creative grids you've got the I'm full size you yeah do you want to right, i don't know it. what how to hold things <laughs> i'll hold you talk <laughs> thank you <laughs> so with all of the creative grids you've got the full size measurements in white and then if you spin it around, you've got the half, the one and a half, or sorry, the, yeah, inch and a half uh, measurement. So you can cut it one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, uh, and so on, which is really useful because for some, you know, if you, if you have it this way and you're trying to find the one and a half and you're looking at these little lines, which are all there, so you can do your quarters and your halves and your three quarters this way. Yeah. Um, but very often in quilting, things are in full or half inch measurements. So it's, it's just, just spin it around. easy to spin it around and you, you're not having to find that line in, in the same way. And you've got all the eighth measurements uh, going along there as well. So that's really useful. So the smallest one um, is great for cutting small squares, funnily yeah. enough. Um, but trimming anything small that you've got to trim. So like even with these bigger blocks, that centre square is very small. I would use this smaller ruler for that to cut sort of that. Attic. Um, I don't like, if I'm cutting a lot of small squares, um, or if I just have to cut, sorry, a few small squares, I don't like to use my big long ruler because it is a bit fiddly. To move, manoeuvre it yeah, around on to your move desk it around. Or, yeah. So I like to have a smaller square just for using those little pieces. For English paper piecing, it's great. All those kinds of things, it's it's. And brilliant. also for that price, it's a little stocking filler could be, couldn't yes, it? You know, it'd yeah, be nice absolutely. to give us a gift or just pop that in if yeah. you want to. But if you to. find yourself wrestling with your bigger rulers, 
I would say it's worth. Then you've got it's just worth. a smaller one there. And yeah. so, like you were saying, you're not saying, oh, you know, you need to have five rulers, but quite yeah. good to have. Oh, we've been told we haven't got much time. On to the next one. But okay. we could, if you've got a bigger one and a small one, you yeah. can mix and match. Um, eight and a half is great. Uh, like an eight inch block is quite a standard size. Yeah. But, you know, anything in between, then that's just a re really handy for all different kinds of measurements. And of course, you're not just cutting squares. You can be cutting um, rectangles or whatever it might might be, squaring things yeah, up. Like and you've got the diagonal line there as well, which is great for anywhere where you, you know, when you're cutting, you might want to cut one half and then the other half, but you're lining up a central point. And it's got these little almost arrows. Can you see that on there? Yes. So you can line that up with your seams and make sure everything's straight. And so if you're doing half square triangles or something like that, you could line exactly. that on there. Yeah, exactly. So it's perfect for that. So okay. that's, prob that's, that's probably one of the most useful, I would say. But if you've already got the long, the long rectangle, rec that's probably your next next one, edition in my mind okay yeah. so then we've got 12 so the 12 and a half so if you're doing a lot a of standard sized quilt box for anybody that um wants to do swaps or join in a bee you know on social yes. media there's a oh, lot yeah. of uh, quilting bees and things like that for the most part um we trade in <laughs> 12 and a half inch blocks so your 12 and a half inch is a very standard size so this is this is one that is just great for squaring up you can use it for other things, of course, but to get your to get your blocks perfect, then you're going to you know, get your perfectly per yeah. squared up. That's a really handy one um, to have. Okay, so that's twelve and a half. Yeah. And I'm just skimming through these. We just want to show you the different ones because we've had them on the desk all morning and not referenced and them. And talk about why you might need them as well. I think. Um, and then the the sixteen and a half and the twenty. Run out of fabric. The <laughs> twenty and a half. I oh, know. I don't think it's going to be big enough no, it's for not. this. It's not. Um, but the 16 and a half and the, and the 20 and a half. Now, really, I think this is for getting widths out of things. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, where so you want, you want something wider. So you, you might want... be using bigger blocks and, and for trimming it for that. But I think very often, I, you know, you might have to resort to your cutting mat and it's not the best guide for, for cutting out wide pieces. So bag making... Um, anything like that where you're using uh, cushion backs, I use this for. Okay. Um, so when I'm cutting out a cushion back, it's got to be bigger than like a 12, obvious, just a small cushion. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's what I use that for. And then the 20 and a half, um, if you've got space to store it, it's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Because for anything like that, bag making, cushions, anything where you've got to cut it's bigger Rather than pieces, having to move a ruler along, exactly, you've got that whole straight exactly. line. Exactly. You've got that whole straight line and the width in one space you're not having to maneuver things about so um if you if you can store it flat because it needs to they all need to be kept flat yeah so um if you can get that that's the in one somewhere we've got five yeah, seconds favorite nice ruler one. favorite ruler uh, uh, Log uh, cabins or square. Uh, a 12 and a half inch one, maybe? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Creative grid. We'll see you in three minutes. I'm just going to be here. We're going to be looking at another project. We'll see you in three. <laughs> Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. Hi, I'm Jennifer Mills and these are my three top tips. Get to know your sewing machine. Take time to practice different stitches and have a read of the manual and see whether you can drop the feed dog, for example. Can you do free motion embroidery? And just take a few moments out of your ordinary sewing machine use to experiment and get creative. My second top tip is to invest in a pressing ham. This will really make a difference if you're sewing, especially women's wear with bust darts, and it can really uh, create a very nice finish to the garment. My third top tip is to invest in different marking tools, like different types of chalk and a water erasable pen so that you can transfer all your notches and darts and use them in different ways on different fabrics depending on what suits your mood and what's relevant to that material. Join us on Saturday the 11th of November when guest designer Jo Carter will make two of her amazing designs. At 8am tune in to see Jo's sausage dog mini quilt as seen in Love Patchwork and Quilting magazine. We've created a kit for you to sew your own. 
Then at 10 a.m., Jo will create her incredibly popular polar bear, available in a limited edition cream fabric pack as well as the original white. He'll make the perfect gift for someone special. And Anna from Alice Caroline will also be in the studio with a gorgeous selection of Liberty kits. So join us on Saturday the 11th of November from 8am to 12pm, only on Sewing Quarter Freeview Channel 78. Follow us on Twitter for more inspiration, top tips, news and share your own creations with us. Don't miss our pack shows on Friday the 10th of November with much-loved designer Joe Carter and new guest Susie Argent from Ashmead Designs. Joe will launch our exclusive sewing quarter Christmas bear in fun, festive prints from Macawa. This patchwork cuddly is sure to become a much-loved collectible. Joe returns at 10am making beautiful Tilda kits and projects from the Handmade and Happy Book. You'll have Christmas all sewn up. And with our first shows featuring Devon's Ashme designs, we have two hours packed with Christmas English paper piecing kits and quilting kits. Don't miss these exciting shows this Friday from 8am to 12pm only on Sewing Quarter, Preview Channel 78. Good morning, welcome back. We finished both those two shows with Lucy, like right on the mark <laughs> on that countdown, 10 second countdown. But Angie, well, I stitched you up a bit, didn't I really? Because I did. said, Angie's going to go and probably finish the bag. So I she just spent her... <laughs> I, still oh, managed, I still managed to get my porridge in. Good, I'm glad you managed to. <laughs> this was the bag we made at nine o'clock, so you can always go back and watch on YouTube. But we were using the Quilters You Go block and um, incorporating that into a bag. Um, this is Angie's design. She's put that all together. You can just see in there we were talking about you're finishing it off, Finish you, off yeah. I have done this one with the machine just quickly um, but it is it's, so it is doable to do it by machine not hand and I just pinned those over ready to, so to, to stitch that down too but that was the foliage um, bundle that was the most popular one this yeah. morning so you can still get that online and that's what's just going to come up on your screen but also if you go to the website the whole bundle's there you get enough fabric to make one bag but you've got enough uh, wadding the quilt as you go wadding to make two bags or you've got additional blocks there for cushions or placemats or any of those things. Yeah. So we just sneaked that back into the beginning <laughs> of this hour as Angie's sacrificed her porridge eating time. So in this hour we're doing, yeah. I absolutely love this wreath and I know we did one at eight, but this one here, look at this. <laughs> I'm going to grab it. I'm going to take it off. We've got I a picture. Gonna say, oh, we'll, we'll like to refer to it anyway. But we'd like to have a look at it. Yeah. Stunning. And this was from pretty much, again, you didn't have uh, instructions for this, no. did you? This no. was, um, <laughs> you're like, no, make, I didn't. <laughs> no, make it up as I go along. We're just going to look at the bundles and then we'll come back and have yeah. a look at the whole process. No we'll problem. be back in two seconds. So, that wreath bundle this morning that we are going to be making in this hour with Angie, we've got three different options, three different colourways for making that. All of these come with the uh, sewing quarter. We've done some templates for this. So, you've got your templates there ready to draw around and cut out in the different heart uh, sizes in sort of small, medium, large, and some little tiny ones too. And then you've got all of your fabric, your thread, and your stuffing as well to stuff those hearts. So, we'll start first of all, which one? With the Scandi one. So that's the one you've just seen, which is really lovely. I think it's got a, a really, um, it doesn't even necessarily just have to be for Christmas. It's got that, that Scandi feel, bringing it really up to date. You've got your spot on grey, two metres of fabric. You've got your heart on your gingham and your heart there too. Then you've got your thread, your stuffing, and all of these come with your templates. So that's the finished wreath there made up in that colourway. DDGC98. Then our next one, if you were watching first thing this morning, you may have seen these two um, sort of autumnal style fabrics in your khakis and copper, uh, copper colour with your greens and burnt oranges there. And again, two metres of fabric, your template, your stuffing. And I'll just show you an example of that template. So you've got that there, you can see the different sizes. They've got the seam allowance built into them. So different um, scales there you can use to create a plastic template or with freezer paper. That one's 31.49, so half a metre of those four different fabrics. And then finally, 
we've got a very Christmassy one. So we've got these lovely, this fabric here in the middle is one of my favourite Christmas fabrics that we've had. You can see it's got that little sort of house in the, it's upside down. House in the, oh, it is up, it's all going to be upside down because of how it's folded, but you can see there. Let's turn that around that way. There you go. So which one of these do you get two me a metre of? You must get a metre of one of these fabrics. And two of them are half metres. Oh, we're missing a dark green. We're going to add that one in. I'll show you the still of that so you can see what actually comes. There's four different fabrics in that bundle. You've got your two reds, your grey and your green. Again, you've got your templates, your stuffing and your thread. 2849 UHGC00. And all of these this morning to create the wreath, which Angie's going to show us. So let's just have a look at the picture of the wreath that we're making this morning. I was swooning over this in our office at six o'clock or 6.30 maybe, I think when Angie got here this morning. Let's have a look at that and how we're going to do it. So it is gorgeous, isn't it? it is and I know the face, <laughs> uh, this took you an, quite a while, wasn't it? This is quite a time consuming project. One of those where you're like, really? But it is, you don't promise it's someone. No, next to my <laughs> but it is really effective. It is actually. I, yeah, it was. Uh, you must be pleased with it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really straight. I was going, I, I'm not, as people know, I don't normally do heart shaped things. I'm not really into hearts that much, no. but I do actually really, it's really sweet when it's put together. Because it, although you can see it's heart, that's the sort of thing you notice on a closer inspection, yes. but from a distance. Yeah. You... No, it's really nice. And it, and it works. Um, it all comes together. It's like I say, it's, a, it's quite a repeat process. So yeah. you can just sit and um, do them. When I was making it, I tended to work in um, waves of sort of machine stitching. So I'd got then the evening to sit and do the hand stitching in bit. In one go. Yeah, so you can work around it like that. What's lovely as well, I think, with these hearts, with the templates, you've got the different sizes. But if you wanted to have, say, a running theme through, you yeah. could have a wreath and then you could do, you could have hearts as little Christmas decorations Absolutely. for your tree. Individually. Um, say so you've got, we've got five different size hearts on the template sheet so yeah. that, that you can just use them Mix for a plique. Um, you know, like you say, different size 3D ones. You could do the whole, you could do a placemat. Yeah. You could do, you could really. We were talking about you could go another ring, you know, you can, because there's two other sizes. From the template here, I've used um, the, where there's two hearts on one side, I've just annotated this. This is the large one on yeah. the outside and um, the small one there. That's, that makes the smaller size there. Uh, and then on the reverse, that's the medium, so the middle one. And so you've got two other sizes there, so you could keep going if you if you wanted, if you wanted to. to. But we, were, we were sort of saying it makes a nice table centre even for a vase yes. of flowers as well. And we said a candle, and then we said, oh, maybe that might be a bit, yeah, might a be bit a of a safety bit, hazard. But, <laughs> but Lucy said, actually, the one of those electric candles Absolutely. so you could pop in the middle, because you could see that as a sort of centrepiece. Because it's got that... Um, the, the sort of 3D-ness about Where it, it as well. It builds into, the, up its, into uh, the middle. It's nice really design. lovely. Yeah. And of course you can decorate it um, more or however you um, see fit. Um, I just put four four bows and decided to put them on the outer corners, but you know, depending on which way you hang it, of course. Um, Stunning, really, really, well. really love yeah, this one. Really so, oh wow, loads and loads of people putting this particular bundle in your basket. If you do like the Scandi one, DDGC98, and that's 2849. You've got all of your fabrics in there, two meters of fabric. You've got the templates, you've got the wadding, you've got your thread, so everything ready to go. Um, you can just add some haberdashery if you want to. Yeah. But let's hang this one up, and then, how, so how do we get started? I was going to say, from the four fabrics um, in the bundle, um, you can see actually, this is what I've got left. Oh, so, wow. um, you know, it uses very, even though it looks like quite yeah. a lot of make, um, you'll have lots of fabric to do, like other projects, like also you were Christmas tree bits and Yeah, or, or placemats or napkins oh, uh, for the table. So there is quite a lot left. Um, and, and like you say, they're lovely. You've got two reds and two greys. Yeah. And that's how um, I worked the pattern, really. So we've got sort of, um, there's eight hearts in each circle. Yeah. So you just need to make two in of each, every colourway. In each colourway, yes. So that's now, where I Now, you could, if you wanted to, there's nothing to stop you. You could do one whole ring Absolutely. of one, yep. and then one of another, and yep. sort of go light to dark, that's or you right. could really, you could play around. That's right, yeah, you could do each ring in a different fabric, or like you say, I've just done two of each. So that's, you know, complete um, creative freedom there. And this is the other Sorry bundle. Sorry to interrupt you, just over okay. a third of the stock of that one's already gone, of that oh. Scandi bundle. So if you do like that one, please do give the call centre a ring, 0800 112 4433, or check it out online, On you can pop that in your basket, DDGC98, I think, because you can see it already made up you yeah. can visualize what that's going to Gorgeous. look like 
It is. But we are working with the different yeah, colour I'm, going, I'm going to just show you how to make the hearts with the, the different bundle. Um, if you are working with um, these hearts, just the two hearts actually, a directional fabric, so that those don't matter. No. Um, but how I worked this um, was that I cut um, a strip of fabric and then because we're going to make um, four, we want to make four hearts to of make the same, two of the same. Back to back. Yeah. So I cut, um, if you see from this fabric here, if you cut a strip off your fabric and then I folded it in half and then half again. Okay. And cut them all at once rather than having so to you cut them cut individually. Your time down. Yeah, you cut your time down, but if you've got a directional fabric, you might end up with something upside down. Are you with oh, me? On the so back, if you cut yeah. a strip and then you fold that in half, that one's facing that way and that one's facing that way. It works fine because you can put them on the back, but just bear that in mind if it's, you know. Just be careful. Yeah, just be careful of that. Just, half I just the stock wanted... of this one's now gone, so please do check out your baskets on that Scandi Hearts one. Just but wanted just being to point directionally. Yeah, directional fabrics. Of... You will get one that's upside down unless you do it sideways. Unless you put your heart sideways. And, yeah, and, like, and then, yeah, then, then they'll all be the yeah, same way. All but it still might way. not face the right way. <laughs> but the one that I'm just going to use, we've also got a still of that, so the picture of this a lovely green autumnal mm. one. So you've got two with almost like a ticking stripe, haven't you, going through that? And then you've got with your um, with your leaves as well. Yeah. So this is the Hollyberry Hearts kit. And this one as well, I think, is nice, is that you could get this out before you might get Christmas decorations mm. out. I did, um, when we first sort of started to look at uh, Christmas, I think... Did we do Christmas in July? In July. Oh, yes. <laughs> I was asked to design a project that would take some time. That's why we did it in the summer. And I did a Christmas quilt using these these fabrics. These I've not seen before, um, but that was from the Hollyberry range. And yeah. they were, like you say, it's a bit more just You can just get wintry. away with having it out yeah. just for autumn and That's then right. going into winter because right. it's oh, those, sorry. Sorry, those sort of colours, isn't it? That's and right, yeah. So it's just like warming sort of um, winter fabrics rather than autumn leaves overtly and... Christmas. Um, do we need that? I don't, I don't think, know. no, I think no. this is what we were using to show the Creative <laughs> Grids rulers. Oh, I see. Move that to the side. So, yes, um, we have our templates. And as I said, I chose my three sizes that I was going to use. And these are in your bundle, <coughs> so you can just use these, trace them maybe, or? Yeah, you can either trace them on template plastic and draw around them directly onto your fabric. Um, I chose to draw, trace them onto freezer paper. Okay. So if you've never used freezer paper before, it's got sort of a matte side that you can write on, just like normal paper. And it's got kind of a waxy feel to the other side. Yeah, I was wondering if we had... Oh, it's just there under on the second shelf. Is it under Oh, is it under there? Oh, yes. Yeah, there it is. There you have. Hidden away. That's it. <laughs> so it's, it comes, it's just like a baking parchment, really, but it's, it's, it is different, a, a different uh, baking parchment. Um, but that's how it feels. It comes on a roll. Um, really, really useful for templating. And what this does is when you place it on your fabric and uh, apply heat with an iron, it actually sticks to the fabric. So you can see this one is um, adhered oh, okay. to the fabric. So you can, um, obviously I've just got, I've got two layers of fabric there, but when I'd got four, so yeah. I cut my strip of my fabric width and then folded it and folded it again, I'd got eight layers. And so you can actually, yeah, it's quite robust. I've pinned through this several times. And it stays, times. It's, it's behaving. You know, it yeah, it stay. behaves and the, the holes, it doesn't sort of, you know, exhaust the paper too quickly. You can keep using it over and over again. So although it is um, adhered to the top layer, the others would be loose. So just keeping it all in check. Yeah, so that's just a few pins in there to keep it nice and secure. And then I'm going to cut that out if I've, I've buried my scissors under all that <laughs> lovely fabric. <laughs> so... I'm just cutting this, um, just literally. It's so funny that you've got it. this project when you don't like doing hard. <laughs> of all of the shapes that you could possibly give Angie, because you got sent a picture, didn't you, of all? Could you make something like this? Something that like this. Yeah. And I bet you, when you, your heart sunk, literally, you saw hearts. Thought, so, oh, I did no. have, I did think that they were taking the Mickey, actually. They <laughs> sent it on. Somebody sent it on purpose. But, um, but as actually, I said, actually, finished, I do quite the like actual it. finished yeah. um, thing is lovely. I, didn't, I love Hark, so I didn't, it take, me. I didn't get a photo of it, actually, to put on my... Um, I think on my Facebook page, as I was making it, I just put all the hearts when they were just loose. Just got this whole table of... What is it, yeah. 24? 24, 24, 24, yeah, 24 yeah. hearts. So, um, yeah, I have to make sure I get a picture of it finished because it is quite sweet. It is lovely, really lovely. So, yeah, you've just got the tricky point there, so you can just... Um, if you've got some smaller scissors, just to nip And if you were doing the smallest, um, the smaller hearts, you'd probably just use those sort of smaller yeah, little snips. Yeah, that's anyway, right, maybe. yeah. So, 
Oh, we had a message from Nicola. Morning. Let's see. Uh, good morning, ladies. Good morning, Nicola. Um, mm. I'm super excited about this stunning wreath. It's so beautiful. Bought oh. mine in the owl fabric. Lovely. Let's have a look. We've got the. Oh, we've got a, still of that bundle of that other um, fabric. It's that lovely Christmassy one. Oh yes, I haven't it's, seen that one. It, yeah, the oh. it is really lovely. Gorgeous. They all have a very different feel to them, actually, in terms of the because of the styles of the print. Yes. Um, so we'll what have do to we send think? us a picture. When yeah, I was going to say, do we think Nicola will do the four different fabrics, or is she going to do each? I do a, quite yeah. like the idea of having three different. with different. Building, yeah, building yeah. them in. And then you'd have one left over, wouldn't you, of fabric to do something yes. with? Yeah. You'd have enough fabric to do one whole round of hearts out of one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, because it's only really the largest one. As I say, the largest one, if you put, I think it's about uh, six, six inches by about five and a half. Um, so that's why I was saying out of a strip, out of a strip, you can just about tightly get... Um, because the one way is a bit shorter, it's about five and a half that way. So that's why if you fold it that way, you just get four. And so then you out, could out get of two 16, strips, you yeah, yeah, to you get would easily. Um, one whole wreath in one colour. That's it, yeah. So um, you can see I've got my bottom layers loose, and this one is stuck to the freezer paper, but it's just sort of lightly. You don't leave any residue or anything. That's great, isn't it? So, yes, yeah, so you could cut lots of those and, and just put, you know, Eight of or those plastic, or four of yeah, those. Yeah, the plastic uh, templates yeah. as well if you want to do if you, So you can do it that way. So now we're just going to um, stitch these face to face, uh, right sides together. Again, we've got um, a stripe in this and I was trying to decide, do I put the stripe that way or this way? But it doesn't really. Yeah, yeah I guess yeah. it depends again with laying on the fabric. Laying on the fabric, yeah. Because you wouldn't think of a stripe as being directional but it is in terms of where it's going to if you're going to have it going that way or that yeah, way that's right even so though it's a basic directional sort of decision you have to think it? about that when you're cutting multiples obviously because you'd want them all the same way wouldn't you would you ever do this would you ever have the back in a different fabric to the front yes you could do that too so the back could be completely different yeah because yeah. at the moment with maybe this that's one, um if you you know if you're making the whole ring in one fabric maybe that's how you do it. you can make sure then yes you could, you yeah, could have something else on the back something else on the back yeah So that Scandi bundle across the bottom of your... Wow, there's only four left in stock of that Scandi one. So this is the wow. one that's on the bottom of your screen. So popular this morning. DDGC98, 2849. You might have to be speedy with that one. You need to check out your baskets. Only four of that left in stock. I've just realised I haven't got a marking pen with me. So, a marking pen, yeah. we'll get you one. We'll that's get you a marking pen. Um, I'll say that like I just got <laughs> yeah. wave them on. <laughs> 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 All right. I can use pins for now. So we're going to stitch. Um, it says on the template that it's got a 0 0.6 centimetre seam allowance, which is a quarter of an inch. Yeah. Um, so we're going to stitch now a quarter of an inch inside here. We do have to remember to leave a gap. For stuffing. People that know Antonio. that have watched my shows before know it's one thing I always forget. <laughs> I'm happily That's what stitching. You earlier as well with the, um, with the bag, is it? Yeah. doing the lining. I'm always stitching gaps up. So, um, so you can mark with a pen, um, sort of one and a half to two Here inches. I've got your really. magic pen. Oh, See, I fantastic. told you it was magic. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. So, um, what I like to do if you're doing lots of these, like you say, because you'll be doing eight of them is actually just decide where you're going to put it. I always, on a heart shape, it's quite nice to put it on a straighter edge than trying to fit it on a curve. Yeah. Uh, you know, because you're going to have to hand sew this up. So choose somewhere along this edge here, and then you can just mark, um, put two, two marks, what, about an inch and a half, maybe? So you can just mark like that. And of course, then you can do them. You can lay them all side by side and, just and mark go all the them way along. quickly. And just use, again, that's using the creative grids ruler that Lucy was just talking about. So that's the eight and a half inch square. Um, right. Just useful with those different sizes, yeah, depending absolutely. what you're working with. And you don't have to worry about even what pen you're using for it disappearing because it's on the inside. Too. So it doesn't matter anymore. So I'm going to start here and I'll work down to the corner and then I'm going to work travel around to that point there. Okay. If you just do yourself a little um, locking stitch, which we don't often do with quilting and things like that because it's going to be um, trapped, but here, because we're going to be putting pressure, pushing that open when we put the stuffing in. You want something to push up against yeah, as so it? Just do a little backwards and forwards stitch before you start um, on there. So I've got my... My beady eyes have just seen the heart in another colour and it's, I love, I love it in that colour. 
Oh, I'll that see you in a second. That was, a, that was like a really <laughs> sneaky. Oh, I'm not having a good machine day today, am I? That sounded as if that was a bit clunky. It's, it's going now. Oh, it's all right. um, so you just need to guess, obviously, um, I've got a normal foot on this machine uh, with the needle moved to a quarter of an inch. If you're using your quarter inch foot, my quarter inch foot's actually got quarter inch markings all down the side. So, so I can see where I, you need to stop obviously a quarter of an inch from the edge before you turn. Yeah. Like that. So I'm going to go one more stitch actually. And then turn it there. Let's see if we're stitching. We are now. So that Scandi bundle has sold out, but we have still got stock of the one that we're working with at the moment and also the other festive one, which we'll show you. And um, we will look at those a little bit later on in the show. Just a little, um, obviously stitching round curves, it's quite tricky. Mm. And normally we don't want to pull on our fabrics too much. But if you've ever used a circular attachment, um, on the machine. Have you ever seen no, them done a I show? No, I don't think so. Um, so they generally uh, work from a pin. Um, oh, no, I have. Yeah, yes. so you've seen yeah. that. So what it's preventing is this, the fabric from moving in a straight line. Uh, it's just holding the fabric so the, the fabric naturally go, go around. Yeah. So if you think of that when you're stitching, you can, um, you can actually put a little bit of pressure on the fabric here and it will just start to it pull it. It doesn't let it go yeah, straight. Yeah, it won't it's let it go it. straight. So um, you can get round your curves like that by just putting a little bit of side pressure. Just watch my pins. Um, or you can just do a few stitches, lift the foot, reposition, do a couple of stitches, relift the foot, just reposition like that, just depending on how, you, how comfortable you are. But I say, it doesn't really have to be too accurate. Did you, once you'd cut them all, did you do all of the stitching and then all? I did because I want, as I said, I wanted to have all my machine stitching done before the evening and so then I could sit. sit in the evening um, sewing them all up. So. <laughs> did you just have like a basket next to the, <laughs> next to the sofa but in, your, in front of the telly and I could just imagine you throwing hearts into like, like a wash bin just big, in, going big, in? Big bag, yes. <laughs> Another one done, another one done. That's right. Time for a cup of tea and then another one. So we've stitched around there. Left the gap. Yeah, left the gap. And then um, it's a bit, bit wonky there. One thing I will say, when you turn it, if I was to turn this round now without clipping anything, so I'm going to turn it back out and then I'll turn it back. Ah, you're not going to get that precise if, sort if, of curve of the... The heart. What you'll find is, and and sometimes I did this and then forgot. Um, the um, the floor managers are going to hate me today because I've just thought of something else. I forgot <laughs> a poker. I'm running around. <laughs> and I've got a new floor yeah. manager. Like, <laughs> it's always, always like, like don't don't have her in again. Can you see what's happening now? So if you turn it inside out yeah. and it's looking a bit like that, don't panic. It's just because you need to do a bit of clipping. Um, so it's not that you've done anything wrong with your stitching, but you can you see it's all puckering into that curvature there. Um, it just needs to it's be released. It's coming into quite a sharp yeah, sort so of I, um, point. I just wanted to show what it looks like when you <laughs> forget. <laughs> so let's see if we've got, there might be I in can, this other I trolley. Use, oh, there's one in here. You know. Have you got, um, oh, brilliant. There we go. Derek. I was going to say, it's not, it's, it's not a it's always proper never tool, is he? So, it's is never it? far, this is always <laughs> ready to go. Great. So what I tend to do is snip away um, a little bit of the bottom. Obviously, you don't want to. You want to be careful. You don't go. Can you see that on the white? You don't want to go too close to your. You know, here. just to your stitching. Just like come in. Just nip just the you know, nip the corner off there. Yeah. And then I'm going to put a snip right into that centre groove there, and then just put some snips around. So really it's where you've just got those sharp where you've got, yeah. That one is obviously very important because that's where it just wouldn't turn. I'm just gonna show you that on there if that's the one. I'm just gonna pop it on that white. So yeah, just I don't know if you can see the right in the point. Just in there. Yeah. Just snip that apart so that it's got a chance of turning. So it can move a little bit more freely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No different to dressmaking or any of those things, is it where you've got a curve or it's an arm hole or just so it's got a bit of but it's give. just really noticeable on, on something like that where you've got... Well, it's such an iconic shape. It's quite, yeah. If it's not precise, it's a bit like, well, what is that then? It's not obvious, <laughs> is it? But it just looks horrendous when you turn it I around. I with hearts as well. You can make flowers quite easily once you've got that template because you can 
put all of those points Pets, in, they make like petals, petals, don't they? Maybe that's what you think, it doesn't look overtly hot, because it kind of creates a different yeah. like flower shape, doesn't it? I honestly really think, particularly with the Scandi one as well, that that doesn't just have to be a Christmas decoration, that could be general, just yeah. decoration, general homely decorations, really. So then you can roll, roll the seams a little bit with your fingers. Get your something to poke all the edges nice and crisp. So yeah, it's not difficult. It's just, uh, like you say, really. repetitive, but it's quite nice sometimes to just sit and do it, isn't it? There's no hurry. If you, that's going to be the day, actually, because if you haven't promised it <laughs> to someone for the next day. Because <laughs> that's what we were saying with Lucy as well, with the log cabins, is once you've got the method, yes. and it's not even that the method's that hard, it's just that it's time consuming and that's that you've right. got to repeat it. And it, you know, it can be quite meditative if you are doing it like that. That's it. So we've got a lovely, a lovely sharp point at our base. And that's turning much better now, right there. there. Okay. And then you can see we've got, obviously, a little gap uh, for stuffing. Ready to turn that through in there. Again, this was um, a fresh bag of stuffing. And you can see I've probably used about half, Oh, maybe. so you've still got some yeah. left over. Great. So, um, and then just break some of this up, obviously, and start filling. That's in the way. I'll just show you the other fabrics. Oh, my yeah. tummy just rumbled. Did oh, you hear that? <laughs> was that your tummy? Rumbly tummy. I did hear something. It's like, it's nearly midday. It's nearly time. <laughs> um, let's have a look at those different fabrics that come in this bundle. So you've got those two lovely um, autumn leaves there on that copper. I'll just show you that. Then you've got that uh, striped fabric with that lovely sort of... It's almost if you got look, like, it's got a a dot, like, like a, a spray of little dots, isn't it? Yeah, if yeah, you look really, really closely, really it isn't just a stripe. It's, it's sort of, the stripe's created with little pinprick dots. Yeah. Really and lovely. then you've got the leaves, leaves on green, that khaki green. Half a metre of each of these. And then you've also got the red, which you're seeing um, Angie work with with that heart at the moment. So in the kit, you also get the stuffing and your templates and your thread as well. CWGC88, the Scandi bundle's completely sold out, but the Hollyberry Hearts 3149, that one is still available. And we've also got another, a festive one with some um, really lovely, it's got the sort of house in the snow on grey, and it's also got grey, um, green, greens and reds as well. I'll show you those other fabrics in a second. And we've got a picture. I'm going to grab them because I don't feel like you can see what those oh, fabrics are. Them. That's a good idea. It's not very obvious in the picture, here. is it? You need, you need to see. See them close up. So a third of this Christmas countryside has been checked out, but you've not really seen it. So let me show you what That's the fabric lovely. is. They're nice, aren't yeah. they? You've got um, sort of wildlife in there with your reindeer and squirrels and owls. Mm -hmm. And then that's the one that I like with your sort of house buried in the snow. And then you've got your Christmas robin. And then you've got forest green solid there as well. So you could perhaps intersperse that or you could do the backing mm -hmm. in the solid green and the whole wreath in the front in one of these patterned fabrics. But this is Christmas Countryside UHGC00, and that one's 28.49. So the large hearts take a quite a lot of stuffing. Yeah, that's <laughs> quite surprising. But it does half a bag left. Yeah, but it does, it does get, um, then when you come to do the smaller ones, you're like, oh, this oh, that's is easy. quick. Because <laughs> yeah. they're tiny. Then we have also got buttons, which we will get onto, because we're going to get yeah. onto the embellishments. But I'll just show you a couple of these yeah. while, um, while Angie's doing that stuffing. So lots of ideas for different things you can see, particularly on that Scandi one, right in the centre of the hearts with a button. Obviously, you can add ribbons as well. But first of all, we've got the red buttons in all various different sizes. So you've got some little tiny small ones in there. And then some bigger ones too, 150. So great to add to your stash. Then you've also got green. Again, in that assorted size. You can see actually there, you've got all different, up to much bigger ones. They're really nice packs, actually, the, the multi-buttons, because they've got oh, very different sizes. all sorts of things in there, yes. But also they're different, um, say, material, they're not, but they're not all the same. They're, they're different tones different, yes, of the colour, yes, and they're not all just plain buttons. Some are, like, different shapes. You've got sort of stripes going through in some of them, or different... Yeah, that's sweet. Actually. Light and shade, really. It gives it that homemade feel with the buttons, yeah, I think, as well. Yeah, it does. And they've like also got... Yeah, well, I like a button on like things. A button. I've got my puppy's got a button in the middle. Did you make this? <laughs> yes. This yeah. is amazing. Thank you. What is the... Um... It's actually, it's, um, I do it with, it's just thread with dissolvable really? fabric. So it's like making your own lace. Um, but it's a, it's a, 
I, I made this about four years ago and had so many people comment on it that I actually run workshops just annually at this do time you? of year. To to do, yeah, and then and then I put a percentage of the people pay for the workshop but then I I give money to the um the poppy appeal with it so uh, so yeah oh, I just lovely. I noticed it this morning thought it was a really lovely I just poppy, had a uh, different six, 14 or 16 ladies last Friday making them wow. and I made three each different ones so give yeah. them to other people as well to yeah, use. oh that's, that's really lovely nice. so this is the colorful buttons I have to see some pictures of all your poppies there must have been loads of them all yeah <laughs> msgq45 so great as a stocking filler, great to have in your stash. The sort of thing, if you've got it in the drawer, you probably find more and more projects you can add a button to um, if you wanted to. Now, the Scandi one, you can see, or we'll look at a picture, you can see where those little buttons have been used. So that's using the uh, red buttons, but you could obviously use the cream or the green if you're using that with a different colour bundle. And we'll look at some ribbons as well in a minute too. So um, obviously you're not, you don't really want to watch me hand stitching this up, but just to show you, when you asked, um, when you turn the heart out, when you go inside to turn it inside out, always go to the furthest point. Okay. So, and that's making it easier to when you're turning anything out. Really, yeah. just go to the furthest point away and try and drag that back through, rather than trying to grab this corner and pull that through. That's just a little tip to make like when you make the through bed. easy. Yeah, I always think like I'm right through to the other side, pull the whole thing through, and then it's you know end up in such a covered in bed sheet. And the same with stuffing. So as you're stuffing, it stuff the furthest corners first yeah, and then and build work it up back, all the way back to you you can see it's looking nice and looks nice like a heart and, and it's the right color the color's right, yeah. the right color <laughs> <laughs> and then you're you've just got that quarter inch seam then to just finger finger fold inside and then you can just slip stitch slip stitch that that up with a few stitches as you go along and as i say it um it's quite a rustic project at the end of the day, so yeah, yeah. Don't be too um, worried about. If you do get to that point, like you do, where you've got your twenty-four hearts, and you can just sit down and do all your hand That's stitching. It. That's it. So I did all the, the machine TV stitching, or... got them all stuffed, but they'd all got these little gaping holes in them. So then I was able to sit for the evening sewing them up. But now we also have these little miniature star buttons. These are really cute. Oh, they're tiny. And they're so zingy, the red ones. But you can embellish those little smaller hearts if you wanted yeah. to. Those little red ones now. Start with those. You've got a mixture of, colour, of shades in there too, sort of more corally, pinky ones, and then you've got some darker reds. But just nice to add a little touch of something. I don't know if you can see, they are stars if you look a little bit more closely. But 125, again, just great stocking filler. Then you've got your pastely ones there in your uh, peach, pink and white. People use these for um, like card making and things as well, don't uh, they? Because yes. you can add. Yeah. And if you are into the hand sewing, like you say, where you get to that point where you're doing all of that, then yeah. why not? Why not embellish and go for it? Then you've got your yellows Absolutely. as well. Oh, They're nice. tiny. They are tiny. Those. <laughs> Just add that <laughs> little bit of something, something special. I think it is nice to have some. From a tactile point of view, it's just adds some like 3D, doesn't it? Yeah, gives it that. I'll show you actually while you're just finishing there. You can see the buttons. I do add to the shape as well because I just pull it in a little bit. I don't found they, a little Werner? heart. There was a little heart. Oh yeah, one. look in the pack. So I did use a little heart as well. Yeah. So they're not all, and there's some little cute fl floral type ones. Half the stock of the red buttons has been checked out, so if you do like that one, probably because the Scandi bundle's also sold out, so you're <laughs> thinking of pairing those up. Um, just, just be aware of, um, if you do like those, VDGQ90. Okay, so there we have uh, heart. our heart, all Lovely. stuffed and made. So, um, so here's one. This I'm, is the one I really liked. No, oh, it's, it's not. Oh, no, no, oh, it's not. There is that one as well, but I do one. like this colour, <laughs> colour, this colourway. Color <laughs> So this is if obviously we were choosing to do two of each fabric in the in the outer um, perimeter circle, the larger yeah. circle of this one. So you'd get all your hearts laid out and lay them out. How I did it um, was I literally laid them out like a clock. So mid, you know, twelve o'clock, six, o three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, and then infilled the, the four of the oh. corners to get the right angle yeah. of how they'll sit nicely. But they tend to sit. Um, just butting up here on the widest part of the, the shoulder of the heart, if you like, somewhere yeah. about there. You can see where I've joined them, just about there. 
it's almost just below where the dip in there horizontally lines across lines across it's almost yeah sort of there but yeah. if you lay them all out on a on a surface you'll be able to see just where they they kiss um to get, oh, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> just to get a visual of where you want to join them and then once you visually um, sort of eyeballed where you're going to join them, what I did was always work up from the point, put those together, just roll them along, and then you can literally just pinch that, those two fabrics together in the right sort of area and just slip stitch. So you do that by hand as yeah. well? Yeah, so that was just about, I just did about a centimetre okay. of stitching. So you wouldn't think that would really be enough, would you be? It does no. hold it, it yeah, does create that it. shape. Yeah, and like you say, you can just get the seam, half the seam of that one and half the seam of that one and just, just a few stitches. We can show a close-up of that later if you, if you want to. I'll show you but, now. Um, oh, okay. See. So you can see. Yeah. Just because if you are watching this back on YouTube, if you go, if you have ordered this this morning, you get your templates and you're not sure when it arrives, then you can go back and just sort of see That's all right. the steps. So that was just in there. I don't want to push yeah. anything away, but just You'd attaching them. See. Maybe on the back, do you think I might be clearer? Say, I might be able to see it better on the back, but you can just see there's about a centimetre of stitching just to just join between. them together. Okay. Yeah. So when you've got them all, the first circle joined, so you sort of, you know, in the really making, like, yeah. Big, yeah, we, this is coming along. And then I kind of like lifted it up by one of the hearts and the whole thing, circle, didn't retain its circle. Just it just kind that. of collapsed on itself. <laughs> so I thought, okay, this is going to be interesting. Yeah. We have to get this to work. And I did think actually, depending on if you didn't, well, we'll come on to if you don't want to do so many, because I've got another alternative for you if you're not into the so much hand stitching. Yeah. Um, but actually, as you add the layers, the three layers kind of add rigidity to it and gives it some structure. So they're actually, you do the same process, obviously, with the middle size and yeah. lay those out and then stitch all those together. And then the same for the, the centre one. And then I did put the buttons on then. So you've got three individual circles. So you've got three rings, yeah. really. Yeah. So then I started to, then you decorate them before you put them all together. Um, so I put the buttons on those. But can you see how... Um, this middle one is laid over the gap. So the centre of the heart here lines up with the gap. Yeah. And then... Can you see that? Oh, yes, you can yeah. see that there now. And I just... I took sort of one colour, so the grey colour, and then I decided to sort of shift the colour around. Not so... If it was in that gap, it would be overlaying, so I shifted it around to the next gap. Yeah. So I turned it sort of one and a bit. Um, so they're all... As you say, the centre of the heart aligns up with the gap. And then the next ring, I did the same. So you can see the grey there. The centre. If I'd have put the grey there, it would have been too close. I just moved it around one. And you're aligning the centre of the heart with the gap there. And that... I imagine that is what helps in terms of the structure. It's like bricks, yeah. isn't it, with that You wouldn't lay them all just on top in a row. Exactly. Where you've shifted it round, it's helping it to just... Help, helping give that stability. Um, and then when you have decorated them and laid them all up as you want to, then, then it's more a little bit more hand stitching just to slip stitch them here. Yeah. Um, if you've got a glue gun, <laughs> maybe, you could maybe you might want to just pop, pop a little, in. yeah, with a bit of glue gun. I did try my micro tack gun. Did you? Yes. I love that. <laughs> that gadget. I is was just like, I wonder if the tack gun will work, but, but it's no, too, because, too much. Because of you, you're pushing it just into into the wadding so it's not, not all coming the way not all the way through so um unfortunately no that didn't work um and then yeah i, I really like they so say you could put bows on everyone you yeah, can in decorate. terms of the embellishments well, yeah. we, can, we can get onto that but so do you, you um create all the rings and then you do the embellishments or do you embellish the hearts individually and then an assemble them into the ring. No, I, I created the rings like this with plain fabric ones, got them all stitched together and then embellished. Then embellished. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I did embellish the bows before I started to layer layer them up. Well, then as well you can make sure that the it bows sits where you can see it. Yeah. yeah. Underneath. Um, I don't know I was something I was going to um, just bring up actually because it's something I you, you can be good at making some things and then just struggle with the Under. simplest little thing and it's one thing that was really driving me insane on how to tie a nice bow okay <laughs> see I love wrapping and I'm not going to say that I can tie okay. two bows but I really enjoy wrapping up so do you, so do you know how know. to do a, per probably a really no, perfect, probably not perfect bow but this one here this is the um we've got lots of different ribbons this morning but this is yeah. the uh, red one first of all I think these this comes the... in a bundle of five doesn't these were oh, the these two. are the individual ones so this is your um 
stitched ribbon the in the red. Ribbons, and then yeah. I love this um, handmade with love. I just think you could add that onto yeah. anything that you've made. But okay. the stitched one there is on your screen, um, HBGQ26. That's that first one. Lovely with a Scandi bundle. And you get four metres on that reel. And then the other one, the handmade with love. I think you could make little tags, couldn't you? And I use this on, on the little loop uh, the to hang it with, yeah, so just... Uh, see. But yes, you could use it as little tags on anything you make in the bag that we, you know, if you make the bag for a gift. Yes, <laughs> almost like your, yeah. your shop stamp, but it's you. So, well, you know, the bag initially, um, when we talked about it as a project, I actually thought you could make it in Christmas fabrics. Yeah. Because oh, like gift bags. A gift bag. Yeah, and then someone can use it. Or if you can use it for something the... fat, like wine yeah. or something, at glass yeah, inside. That's, that's a really good idea. So yeah, if you can do the quilt as you go in, you know, in maybe a yeah, one. in your Christmassy fabric and use them as like usable. Christmas Make gift it as bags. a bag, but yeah, then it's you got can reuse it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, dou a double gift. A double gift, yeah. So it's something that I've um, not always been very good at tying a perfect okay. bow, and I realised it's because I make the loop. Uh, with my right hand, so if I'm looking at the bow, it would be sort of the top right. And then I've always wrapped this around anti-clockwise to make my bows yes. when I tie my laces. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought I've got to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> and the key is to make a loop, and this will be with your left hand, if you're right-handed. Yeah. Um, always take the ribbon clockwise around push it through then to make your top left bow and then if I would have twisted that ribbon so it was facing the right way but um, proportionally you can you see how it's just sitting you end up with you want yeah yeah perfectly I always ended up with one of my loops facing with, the right way yeah and, and one of these down here yeah you know the wrong way so it does Should I mean do I one can, more of those yeah shall I do yeah. another so I always tie my laces with make the loop and go round that way. I'll do one actually. When I was doing rubbish, is it better with the? Cut some of this one. We need about fifteen inches. It's quite. Um, it's because it's not attached to anything either. <laughs> it's a bit more <laughs> tricky, isn't it, than when it's attached? I did actually stitch. See, I always used to do them like that and they look a bit squiffy. You get one just facing the yeah, wrong way. Yeah, wrong way. So I did, you know, if you're doing this on a half, um, I cut about 15 inches and then you can just put a couple of stitches in the centre there to just tack that in place. Yeah. So uh, loop with the left hand. Always take this over the top. So that's actually anti-clockwise, isn't it, though? Oh, yes, anti-clockwise. Yeah, anti yeah. And then it's just because I'm trying to get the wording to sit the right Push way as through. well. It's not this tricky with double-sided ribbon. And then when you do pull it um, through, they just it just sits beautifully. It, yes, <laughs> it there just it sits is. really beautifully. And then to get your to get your snips on the corner, if you fold that in half. Here you go. Thank you. And cut from end to fold, you get that lovely little point. as well but you can see how it's the detail isn't it yeah but they, it just sits a much more balanced bow and I just thought well I'll talk about that today because it's I'll something I've struggled it. with for ages and I thought right I'm gonna I'm going to look this up at how to tie that. a bow properly I really like the idea of having these as well you could have these around the house on yeah. for your Christmas tree you could have them if you if I just hold that like that Oh, wow, here it comes. You like this little sweet one, don't you? Look at this one. <laughs> this is an alternative. Look at this. It's like he's got his best. Oh, it's like he's got a suit waist, on. Waist he's ready to go for Christmas. He's got his waistcoat on. Yeah. Because it's like the bow tie, and then it actually is like that. <laughs> so if you're really, um, this is one way of doing hearts where you turn them out with a, a proper seamed edge. But if you're really sort of pressed for time or you really don't like that slip all that slip stitching that's to do with turning them inside out this is an alternative um, and of course you can do as you know you can use this for the reason in, intermixed with that they don't all have to be yeah, the same like you, could still have you could have every other one done with like a pinked edge yeah um, or we talked about um, you could use an embroidery hoop as your base and yeah. just have 
eight hearts like this interspersed with ribbons, bows, and build you know, it up that and way. And then it, it doesn't have way. to have the layers, it could just have one. That's right, and it, it would have flop. one ring because, like, then, because it's got the yeah, solid the embroidery hoop behind it. would give you that framework, or if you've got a wire coat hanger or something like that, yes. you can use. But I just thought, well, most of us can get to, or have gotten a, an embroidery hoop. We've so, got a photo actually. Let's see who this This one's from Jean. Oh, wow. <gasps> oh, wow. Is that eight or is that? So this was on the Christmas table using the uh, the heart ring. And that's how it looks. It looks really different, doesn't it? With the hearts um, oh, they're straight actually, up yes, rather they're than stacked. layered. Where they're, where they're yeah. stacked like that. I like that. And oh, with the candle gorgeous. in the middle. Really and you can get away with that candle in the middle because it's in the, in the glass. glass. In yeah. the, I really like that. Oh, that's Similar sweet. sort of Scandi feel with the fabrics as it well. It is, yeah, lovely. So someone's messaging as well to ask, thank you for that, which size the um, hearts are on the template. Now on the template, you do get different sized hearts. Mm -hmm. So you've got... Um, a large, small and medium. I don't know specifically what the size, I don't think it's got a measurement. It hasn't got any measurements no. on, no. But this comes in your kit. Yeah. So you can see there just those two different sizes. The width of this one is about six inches to give you some scale. Okay. So made, I think made up the largest one is just see that around one. four and a half. Once it's made up, they're about four and a half inches wide. This one then. So this one. Avoids the, we've only got about four or five minutes. So okay. Um, it avoids all um, so much hand stitching. Um, you can do all of this. Um, you don't have to turn it out. You can do it all on the machine. So again, we're going to do our template on two two pieces of fabric. Um, would you like to? Is the iron on? Yes. Yeah. So if you can put some heat on that. And just, just straight on. Yeah. Just stick that to there for us. Just Thank like you. That. Give that some pressure and I'll get my pinking shield. It is, I, I've been thinking about what that reminded me of and it is like a buttoned up waistcoat. Yeah, it? It is, I think it's because it's got the, um, the bow on it as well. A little bow. So um, we've got two layers of fabric with our freezer paper template in place. And we're going to cut this with um, pinking shears. So obviously here you just want to cut, use it as a, you don't want to cut through the paper, you just cut as close as possible. So this is where the plastic template might be better. If you've used the, you know, the plastic sheeting, if it's a bit thicker. Yeah, yeah, to draw, to just draw your outline on. If, you'd, if you've got a drawn outline on the fabric, if you've drawn around a template, then you can just cut to the halfway mark. But as I say, because we're not working with specific sizes here, it really doesn't um, doesn't matter. You're just using it as a shape guide, not a size guide, isn't it? Yeah, it's not as specific as, say, quilting or something no. like that where it needs to be. So the size. And, of course, this you can choose different size. I've chosen the biggest one here. So the pinking shears, they're on the bottom of your screens, 14 99 They're the um, eight and a half inch pinking shears. There we go. So that's all sorted. Um, I think this gives it a really, like, um, homemade feel as well. Are there some, yeah, there's something quite... Oh, you could fill them with lavender or... Yeah, you yeah, could have things. them in, um, as, in your drawers, couldn't yeah. you, if you wanted to? But it does, does have quite a, a warming feel to it. So without moving those, um, what you can do then is um, completely, as we did before, you would leave a gap along the side. Yeah. Um, but you would stitch a quarter of an inch in, bearing in mind you're going to see this stitching. Yeah. So you can choose a contrasting thread like I did. here on that one or something to blend in. Um, so I'll just use like a greeny goldy colour. So you stitch all the way around a quarter of an inch, but that does need to be neat because it's on the it's uh, sure, outside. Yeah. Then, you, you, then you can stuff it, but you can actually easily flatten that and get it back under the machine to sew up the gap. So you haven't got any of that turning in. The yeah. hand stitching. And what we've got here is I've just cut, um, on here I use the next heart size down. So although it looks quite tight, which it is, but it, it's got that frill, you know, but this is quite close to the quarter of an inch seam um, and it's covering most of the back fabric. So this is a similar proportion. This is the next one down the medium, but you could choose the smallest one and, you know, you can you could choose. even do three. Yeah, you can layer them, of course. So you could have... Um, you could have that one like that, like you say, and then... You might even use the other fabric you if could you use that, the, yes, you? Yes, a different fabric on the top again. But you can choose how you decorate and embellish. And again, um, what I would do, if you're going to do the layering, is I stitched this to the top layer first, 
before, before you put the yeah. two together. So, um, so then I just used, um, you can use a little bit of stitch and tear or a little bit of stabiliser. Yeah. And I, you can use some of your pretty stitches that you've got on your machine. I just used a simple blanket stitch, but you could put some you little hearts. Stitches, you could get a metallic stitches, thread. You could, go, you could really yeah. go to town. So that's really nice because that's quite quick and easy to do. Um, and you can, as you say, add some lovely stitches. Add all that to the top, not necessarily the buttons, but any stitching, that any applique that you're going to do. Do that first. Then you can pop it um, over the back one and, and stitch it all together. So um, I don't think I've got time we to do that. We can look at doing that now. If you just, can I? Yeah, if you wanted okay. to just show us how we attach those two. So we've got that in position. Over the top. I really like the idea of mixing and matching them. So you might yeah. have, or even if you had one at the top like that, and then you could have yes. the plain ones all the way round, couldn't you? That's right. You could sort of start to see. And but I really like that this is as a sort of an autumnal wreath. You yeah. could get this out. I think you could get this out in October, like happily get this out, or September even, you know, when you start to get into that more sort of ha yeah, Halloween. Trees changing. Yeah, yeah that's sort of, right. Yeah. So we need some, um, I need to choose a, a stitch, don't I? Go for? <laughs> what shall I go for? What shall I go for? Have we got anything uh, leafy? Like that shall one? we try a few leaves? 45 mode 2. I just need 45. that. There we go. Oh, that might be a bit large. Oh, decisions, decisions. This machine's got too many <laughs> stitches. Too many stitches to decide. Let's try 46. That's about the same. We'll stick with 45. We'll go with that, okay. shall we? I have no idea what it's going to look like. <laughs> See if I can. So. But this is great if you do want to avoid the hand stitching. Yeah, absolutely. It's much quicker. In terms of um, attaching these together, is that any different, the process, or with the um, pink edge? Or you still attach them in the same way? Um, I would probably... Um, let's have a look at that one. Yeah, probably what you would do is try and slip slip stitch. You know, you wouldn't want to be slip stitching to the raw edge because that's going to gradually wear yeah. out. So you'd want to sort of slip stitch into the back under there. Into that seam. Yeah, you can. You could probably, like you say, push push to a part like that and just put some slip stitches between the strong a stronger part of the. So okay. then that would cover that up actually, wouldn't it? That would flip back. Yeah. What about two minutes? Oh, okay. Probably not even going to get round the heart, am I? <laughs> I believe in you, Angie. We've got this. <laughs> oh, it's actually easy oh, to it do is a, curves. It, is a, um, it mirrors the pattern in Yeah, there. just doing little, little floral um, leaves. Because the machine goes backwards and forwards. It's, I thought it would be tricky to do it on a curve, but it's actually quite easy. So quite a nice way as well to experiment with your machine if you've got some decorative stitches yeah. and you want to give it a go. Because right. it's not the focal point, it's not the focus, but no. it's enough there that if you wanted to look a bit, bit clo more closely, you could and see And of course you've... I've got red thread in here, so you're not going to be able to see too much. But um, almost there. We're going for subtle. This is very <laughs> subtle. <laughs> Should have had a gold thread in there. I don't, you'll be able oh, to see yeah. on the back, actually. That's probably Lovely. better to show you on the back what stitch I chose. Um, but it doesn't show very well on the red. I should have had a different. On the other way around, you'd be able to see it yeah. if you had that in a different stitch there. Yeah, so you could. Do, that would have been nice in a gold, wouldn't it? Really? Yeah, you could definitely add that metallic or yeah, that bit of that's sort of it. sparkle. So decorate your sort of. You do that bit of a raw edge applique like that before you then attach it, and it's quite easy if you think, oh, well, that's a bit close for my quarter inch seam because as you're stitching, you can fold that back a little bit. You know, you're just in there. Your foot sits underneath this, so it's really easy. Okay, yeah. well, that's gone super speedy today. We've only we, got a minute left. So is there any last little tip you would give on, on assembling it uh, at the end? No, or just the I final think. hoop? You would just attach that final hanging ribbon. Yes, the, um, the final hanging ribbon, actually, because it's quite weighty, actually, with, yeah, the, it <laughs> with really all weighty. that. Um, so it has got, as I say, it's got the stability because of these crossing over like bricks. So it gives it that stability. But I found, again, when I was hanging it, what you don't want to do is... It's very easy to think, oh, I'll just sew a loop on the back there in the centre. And what happens is um, the whole thing just flopped yeah. forward. So you can see I've, I've attached it securely in the centre, but I've also put some stitches um, in the top area here to secure it right to the top of the heart so that it's got nowhere to go. So it sits nice and straight. Oh, I'm just out of Beautiful. camera there. And, and if, it is, if it is quite weighty, um, you could always put another loop 
under the, under this one actually. Just to have just so it gives a, it that a, even yeah, weight. Just, but I mean, it's sitting quite I love nicely, it. isn't it? <laughs> really, honestly, one of my favourite projects. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm not going to stitch you up and say, Angie's going to go off now and I'm finish it in the other colour. <laughs> just because no, I'm not going to do that. You're all right. I'll let you off. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll come and see oh, you in a second. Thanks, no Angie. Problem. So, just looking at those different bundles from this morning. So, the Scandi one has sold out, the one that we were just looking at, but the uh, bundle that Angie's been working with, showing you that raw edge applique, and we've still got stock of that in this bundle. So that lovely autumnal colourway with your greens and your reds. And you've also got lovely copper colour there in the autumn leaves. Nice sort of warming traditional colours. CWGC88. Again, it comes with all of these and come with your templates. And your thread and your stuffing as well. I'll just show you the template. So you've got those different size hearts. And um, this is just a template that Sewing Quarter's put together to pop in these bundles. Okay. Then we've also got this other bundle, which I feel like we've neglected. I've not shown you this one very much this morning. So this one's really popular. I don't know, I, I feel like, well done you if you've managed to see this one. Let me show you it a bit more slowly. So you've got um, these lovely different sort of wildlife coming through in this top burgundy fabric with your squirrels and reindeers and owls and robins. Then you've got your winter scene. Lots of people have got this one in their basket, Christmas countryside, so please do check it out if it's the one you like, UHGC00. Then you've got that lovely deep wine colour with your Christmas robin. And finally, you've got your solid forest green, which works really beautifully with those other colourways there. 28.49 and again you've got your templates your thread and your stuffing with that too now we've also got some ribbon bundles so if you do want to embellish those hearts like we saw with Angie showing us how to do that perfect bow or for the loop to hang um, the wreath at the top and you're bound to have some ribbon left over you can use for wrapping so you're always going to need that at Christmas so you've got five different ribbons in this stack you've got two uh, glittery ones so this is your satin bundle first of all you've got gold and silver glitter then you've got Holly and the Ivy on your green. Five metres on each of these reels. You've got your Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and your red satin on the bottom there. 7.99 WMFZ15, 25 metres of ribbon, so really good value. And then the other ribbon stack we've got that you can see just here. Got a more traditional feel to it. So this one is in your creams and reds. So again, I love the one, open me on, and it's got your Christmas dates on there, when, when to open your presents. But you've got your snowflakes. Yeah, there's some beautiful ribbons. There are really lovely ribbons. Just a really lovely way to add a little bit of something, yeah. something special. So that's your twill collection. So again, 20, well that one's 20 meters. So these are four meter reels and the satin is five meter reels. Now, this morning, if you weren't here at eight o'clock, where were you? Where were you at eight o'clock this morning? We missed you. So we are limited stock, but we had a special offer today. It's only till midnight, but it will depend if the stock runs out before. But um, if you spend over 30 pounds online and it's not on anything that's been on TV in the last 24 hours. So if you buy wadding or perhaps um, a charm pack or some solids um, or, or anything you might need to add to your stash, if you spend over 30 pounds, you get Kay Fassett's most recent book, which is a beautiful book, The Quilts in Ireland. And that's completely free, so a free gift from us to you. You could either give that as a gift or keep it for yourself. Why not? It depends. So you can get a double whammy, a present for you and a book for you. Why not? And also, you might have spotted this lovely little bear from Joe Carter. This one is on tomorrow. So if you had a BDI, you might have spotted it on the shelf this morning, 8 o'clock. So if you missed 8 o'clock this morning, don't miss 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Brand new bear from Joe Carter. Ready for Christmas. Oh, he's lovely. He's like an heirloom style bear. 8 a.m. tomorrow. Let's have a look at the menu for tomorrow's show. So as I said, 8 o'clock, I'm joined by Joe Carter. We're making that heirloom bear, the Christmas bear. Christmas is coming. Then at 9 o'clock, oh, we've got Ashmi Designs. You're, these are brand new products to show you tomorrow. If you love your hexes, you're not going to want to miss those if you like your English paper piecing. A really fantastic new product to share with you. And you're saying they're lovely. She's seen them already. I'm going to go and meet uh, Colleen and Susie in a moment and have a look at those. Then at 10 o'clock, Tilda Christmas. So Joe is back in at 10, Joe Carter. I think we're doing the Tilda stocking, actually. And 11 o'clock is more Ashmead design. So again, looking at these really clever hexes that incorporate some wadding. 
brand new product to share with you in the morning. So a lovely morning today. It's been wreaths galore. We had Lucy's wreath at eight o'clock. If you missed it, you can go back and watch on YouTube using the Dresden plate. Then the wreath we've just done with Angie with hearts galore, where we've done the lovely heart wreath. Then we also had the quilt as you go bag and looking at those creative grids rulers for log cabins as well. So a jam packed morning. If you missed it, go back and watch on YouTube. If not, I'll see you again bright and early tomorrow morning at eight o'clock for our lovely teddy bear. I'll see you at eight. Bye. Don't miss our pack shows on Friday, the 10th of November with much loved designer Joe Carter and new guest Susie Argent from Ashmead Designs. Joe will launch our exclusive sewing quarter Christmas bear in fun festive prints from Macawa. This patchwork cuddly is sure to become a much loved collectible. Joe returns at 10 a.m. making beautiful Tilda kits and projects from the Handmade and Happy Book. You'll have Christmas all sewn up. And with our first shows featuring Devon's Ashme designs, we have two hours packed with Christmas English paper piecing kits and quilting kits. Don't miss these exciting shows this Friday from 8am to 12pm only on Sewing Quarter, Preview Channel 78.